The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 sport, sport. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Overreaction Monday, December 11th, brought to you by Verizon, the program starts now. Football is happening in a marvelous way. Hell yeah. The AFC of the NFL packed at the top. Ah, There's a couple teams that can get home field advantage throughout the playoffs and maybe find a way to hoist a Lombardi at the end. And then the NFC, holy hell, look out. The Dallas Cowboys seem to be the team that everybody's been saying they are for the last 20 years or so. When they beat the ass of the Eagles last Mm -hmm. night (laughs) and what the Niners were able to do, look out, there's three teams now. Hunting home field advantage on the NFC side. There's just four weeks left after two games this evening on Monday Night Football to wrap up week 14. And there's still so much in play. I cannot wait to dive into all the action from yesterday. I can't wait to chit-chat with Adam Schefter to see what he's hearing. Week 14, overreaction Monday, probably a little bit more clarity on the coaches, potentially. Like, what's going on with Staley? A lot of fourth downs yesterday. It's getting really loud over there. Say something. Doug Peterson actually put his uh, Brandon Staley visor on at, like, (laughs) the most weird time in the history of football. I have no idea why he went for two there. Would have had to get an onside kick regardless. Regardless, but to just rule yourself, ah, we'll talk to him hopefully at some point. Yeah. Yep. Nonetheless, the talks the table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Sweet shirt, Con man. Yeah, Boston Terrier. I figure because you Sweet. did, Don, uh, Massachusetts, the beautiful state, the greatest state, some would say, the one that started America, some would also say. Uh, I figured I'd wear it. I mean, my highlight of the week, and obviously the Patriots played on Thursday, but Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft on game day was just magnificent. I don't think I've ever, and I heard this from other people as well, I don't think I've ever seen Bill Belichick in that light in my entire life the way he was. So I, I, you call me immediately after, and thank you for doing that because I was so curious as to how it went. But, I mean, it was a good scene up there. There's a, there's a good amount of people. I thought maybe there'd be a few more, but obviously Foxborough's way out there. I it mean, is, it is, it's, you know. I heard from a couple of Fox Burrowins. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Fox Burrowers. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said every time you say it. it's like, way up, come on. It's not, you know? That's yeah. what they said. <laughs> they said it's like 30 minutes, right? Like 30. There is, whoa. There is, 30. There is 30, time. 30. 30. Boxton Providence is about 30 for me. Yeah, that's yeah. what. Yeah. That's well, true. that's what. That's a lot of them were telling me, like, you're acting like this is like the middle of Indiana where a town's like way out. It's like an hour and a half, well. two hours out there. It's not that far, but it certainly is very much removed from yes. Providence, Rhode Island, where I flew into in Boston. Austin, where everybody else flies into, so it is a little bit out there. It is a little bit of a trip. Beautiful town, though. Yeah. Great people. The people were very nice to me. And Bill Belichick, are you kidding me? Man. Putting a helmet on? Oh, that was awesome. So good. Putting a helmet on there. I, so he showed up and sat down. He had a bag gimmick, you know, uh-huh. and he put it down in between his legs. And where he put it is right where my uh, my drink was. Mm-hmm. So my drink was in the way of his bag. I'm like, oh. so I actually just kicked my drink. My drink just spilled all <laughs> over all yeah, over the thing it. to get it out of the way for the bag, you know. He puts it down there. I'm like, oh, I wonder what that is. So he didn't even acknowledge it until we get to the pick because we talked for like eight minutes or whatever. Yeah. In our ears, by the way, they're like, we're off in... 65 seconds before the picks even started because Bill's telling stories yeah. and shooting the shit. Mm-hmm. So we almost didn't have enough time for the pick. So that's why, like, the pick segment was pretty, like, boom, bang, boom. And then I see Bill go reach while I'm talking, like, uh, kind of reaching in between his legs to, like, kind of open the bag. And I'm like, 
Oh, so we got a gimmick. Yeah. yeah. We, 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 got, gimmick. we got a gimmick here. <laughs> and so then I look down and I see him grab that helmet. He pulls it up and he goes, Coach, I'm going to do this one for you. And I'm like, No. I actually said, No way yeah. you're putting that helmet on right now. Because I just, in my head, see TV with Bill Belichick with a helmet yeah. on mm-hmm. in the middle of that whole thing. He did. He was awesome. Of course. Had to pat him on top of his helmet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I don't know when you, you get a point to, uh, you know, hit Bill Belichick in the head whenever he has a helmet on. He was awesome. He yeah. was yeah. Wide open, telling stories. His recall, phenomenal. Oh. Afterwards, right? That's hilarious. That is so, so good. This is the Jolly Roger right here. Yep. This is uh, <laughs> Go Navy beat Army in Chinese. This is whenever the I forget the story. Yeah, me but, too. It was like a specific division. Yeah. Uh, talk uh, found the clips and the photos of it all and pieced it all together. But I got a chance to chat with Bill a little bit afterwards, and just basically reiterate the fact that, like, hey man, as somebody who is very lucky to be in a position in the NFL where I get to spectate a lot of things. You know, I get to see a lot of stuff. Yeah. I was very fortunate mm-hmm. to be in those team meetings with a couple different regimes, with a couple different players that were very good uh, in the locker room, in the planes, in the hotels, obviously practice, field, training camp, everything. Right. It is so hard to win in the NFL. The amount of things that you need to go right in all of those places yes. is, so for them to be able to do what they've been able to do for however long they've done it, like, I just want to reiterate to them, like, massive respect, dude. Like, so much respect for everything you've done. And then we started talking a little bit, you know, about uh, games in the past, and he started talking about, you know, things that he thought going into the game against me, which I was excited to hear. I'm like, yeah, 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 I would like to hear what your thoughts are on me as a a football player, you know, uh, as a punter. And believe me, I told him I barely played two. I understand my position, but he respects the hell out of special teams. So he said some things that made me feel good about myself. Nice. Almost put them in my Twitter bio. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Almost put them in my ex bio Mm -hmm. immediately afterwards. But then I told him, I was like, my rookie year, you know, uh, I got a chance to get dropped into the Peyton Manning, Tom Brady rivalry where we were playing every single year. It was awesome. I was like, in that fourth and two, Melvin Bullitt gets that pick. We end up going to the Super Bowl. Like, Rookie year. That was a huge, that was a huge night. He goes, oh, fourth and two. I thought you were talking about that fake punt. I was like, hey, relax. <laughs> yes. Hey, you need to. Uh, so good. Yeah, so that was like, mm-hmm. so I'm like, this dude is all Like, you are everything that I thought about Bill. Yeah. Obviously, amplified times 10 after getting a chance to chat with him. That was a true dream, getting to talk to Bill Belichick. I am a huge fan, as I told him on there. Now, also, getting a chance to chat with Robert Kraft. Mm. First time I got to meet him was during a commercial break before he came up for the conversation. And he told me there that he watches the show. And I'm like, you should not be. And then I got a chance to ask him a couple questions and, you know, kind of meet him and appreciate everything he's done. Because, you know, I don't I don't know if you've looked into the stats. He's owned a team for 30 years. Yeah. Do you know how many home playoff wins the Patriots had before he owned the team, which was around for like 37 years, I think, before he owned it? Probably what, three? One. Yeah, there you go. And then now, since then, like he takes a lot of pride in the fact that, like, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. we've he made it. We've really, we've really, not, he didn't say I, but of he course, said, like, right. we, like, what we've been able to do over the last 30 years. A guy who didn't have his first car until he's 25 years old, you know, like, mm-hmm. he, yeah, I think he was a Patriots fan before then, yes. too. Like, a lot of the things that he was saying, I'm like, man, you are awesome. Now, I got to go do a kicking contest, <laughs> but, like, you, this is really cool. I'm lucky to be great Air Forces on. Oh, of yeah. course. His great, new game. great Air Forces on. I mean, he looks so cool. Talk slow. Yes. Okay. But you got to just listen to the messages. Mm-hmm. This is just like yeah. whenever, you know, people get distracted by the delivery whenever you don't listen to the lyrics. Like, listening to the lyrics, Rob, what Rob Kraft is saying, he's fastball still. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, we are still dialed in on everything. He just talks a little slower, I think. I don't know if that's how he's always been yeah. or if it's because he's a little bit older now, whatever the case is. But like, what he's saying is good. Then we get a chance to chat with him up there, and he was talking about that foundation, which. I kind of heard about from another conversation that was happening around, so I asked him about it. Uh, you know, uh, Herb Street asked him about building it and everything that they'd done, massive compliment. And then at the end, you know, mm-hmm. and I think it's because me and Robert Kraft had become a little bit of, I don't want to say friends through this entire thing, but like felt like we've gotten pretty friendly. He talked yeah, about how yeah. he watches our show every day when he does the elliptical. So yeah. I don't know if it's now or later in the show, but like Robert Kraft's getting after it on an elliptical. Yeah, right. Dog. Okay, so like at the end, uh, I think they said, anybody else have anything pretty much? And I'm like... I do not envy your position, is what I said to him. Yes. You know, I'm not going to ask a question. It's not about that. We all know what I'm talking about, but I don't envy your position. And everybody in New England, and I understand, I guess, from the New England perspective why they did this, they're like, Pat just, am-. people are saying I ambushed Robert mm-hmm. Kraft. I didn't even ask a question. I, they said I ambushed him with that, and we shook hands. And then they said, uh, Pat just told Bill uh, Robert Kraft, he's going to fire Bill Belichick. It's like, I did not say that at all. No. What I was talking about for the first time in like 20 years, is he going to extend Bill Belichick? Yes. Is he going to move on from Bill Belichick? How about the quarterback position? What are you going to do? Like, mm-hmm. I don't envy his position at all. He's the mm-hmm. man who owned and operated the greatest dynasty in 
sports history. The most consistent dynasty. He even said it. He said, Bill's been with us for 24 years. He said, oh. loyalty to his businesses, all his mm -hmm. businesses, why he does it. So when I said, I don't envy your position, everybody in Boston was like, he just told Robert Kraft he has to fire Bill. It's like, yo, you said that. I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was talking about all the other. Like, there's a lot. Maybe that's one of them. Sure. I, maybe that's certainly one of the outcomes, which leads me even more to say, I don't envy That's brutal, his business because right? you heard what I just said about Bill Belichick. That's how I feel about Bill Belichick. So it's like I, the, the internet just built a narrative really quickly about what I no, said. Buzz. not them. It was like by the time, because I met, I got a chance to meet a lot of the Army, Navy people. I met some boys that just got out of a submarine. I think they had a three or four month deployment out there. They just got back two days beforehand. Uh, college game day had great mustaches. Got a it. chance to chat with them. The M777 Howitzer guys got a chance to yep. chat with them. A lot of the, like two hours after the show, I'm meeting a lot of people here and a lot of stories. So I finally get in the car to drive myself um, to the to the plane or whatever, and I look and I'm like, "Hold, what? Whoa! I didn't say Robert Kraft is firing Bill Belichick. Y'all are saying mm -hmm. that. You know what I mean? Like this is not what I was just saying. I don't envy what you have to do. So I, I after I listened to it back. Like, my intent was that. It was nothing else. So no. I just would like to let everybody know that I was not disrespecting Robert Kraft. It was a complete opposite of that. It was like, hey, massive respect for everything, and you have a tough position right now. Are you guys getting soft up there? It felt like a lot of the a lot of the New England people aren't soft, right? No, that no, isn't no, no. the case. No, this is this is unfamiliar territory. I, I think it's very similar to how people acted once Brady left. Like they don't know how to act. And mm -hmm. to be completely honest, I don't fault them for it. Our entire life. Me neither, football by the way. Lives, that's yeah. that's kind of what I well, as I was reading it, I was like, Whoa. Yeah. But I guess uh, they, they, it's it's just hostile. Like that, that that's <laughs> how New England is right now, especially around the football team, let alone other things, but New England Patriots fans on their own right now are the most lost they have ever been. And it, it makes sense. I mean, they're three and 10. Obviously, those things that you brought up, the reason you are saying, you know, I don't envy you is because there are so many decisions that Robert Kraft has to make for maybe the first time ever. I mean, you could say in 97 or 98, but really in the first time in the last two and a half decades, Robert Kraft now has to make the, okay, head coach, are we are we keeping him or are we not? Mac Jones, probably not the guy, but then there's another situation where if Marvin Harrison's there and two guys are off the board, do you take Marvin and do you keep Mac there's Jones? so much. That, so that is what I was referring to. Yeah, and, and it's not even, like, even the guys who aren't under contract going into next year, very important guys. Kyle Duggar. Like, there are decisions just on the personnel side, and guess what affects that? who your GM and who your head coach is. So, like, there are so many different things. I think people are just freaking out because genuinely they don't know how to act. We've never been here. It's weird. It's weird for Bill Belichick to not be in that conversation. Like, how's he, how's he do it at this age to win, you know, this many games? He's chasing the wins record, and we're obviously losing a lot, and he's chasing the losing record. Like, there are just things yeah. that people aren't happy about, and I think that just addressed them all, and they were unhappy that they're getting addressed publicly. Well, I, I understand I appreciate that. And they were talking about how Robert Kraft shook my hand. And the like, I am not a human that ambushes people. Like, that is not, no, if you've ever watched a minute of the show, that is not. I was genuinely just telling somebody that I think we had built up a simpatico. Yeah. 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 A little simpatico. Yeah. Like, hey, same I, tribe. I do not envy what you have going on right now. Mm -mm. It did not mean anything that you guys were taking it for. But yeah. also, good luck to everything he has to do. And once again, I don't envy. Robert Kraft's position <laughs> yeah, me right neither. now at all. He's the owner of an NFL team, obviously six Super Bowls, yep. everything like that is built it into the franchise that it is, has owned it for 30 years. I don't envy that. Do not want to be – that's just some tough – stuff that he's going to have to get into. That's all I was reiterating, and I appreciate the passion that everybody had, but I didn't like that narrative just being built so quickly. It's like, I am not, that's not the type of – what are we talking about? No. I don't even know what that even means. So – I will not hold any hate in my heart for New England for trying to bury me the way they did. Thank you. Especially the media and the the people up mm -hmm. there uh, because that's not my intent of the question. I appreciate you doing that because meeting every human that I met up there, can't wait to get back up there and bring your ass up Yeah, there. a lot of dogs. Hey, they, they love old Boston Connor up there. Uh, One half of the hammer, Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here and nine-year NFL vet, a man who spent some time up there at UConn and was drafted mm -hmm. in the second round of the New England Patriots, oh, yeah. host of the Man to Man podcast, everything DB, Darius J. Butler. So let's move past the Patriots, which were awesome. Game day at Army-Navy was sweet. I did think maybe uh, the human, I didn't know the humans, would because that's not a college area. No, not at all. You know what I mean? That's an NFL area. Crowd was great. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I very, it. very great. 
for well, it was State. great for a lot of people to see that side. You no, know, some some of that side of Bill. Obviously, you know the, the coach he is, but he doesn't give much in the press conferences and shit. But you know, seeing the encyclopedia he is of the football history and calling those games and recalling mm-hmm. those moments, and then him giving us the flowers to Lee Corso too. I think that was pretty dope because yeah. I didn't know you know how much of an impact. He had on me. He, you know, obviously been in the in the building. He'll talk about random coaches and teams and even other sports, uh, military, all these different things that impact and influence him as a coach and a man. But to see him give his flowers to Lee Corso, the highlights of mm-hmm. old coach back in the day, that was a dope moment too. I agree. And coach getting emotional was yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I was Sweet. getting a little emotional oh, yeah. with yeah. that entire thing watching oh, yeah. it because you see coach kind of relive. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's awesome. And I've said this before. Uh, I've never. M- three of my grandparents died. My grandma on my dad's side passed when my dad was like 16, so I never met her. My grandma on my mom's side passed when I was like 12 or 13. Grandpa on that side, never really close, but earlier than that. And then my grandpa on my dad's side, good guy, didn't really hang around him much. He's passed, obviously, at this stage point. I've never been around like old people, Mm -hmm. and that sounds terrible, and I do apologize, but I've never been around old people before. And then Coach Corso is like the first older person I've hung out yeah. with on a regular basis, just the amount of things that they've forgotten about yeah. life yeah. is, but I feel like I missed out not having a chance to talk to somebody that's lived through mm-hmm. everything basically. And just like little tid, you know, they might see the world much differently than oh, I yeah. see it, but just like a little, and coach Corso has done that for me. Obviously we're in a pretty similar vein of speaking into microphones and seeing him relive that, old stuff, like him getting thrown into severance, what do they call it? Yeah. Yeah, the seven. water, whatever it is, seven yeah, or whatever. Seven. Mm-hmm. And then seeing him coach and the whistles and everything. And we've been doing that a little bit this year with College Game Day behind the scenes as well, kind of reliving some stuff. It's like, because it's the 30th anniversary. It was cool to see him yeah, get dope. his flowers. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, And I wonder if Coach Corso will ever take a moment and just be like, I did it, okay. you know? Yeah. Because like you, asked, I asked Bill Belichick about it. I'm like, is this your life? Like, that was basic my question. It's entire, yeah. Like, hey, your entire life. Football, you think about Coach Corso. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's same, just, same. you know what I mean? He is still every single week yep. mm-hmm. watching film, breaking it down, mm-hmm. traveling, right. doing it. It's like, I wonder if Coach Corso has ever in his mind, like, I should enjoy and reap the of everything, but I think he's just like a workhorse, mm-hmm. you, know? you know? So you still watching film? Yeah, he's in there with the Cowboys. Just I don't know. I don't see it. But whenever he shows up with this, because he's down in Orlando, you know, whenever he shows up and he has his notes, it's like this guy. He's prepared. This yeah. guy what? Yeah, yeah. This guy certainly knows. And then I'll like, I'll see something or hear something he says, and I'm like, oh, I did not notice that. And then it's like, all right, well, we gotta. If Coach Corso's saying there's a reason, mm-hmm. so I'm very grateful. You're right. I appreciate Bill Belichick doing that. Thank you to Kraft, and thank you to Boston and Foxborough being awesome. Hell yeah. Let's dive into some football, shall we? More specifically, yesterday's football. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, okay, mm. did their thing. Yeah, yeah, they did. And Joe Flacco is an absolute beast. Adam Schefter, I think I just heard, is reporting that he has reverted back to the Browns practice squad. And at the same, he also is now eligible to sign with another team's <laughs> active roster. Despite any interest, Flacco wants to remain in Cleveland. And I believe Stefanski said yesterday that Joe Flacco is the yep. starter for the rest of the year. So after throwing for 300 yards and multiple touchdowns, looking like Super Bowl Joe Flacco, $100 million contract Joe Flacco, mm-hmm. with the team that they have, with a great run game, a good offensive line, some weapons, what? and a defense. And Njoku is just full mm-hmm. on how you doing. I'm here with Joe Flacco. It made sense that maybe the Browns are still going to be in this thing. Maybe with that defense, maybe with the weapons they have. And D Hop, their kicker, hits a 55 uh-huh. yarder mm-hmm. with like a minute something left to put him up 10. Like he's a stud. It's like maybe Joe Flacco goes on another run. And then with the energy and emotion and what Joe uh, Stefanski said afterward, it's like, I'm happy for Joe. F- oh, now yeah. he's back on the practice squad. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Indianapolis Colts. Ooh. Whoa. Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers go get Joe Flacco. Minnesota Vikings, who scored three points yesterday in a win against the Raiders. Maybe you go pick up Joe Flacco. Chargers now. Los Angeles Chargers without Herbert. He's out. No, they're not golf. Easy. (laughs) Come on. You're right. You're right. I was low. I like (laughs) that. This they is did, crazy. They did the same thing last week, and it was confusing to me because I thought he looked really good against the Rams, and and I was con- confused about that. I I tweeted a few weeks ago that after the Browns beat the Steelers, that both these teams think there's no chance that either of them win in the playoffs, that, and that didn't matter. 
That was before Joe Flacco. Was Legit. Yeah. yeah. This is the best Joe Flacco that's ever played, that's ever thrown a football. Mike Florio last night on Sunday Night Football Countdown, yep. um, he said that he talked to Joe Flacco, and Joe Flacco said on a phone call, Florio asked him, was there ever a time where you thought, like, no team's going to call? Like, this is it, because yeah. he's just been sitting around yeah. in great shape. He looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks great. He looks properly jocked. Stout. And, that, and he's spinning it still. Mm -hmm. And Flacco said, at about the same time I got yeah. the call, I thought, maybe, I'm done. And then now, all of a sudden, three weeks later, it's like, this guy might win the Super Bowl. Yeah. This guy might be able to go on a run. Joe Flacco still got it. And now, you know, these stats come out about the Pittsburgh Steelers since Ben retired, and no that's going to be a to tough that. pill to swallow over yeah. in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. No, it just shows how great seven was, but... It, it, Certainly, but also how great Joe Flacco is, yep. I guess, is what other people would say. Because every conversation about Joe Flacco going there was, you just run the ball, hand the ball off, you'll get him in the right position, you'll check him into the right runs. It's like, nah, Joe Flacco is spinning it because that's what Joe Flacco does, yeah. amongst the other things. Uh, letting him get to the point where he's vulnerable to potentially get signed somewhere else or plucked somewhere else doesn't make any sense for me from Cleveland, but a lot of people would say about the Cleveland Browns. Well, the Cleveland Browns are the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, like, so. Yeah. We but I don't know, like, the way that Shefty's tweet was worded, though, like, does Joe have to choose to leave the Browns if he wants to? And it sounds like they're pretty. They think he wouldn't do that. Like I've, it's got. I have no idea. We'll have to ask Shefty exactly what it means. But I mean, from what I've always known, like once you're on the practice squad, you're available to be plucked by any. What was it? JPP just got yes, a, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Um, so definitely odd. I'm sure it has something to do with the money and the transactions. Um, uh, probably a question for Lombo or somebody who's been in that department. But very, very. Odd, especially after the back-to-back -back weeks. What? That, um, you know, footsteps. He's been, you know, Connor's been telling us about footsteps for a couple of years. He has mm -hmm. been. I don't know if that's his nickname. We'll have uh, <laughs> we'll have Schefter on in ten minutes. We'll ask him more about that. Can't wait for it. Let's talk about the team that everybody has been talking about for 15, 20 years. Yep. You turn on sports media any time of day. Mm -hmm. You know what they're talking about? Tim Tebow. Yep. Yeah. Bron, Bron, Bron James. <laughs> right. Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Bingo. Boom. That's the. And then guess what we're doing. 15 minutes in because the average watch time for linear television, about 14 minutes, 15 minutes. So yep. guess what 16 minutes in we're doing? We're going Tim Tebow, mm -hmm. what? LeBron James, what? Dallas Cowboys. What? Okay, great news. You're doing that five times today, yep. and that is your show. Mm -hmm. We were told that by people that were in the TV business, the sports TV business for a long time, very successful mm -hmm. in it. Here's the recipe, okay? If there's some new stuff that needs to be talked about, like Travis Kelsey having the sickest play <laughs> oh, man. in the history of football, not allowed because a guy clearly lined up offsides. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. You add that in, but then you go right back to here. This is the ingredients. People will watch. You'll stay in business. You'll make money. We chose not to do that, mostly because we're in Indiana, we're from Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and if the Cowboys suck, I ain't talking about them. Mm -hmm. Now, Pull. they got a Pittsburgh guy yep. leading yeah. the charge down there and Big Mike McCarthy, mm -hmm. and this team is a wagon. Yeah. What they do at home, 15 straight at home now after this big win over the Eagles, what they're able to do, I don't know what the energy is, I don't know what the mojo is, and I think it's that guy that's playing quarterback, and obviously C.D. Lamb is a stud. This team is what... The team has been hyped up to be for decades now. They put their foot on throats. Mm -hmm. They put people oh, yeah. away. They dominate. And this guy, oh. Brandon Aubrey, the former Notre Dame soccer player, he played soccer. He played a lot of people played soccer. Okay. Not a lot of people going 30 for 30 on field goals, hitting oh, wow. 60 yarders in front of a hundred some thousand people in prime time. Good for another 10, 15 yards. That's a 59 yarder. Good for another 15 yards. Bomb. And anytime you play in the Dallas Cowboys, you're going to be on prime time with yep. a lot of eyes on you. Kicking is all in between the ears. This dude, mental giant, his leg. I don't know how he has been able to just hit the ball. So perfect. pure, so perfect. Every single time. This dude's stroking. I mean, he's stroking in the east. He's stroking in the west. Down in Dallas. This dude's stroking the best right now. He's stroking. He's a stud. They have it all, it feels oh, yeah. like. And on the defensive side of the ball, they got guys buzzing d -bug. All three phases. Obviously, the defense, they've been buzzing for a few years. Michael Parsons, defensive player of the year since he stepped foot in the league. Mm -hmm. um, a cannon, at least. Uh, Lawrence on the other side, he's been a dog, but just that entire defense. Gilly. The, the offense, I mean, the, yeah, Gilly. Gilly. AJ Brown. He, he took a vacation year last hey. year. <laughs> yep. He took a vacation <laughs> year last uh -huh. year here in Indianapolis. It, Andy trades him for a yep. fifth rounder down mm -hmm. in Dallas, and all of a sudden this guy's back in the defensive player of the year conversation. Yeah. So he, he said AJ Brown poked the bear, bear early. You saw him getting each other's face going at it, but he, he's just a savvy vet. He's a dog. I think it would be a first ballot Hall of Famer, should be obviously defensive player of the year, Super Bowl champ, all oh, those yeah. things. Deron Bland, what he's been doing this year, mm -hmm. offensively. 
Dak Prescott right in the MVP conversation. C.D. Lamb has stepped up their game. Mike McCarthy's doing his Fer thing. Ferguson. Heard he came yeah, back. Did I see the report? He him come back into the offensive meeting room with 50? The mm -hmm. many yeah. men. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, it did. So that was the team locker room. Oh, I thought it was offensive. I think it was I after the offensive. game. Uh, maybe I read the thing wrong. I thought it was after the game. In yeah. my head, but they're buzzing, man. I just had him walking into the mm -hmm. locker room afterwards mm -hmm. because he was getting fired last year. Uh -huh. He was getting fired yeah. at the beginning of the year. Remember, there was going to be uh, – Deion Sanders was maybe going to go coach for the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys yeah. at yeah. the beginning of the year if Big Mike didn't win a Super Bowl this year. And Jerry had to be answering questions about, is Mike your guy? Is Mike your guy? In every way he talked, Talk they would say, well, yeah, Ferguson's a beast as well. Remember, they get rid of Schultz. Who yeah. cares? Schultz yeah. is having a great season with the Houston Texans. Tough day yesterday, yeah. obviously. But this Ferguson guy comes in, and they're saying he's a tone setter. Like, yeah. hey, this is the guy that will go fight people if you need to fight him. He's young. He's a young yeah. guy. Yeah. The trenches, too. The offensive line, you got to get, oh, yeah. you know, Filthy. kind of more healthy this year. And they just physically, I feel like on both sides of the ball, especially when you when you see a Philadelphia Eagles team, that's probably the first word you think of is the physicality. Hmm. Offensive side, defensive side, and the trenches. And they just got beat up by the Cowboys. What is that sound Tell you made that, over there? Well, that, it was. Well, they got beat up the last two weeks. Well, I'm saying, but when you think Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. first thing that comes to mind, at least for me. And to see Dallas just punch him in the mouth. Defense, you talked about Gilmore, you know, a couple punch outs. Uh, Devontae Smith got a punch out. It just, they just got beat up. So do that for 60 minutes. And then you hear Dak after the game like, look, I didn't even play my best ball. We should have put 50 up if I played my best uh, and the speech afterwards in the locker room, mm -hmm. uh, Big Mike basically says, we talk about it and we be about it. And then he hands the microphone over and listen to what the players are saying after demolishing not only NFC East rival, but somebody else that's at the top looking for home field advantage throughout the playoffs. All right, boys. What's <laughs> up, dude? Hell yeah, boys. Talked about it. That, that's a line moment right there. That was outstanding. We did exactly what we said we were going to do. Yeah. All right, most importantly, J. Lou. Yeah, J. Lou. Listen to J. Lou here. Love, 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 love. Look, we talked about protecting the, our way of life, man. Well, yeah. And that shit happens every day, man, as long as we live it, bro. Let's get it. Hey, let's get this uh, film room and see what we did wrong. Fix it and come back Facts. stronger, bro. Yes. Yes. Cowboys on three, Cowboys on three, one, two, three. Cowboys! Doesn't feel like the same Cowboys. No, like that, that feels like a vastly different Cowboys. Let's get in the film room. Let's get back to work. You know, they've been embarrassed for a long time. Cowboys fans have been embarrassed for a long time. Stephen A's made a living off of embarrassing yeah. Cowboys yeah. fans mm -hmm. for a long time. That team just seems to be a bit different. And obviously the stats that are coming out about them are saying the same story. The Cowboys have now won eight games by 20-plus points this season. Fourth team in the Super Bowl area to ever do it. Two out of the last three have won the Super Bowl, and the other team lost in the Super Bowl. So mostly good results whenever you're blowing teams out <laughs> for at least yeah. half the amount of games. They've been fun to watch. I think something that you pointed about, the physicality of a team in Dallas being physical, you know, that's Western Pennsylvania. Nick Sirianni, IUP is where his dad goes. Exactly. And he said, hey, it's an offensive, defensive line. It's in the trenches, whatever. Big Mike believes in the same oh, yeah. exact thing. And I think if you watch Big Mike during the, the games, I don't know what it was at the beginning of the season whenever he was calling plays for the first time in 10 years. Yeah, yeah long time. Whatever it was, long time. As soon as the play is ending, Big Mike has the next one already cooking. There's no second guessing. No. There's no doubting. There's nothing. Big Mike, this is at like 30, look, there's 30 some seconds still on the play clock. So this isn't like, I wonder what we should play, call. I wonder what we should do. Big Mike and Dak are doing a dance, mm -hmm. and it is a beautiful one right now. Big Mike's in his bag. Oh, yeah. So are the Cowboys. Now on the flip side. Ooh. Uh-oh. Right. You you talked about it there a little bit. You talked about the last two weeks. They've gotten punched in the mouth. It's Big like, time. what are the Eagles? You know, what the hell is going to happen with this Eagles team? Cowboys are running just like this, mm -hmm. just like this, whenever they had to, right down the center of that defense. Fletcher Cox obviously makes a big play. Jalen Carter has a touchdown last mm -hmm. night. But these teams, what we were learning about them early in the season is like, hey, Rhino, this D-line, everything they got going, you're not going to be able to run. And Jalen Carter needs to be on offense. Look at how smooth he is. Yeah. <laughs> Cruise. That's knee drive arm swing. Uh -huh. They call him a Rhino. I mean, yes, absolutely an athlete. Doesn't want the ball either. Mm -hmm. We're losing. I'm out of here. Let's have a good one. Humility, I love it, especially with everything he's been through. But they did get beat at oh, their yeah. own game. Yeah. They got beat at the Dallas Cowboys game. And this isn't the first week that's, that's happening. Is Coach Sirianni losing a little bit, or is this just Big Dom not being on the sideline, Ty? It may be Big Dom not being on the sideline, but, like, I mean, you mentioned it. Like, their defense just isn't the same as it was last year. Like, their defense was so good last year. They were sacking the quarterback – 
like we had pretty much never seen before. And I think that is the one thing about the Cowboys, too, is like typical Cowboys teams, when the Eagles get that strip sack and return it for a touchdown, like that's when the momentum swings. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I after I seeing that, I was like, okay, we got ourselves a game. Like Philadelphia is going to kind of seize this momentum back. And for whatever reason, they just can't. I don't know. It's like it, it, the last couple weeks, it seems like any time they've gotten any kind of momentum, they just they shoot themselves in the foot, whether it's going having, being forced to go for it on fourth and nine and just not having a play where they can get past the sticks. And they just, I don't know, they just look like a wounded bird right now. Like I, I assume. I don't that, love it. Well, and I think they probably knew when they looked at their schedule, like this was kind of the chunk of it where it's like, hey, if we can Tough go. Stretch. Yeah, if we can, if we can kind of just survive going through this. But on the other side, I, I don't think they expected the Cowboys to look like this is the Cowboys division now. They're awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, so, and last year, last year they ran the ball and they got to the quarterback. They're, I just look like they're 17th in yards per rush, middle of the pack. And then they, what, they set the record last year for sacks or, or one away from setting yeah. the record. And they're 22nd this year in sacks. So it's, mm. There's not doing the same stuff that they were doing last year. That Those are explosive the- plays on the defensive side. Yes. You know, and you talk about explosive plays. A sack, you, all of a sudden it's first and 10, yep. second and 17. Yeah. Like that is Huge. game Changing. changers. Yep. From being number one to number 22, obviously putting you in a different spot, different position. Still got everything in front of them, though. For sure. Yes. Eagles still have everything in front of them. I don't know if it's the Eagles who have the fourth hardest uh, remaining schedule, and the Cowboys have the 10th easiest remaining schedule, yeah. or if it's flipped. I think it's flipped. Yeah, I believe it's flipped. Cowboys have Bills, then Dolphins, both on the road coming up. Okay, so weeks. Eagles still have, and, and okay. They, and they still control their own destiny, like even the way it's set up, yep. like if they if they finish with the same record, they'll still have the tiebreaker over the Cowboys and win the division. Let's go to the AFC, shall we? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Let's go to a conversation starter and ender that involves a man being offsides on the <laughs> offensive side mm. of the field. <laughs> now, obviously, Chiefs, Bills was exciting. Oh, yeah. Great. Anytime Always these two is. teams play against each other, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's almost becoming the New England-Indianapolis Colts yes. AFC rivalry where every time they play, it's normally going to be a hell of a game. Unless New England's playing with deflated footballs. Well, sure. well slow yeah. down. You know what I mean? Slow Unless down. that's <laughs> yeah. happening. Now, the end of the game, let's get right to it here. Kadarius Toney from the New York Giants, he's standing offsides for the last play. Okay, it's not the last play, but you get it. Second and 10, they still had an opportunity after this. Kadarius Toney, clearly offsides. Now, Patrick (laughs) Mahomes is not happy about it, clearly offsides. Go ahead and run this thing. Uh, This becomes the cleanest play I've ever seen made by a skill position player. Travis Kelsey with the (laughs) quick release, Dan Marino, perfect spiral, having the gut sack to do that. Obviously huge. Having the ability to throw a ball 20 yards while running full speed, about to get tackled with a quick release to a guy, brilliant. Having the forethought to be able to do, brilliant. All those things. And I listened to him talk about this on Pardon My Take with uh, PFT, where PFT was like, hey, this needs to become a thing. PFT's been pounding the drum for this for a long time. Travis said the first time he did it was in like 2018 or 2017 or something like that. He threw it to LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy went for like 20 yards. So he comes off the field and he's like, just waiting for Andy Reid to say something to him, whether good or bad. Like, why would you ever do that? Immediately after the game, Andy Reid comes up to him and says, what if we did that every single play? And then (laughs) Travis's brain, like, melted at the moment. And Travis talked about the Mm risk-reward. You know, like, if you pitch to a guy and he only gets three yards, like, was it worth pitching the ball at all in this entire thing? Is the guy paying attention that I'm going to do this? Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into it. I think he was a high school quarterback too, Travis. Yeah. So, so like, he and he he even explained in the clip that I saw in part of my take where he was like, now I try to know, like, hey, where's the running back going to be? Who's on the other side of the field? Like, he's trying to learn Mm -hmm. where everybody is so that he could potentially do that. In the biggest moment, they pull it off, except for Kadarius Tony being off sides. Mm -hmm. Now, Gene Steratore gave an incredible answer about this entire thing, like, Hey, refs don't want to call offensive offsides. I think it's been called 11 times this year. Yeah, that's what someone said this morning. I think it's been called 11 times this year, three times last year. Like, people don't want to call this. You want to have a conversation with the coaches. You want to tell people to get back. Unless it is egregious. Mm -hmm. And this was a blatant offsides. His head and Von Miller's head (laughs) are almost touching each other. And if you look at normal lineup, look on the other side, that's a normal lineup. Yeah, yeah, that is a normal. Everybody's like, well, his foot's on the ball. It's where the ball is. It's like, yeah, but your head, you see. The head is, it's like, it's just, that is not how Mm. Like, Darius Tony messed up here. Yeah, you know, can't sure. do it. Don't sure. love that it took place. And the refs probably, as they're watching the play unfold, are going, uh, uh, no. shit. Uh, <laughs> no. But Patrick Mahomes was not happy about it because this call, this has only been called 11 times all year. Here's what Patrick Mahomes had to say about it afterwards. I mean, it's I mean, obviously tough to swallow. Um, 
I mean, not, not only for, for me, but just for football in general, I mean, just to take away greatness like that. I mean, for a guy like Travis okay. to make a play like that, and who knows if we win. But as I know as fans, you want to see the guys on the field decide the game. And that's why last week I didn't say anything about the flag. They didn't get called on the Marquez. And so, I mean, I, don't, it, I mean, they're human, man. They make mistakes. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's every week we're talking about something. And yeah. all I can right. do is go out there and give everything I have. And I'm proud of the guys because that's what we did. And it was a great football game that ended – Another great football game that just ended like that. It's just tough, tough to swallow. First time we've ever seen Patrick Mahomes act the way he acted afterwards. He was visibly upset with the side yeah. judge. I think he was trying to go to bat for his guy, though, too, Kadarius yes. Tony, right? Because the easy answer here, the internet said it about Kadarius Tony. This guy's a goof. Why is this yeah. guy always around losses and being the reason for the Kansas City Chiefs? He's new there. Uh, he had a massive punt return for them in a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. yep. That immediately mm -hmm. gets forgotten about. This season has a little been a little bit different. But this type of action from Patrick Mahomes, and then what he said afterwards about, you know, it's always something with him. And a majority of humans around the football world are like, Pat, you're wrong. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. But I think he's going to bat for his guys. And he's also speaking what a lot of people think about the refs not making decisions. Andy Reid would go on to say it was a bit embarrassing for the NFL for that to happen. So both guys, Pat and Andy, came out and said, like, this is not good. The rest of the world said they made the right call. Joining <laughs> us now is a man to see what the, uh, you know, what's the ripple effects of yeah. this thing. Mm. Senior NFL insider for ESPN, Michigan man, Adam Schefter. Yeah, Schefter. 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 Schefter, what's going on? Schefter, I apologize for making you wait there a few moments as we laid it out, but I think this is a big deal because Patrick Mahomes, face of the league, okay? We never see Patrick Mahomes do this. This is very out of character for Patrick Mahomes. Uh, our immediate thought is, oh, the NFL is going to find the hell out of Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid for all of this. Is that how you see this kind of turning out? And what do you think the next steps are for all parties? Well, I don't think the NFL likes for people to come out and question officiating, something that the league doesn't take kind to. And so I would imagine that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid both potentially could get fined this week for What's their that comments. Look like? What's that look like? What is that normal? It depends how much of a message the league would want to send. And in this case, whether the league would be willing to offer any leniency or whether they'd want to risk the wrath of the face of the league and Patrick Mahomes and upset him before the holidays and levy a fine that would be stiffer than normal? Or do you want to say, you know what, Patrick, don't do this again. Don't do this again. Please don't criticize the officials. They are under enough pressure and scrutiny as it is. We don't need you piling on. So there's a couple of ways the league could go about handling this. And the same would be true of Andy Reid, who never comes out and says the kind of things that he does. But he questioned officials, officials as well after the game. So when you've got Andy Reid doing that, when you've got Patrick Mahomes doing that, clearly uh, they had an issue. And the thing is, is that it was the right call. Now, you may get a speeding ticket for going 61 in a 55 zone that you don't like. You're yeah, like, 61? What are we doing here? Yeah. But the fact of the matter is you were speeding. And if you look at the view, he is lined up off sides. Yes. Is it ticky tacky? Absolutely. Not really. Is it ridiculous? Yes. Do we lose this highlight yeah. forevermore? What would have been one of the great plays of, of Mahomes and Kelsey's career? So that when Travis Kelsey is going to the Hall of Fame, one day we see that highlight. We see, look at this play that he made down the stretch. But that's wiped out now by this offsides that Kadarius Tony was on. I mean, he's offside. Yeah. He's we, offside. We all agree, Schefter, literally, we all agree that, like, Kadarius can't happen. From Kadarius yeah. Tony, like, this cannot even be a question. He ends up being the guy that scores the touchdown. Too. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, like, it, it, he wanted this on his right. highlight reel as well. <laughs> he, so it's great. Pat, he catches the ball. He turns around. He's happy. He's celebrating. Mm. Kelsey recognizes something's going on. He looks back to see what the – Tony has no idea that he lined up offside. Like, what happened? Yeah. Well, you were offside. You were offside, and I saw, they called it. I saw Booger McFarlane put out a tweet about mm -hmm. the speeding metaphor as well, where he said, like, 60 and a 55. This feels like a 60 and a 45. Sure. You know what I mean? This yep. feels like a 60 and a 45, because they'll probably give you nine. Right? Nine, you're fine. fine. Ten, you're mine, is what mm -hmm. I, yep. I think you hear. I think he was maybe going, like, 57 in a 45, just because... I mean, that's an easy decision to make. It's just a brain fart, too. Tight. Like That can happen to humans. Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid publicly very much came out and were like, Saw that this, this ain't Tony's <laughs> fault. Mm -hmm. This is the ref's fault. So it's going to be a fine. Uh, obviously, we're all... By, by the way, there's a lot of people that say a lot of things about the officials. Very few of them 
are willing to put their name and face on it. Agreed. There's a lot of people that have a lot of problems with the officials, and they rip them, and they criticize them. And ask the league office what it's like on a typical Monday, how many calls they're going to get to see about coaches complaining about a certain call. Like, that's one of the hardest jobs in the world, I think, uh, to do that, to take those calls, to answer these men's questions and points, because more often than not, they're right. Yeah. And the officials are wrong. Yeah. But and careers change and legacies change and people get fired and all that stuff. Nobody wants to be a ref. So those that sign up to do it, we appreciate you. Yep. Yeah. But also you're in the NFL. So let's go ahead <laughs> and, and get it right. In NFL also, let's do everything we can to help these refs be the best that they possibly could be, like hiring the best people. For instance, let's get Gene Steratore mm -hmm. back in the building. Please. And also, you know who else? Let's get Dean Blandino. Why not? Back. You know what? Let it, me tell you something. There's been conversation to get Dean back. Whoa. But Dean makes a lot of money in TV. And so NFL's question, got a lot of money. NFL's NFL got a lot agree. of money. Uh, you know I what agree. Mean? You know what? Bring him back. We'd yeah. love to see Dean back with the NFL. He does a great job. And Dean's Gene. tremendous. Yeah. And, and Gene, Gene Steratore. And, and Gene, Gene Steratore back in He's there. really good, too. Yes, very. The, he's the most... Uh, I mean, I'm not going to speak for every person that's ever played in the NFL. I'm sure there's people that don't like Gene Steratore for some reason. Maybe he had too much moxie, mm. too handsome, smelled too good. Maybe. Sure. I don't know what it is. But basically, every player that has ever played on a field or a court that Gene Steratore is refing on is like, this is the guy. This is, he understands the flow of the game. He communicates well. I think him getting back into it will be huge. But with that being said, like that game was awesome. That game was phenomenal. We have a chance to talk about another one, hopefully, whenever they meet again. Let's go to the other side of the ball with the Buffalo Bills. These reports coming out about Sean McDermott and the team meeting thing. And we saw how the team rallied around him at the end. Brandon Bean said, this is our guy. Yep. And the players, before he could even say anything, he said, good win. They said, we got your back. We got your It was like, uh, I almost got emotional for Coach McDermott. And I think if Coach McDermott was the old high school wrestler and the guy he is, he probably gets a little bit emotional. But there was a whole, <laughs> hold, you yep. cannot yeah. cry oh, in yeah. front of these men right here whenever they're going to bat for him. What is the status of all that. I assume the NFL is monitoring this, and why did things like this happen? This is somebody that's jaded against Sean McDermott, you think? What, what, how did we get to the point of this story getting out, and what is the purpose of this story getting out as a big-time journalist like you are? You know, we had this conversation yesterday in the green room of ESPN before we went on and talked about it on ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown. What happens is Tyler Dunn wrote this series about Sean McDermott. And obviously, he had been gathering a lot of the information, and obviously, the Bills are not playing well, and obviously, Sean McDermott's coming under questions and fire. Now, what's interesting to me is that this story occurred four years ago and never came out. I didn't know about it. I didn't hear about it. And it's interesting that people around the team didn't document it. But let's just say, for instance, somebody came to me and said, hey, last week, did you hear what Sean McDermott said back in 2019? about 9-11, which is offensive. And I'd be like, yeah, well, what do you do with that? Like, what, what do you do? It's four years old. But Tyler Dunn was doing an exhaustive series on many of the things, many of the things that he had heard about Sean McDermott and obviously included that particular incident, which was the most headline-making one in that series and that story. Uh, yeah. And so <laughs> he, he, he basically folded it into a larger look at, many of the questions that had arisen about Sean McDermott on a Buffalo team that had been struggling, that had been through some issues, and he felt, in his own mind, you could ask him, I can't speak for him, I don't know what he was thinking, that this was the right time to publish that piece, which obviously many in the Bills organization felt was personal, and Sean McDermott was painted in an unfavorable light. But these people said these things, and there were people that felt that way about him. That's undeniable. And he did this thing back in 2019 that will follow him and that he has to explain. But yes, to your point also, you could see how much they cared about him and how they rallied behind him and how they stood up for him after that game. And so you have all these things that all can be true, but I would imagine that's how it happens is it gets folded into a larger story about Sean McDermott. Because on its own, if you hear about that incident, it's a strange story to do. Like, would I do a story this Sunday that Sean McDermott made this offensive remark? Like, why? It's weird. Yeah, Tyler's, it's hey, Tyler's it's Tyler's done is doing today. journalism. You got to do what you got to do. I understand. Like, hey, we're we're not in your world, but journalism, that is a story that I think people 
obviously did want to hear, and when they heard it, they were alarmed by it. So Tyler Dunn doing what he's doing. But I did appreciate how the team responded. Now, mm-hmm. with that being said, if Tony's about a half a foot back, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, oh, that boy. story with it all. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it cool. crazy how the NFL oh, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is crazy how the NFL works? Darius has a question for you, Chef. Uh, speaking yes, of sir. it being crazy how the NFL work, uh, Chef, D, you dropped a post on X earlier about Joe Flacco reverting back to the practice squad, obviously coming off a 300-yard performance, three TDs. Why is that happening? Is it some type of something they have yeah. in front office-wise with money? Like, uh, educate us on that. Yeah, well, a few people have actually texted me since you asked about that question. And basically, these are the rules, Darius. Basically, when you are promoted from the practice squad to the active roster, you revert back to the practice squad that Monday. Now, the Browns could have signed Joe Flacco on a full-time basis to their active roster last week. They didn't do that. So just by rule this morning, Ah. Flacco reverts back. Now, what's funny about that is that this guy has been something of a savior in Cleveland the last couple of weeks, and he's lit it up, and he's got this team on a path to where they're going to make the playoffs, and he's looked like, if you'll allow me, elite Joe Flacco. There we go. Hey. Throwing, yep. The boy right? Jeff Throwing long touchdown passes. He's looked elite. And so he now, as of this morning, even though he was named their starter for the rest of the year, is on their practice squad this morning until they make it a full-time contract, which they – Having it done. Now, what's interesting is if you're a team that has a quarterback question this morning, and Steelers. we can think of a few of them, oh, there's one. How about the Chargers? How about the Giants? How about the Jets? How about, like, we oh, could go Jets. on and on. There, are, there, there Jets don't have a problem. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Jets, oh. Jets do not have a problem. They figured it out. They got, the they got next, a sweet boy. They swinging. got a good, sweet boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to not play him in the first half. Yeah. That might have been the issue they're, they're, this they're, entire they're time. Closer. There, there are multiple teams that have a quarterback question. If they wanted this morning, they could call Joe Flacco or Joe Flacco's agent and say, hey, we want to sign you onto him. our active roster, and we'll, we'll give you whatever money we're going to give you, and we could sign him. Now, the issue is, I think there have been some calls that have been made. Joe Flacco wants to stay in Cleveland. Okay, so, so he can't – So because we – our understanding mm-hmm. of the practice squad just years ago when we were in the league, like any team could just pluck anybody off the practice squad. That is not the case with veterans or vested players? No, no, no. Pat, when you're on a practice squad, you're essentially a free agent. You're on, you're on that practice squad, but if another team wants to sign you as their punter and you want to go to that team, you can then do that. So Joe You can Flacco, say no, though, too? I didn't know that was the case. Yeah, yeah you can say no, of course. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Because I didn't on, know Joe. That. Because there was a time <laughs> where if you got plucked from somebody else's practice squad, they had to activate you, I think, for four weeks? I think, or, or four or three weeks? Right, but, but the point is, whether you're Joe Flacco or another practice squad player, you're agreeing to leave. Once, yeah, once you get signed to the other team's active roster, I don't know whether it's three or four weeks, you're obligated to be on that roster for... X number of games. Yeah, active roster, which is obviously a much bigger check mm-hmm. than the practice squad. Correct. Check. And the season. But by the way, go ahead. Any of these teams that have a quarterback question or a need, if they wanted, they there's nothing to stop them from saying to Joe Flacco this morning, "Hey, Joe, we'll pay you a million dollars a game for the last four games, and we want you to come in and be the starter." Like they could do that if they and, want. And then Joe takes that immediately to the Browns, who says mm-hmm. they're saying million bucks. Sorry, you guys pay two hundred thirty million guarantee to a yeah. guy. We, you, you, we're watching film. We do you know it too. <laughs> I just need one, two, five. Good. Mo- hey, Joe. Good for you, yeah. Joe. Good hey, Joe. Joe. Good for you, Joe. All right, let's talk about some other things around the NFL as the hour continues to wind down. Go ahead, con man. Yeah, Chef. You mentioned Flacco to the Chargers. You already tweeted on X <laughs> that Herbert will be out on Thursday. How long is he going to be out? He was hiding his hand on the sideline in his little Chargers cool hoodie. Uh, is that a very serious injury and then cj stroud i believe he did not come back dougie right. davis mills came in mm-hmm. is he going to be the guy in houston this week or is stroud going to be in concussion protocol m- might be able to play next week well here's where we are coming basically with justin herbert he's visiting with hand specialists today the most noted one is steven shin who is a noted hand specialist in los angeles and they're going to figure out what he needs to do now i'm going to guess that when you have a fractured index finger that it's going to be very hard to throw a football for the remainder of the season. Uh, Again, I'm guessing here, he's not playing Thursday night, okay? He will not play Thursday night. Justin Herbert is different in that he's come back and played at various points when people said he wouldn't or couldn't, and he has. And we saw Trevor Lawrence do the same thing with a high ankle this past week. So Justin Herbert has a high threshold, but that's a tough one to overcome when you're 
uh, quarterback index fingers fractured. So I'm going to guess that there's a decent chance that we don't see him again this season, Ooh. but that's what they're trying to figure out by meeting with these doctors. Is there a way to get him back? How soon could he get back? Does he need surgery? All those questions are being answered in the visits that he's having today and tomorrow with these various hand specialists. Who was the second one you asked about? CJ Stroud, he got his head slammed. Yeah. Well, he, he's, a, he's in the protocol, and look, as we've seen throughout the course of the year, the majority of players in protocol one week don't return to play in time the next week. Now, we'll see if CJ Stroud can become one of the few people that can but the percentages are against him. He'll have to go through the protocol. There'll be the various steps, and we'll see whether or not he can make it back. It's possible, but again, the data shows that the odds are against him playing next week. That was a big-time shot. Yeah. yeah. The, the ground yeah. is the ground's seemingly undefeated for some of those tackles. Yeah. The hip drop tackle, what about the head slam on the ground tackle? No kidding. Uh, stop it. I, all of Outlaw these, that one. Yeah, we need hugs. Falls. Yeah. There you go. But Especially also yeah. wrap leg yep. around yep. so you can act as a cast basically it, for the legs. Exactly. And fall. That's the only tackle style we need. You know, that's uh if we could get that accomplished, we'd all be very grateful. Look, mm. we love CJ Stroud around here. Yeah. Great player. And uh Great player. I, if anybody can bounce back after a concussion protocol that nobody else could, seems like CJ Stroud's probably the guy. We want him to be safe though. We got a long ass yeah. career ahead mm -hmm. of us. Ty has a question for you, Shefty. What's going yes. on with uh Justin Jefferson, Shefty? We saw him come back, and obviously, uh, I think Kevin O'Connell said like they avoided a catastrophic injury, but they're still in the playoff hunt. Um, so, do we know is he going to miss like an extended period of time here? Is he going to be back soon? And also, uh, Josh Dobbs got benched. Like, what are the Vikings doing at quarterback? Well, Justin Jefferson was taken to the hospital for precautionary tests, and he was able to rejoin the team. I was told this morning he's okay. Whatever okay means, okay. sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly. People are you know, being short and guarded, and they're not being as forthcoming as you'd like to get full explanations. The fact of the matter is he's going to be okay. They're on a yeah. short week. I, I think I'd be surprised mm. a little bit if he played this week on a short week, coming off that oh. with the hamstring. Uh, I think you know there was a big blow that he took, and the fact that he went to a hospital, even as a precautionary measure, tells you that there was some concern about it. Now, they said chest. Obviously, I'm going to guess that it was a rib and they were checking for some internal organ injuries and he checked out okay and he was able to rejoin the team and let's hope that he can come back sooner rather than later. But I would say that his status uh, for Saturday's game is in jeopardy. I think it's fair to say that at this point in time. The quarterback situation uh, doesn't sound like they're going to go back to Josh Jobs. Josh Jobs, Kevin O'Connell left it open after the game. What was interesting last week is yeah, that was fun. The pastronaut. It was, yeah, it was fun. so much fun. He's he's like the, it was he's a great the story. Great story. In the NFL. It was. Hey, but, one of the best stories of the NFL season. The fact of the matter is, it looks like the Vikings want to write a new story right now. And so last week, when Kevin O'Connell came back after the bye or after that break, he said he felt like he needed to get Dobbs with Jefferson. Want to see what that was like. He also highlighted Jaron Hall, their rookie who initially got hurt in Atlanta, suffered the concussion that allowed Dobbs to come in when he didn't know the plays, when he was rehearsing the snap counts and the snap on the sideline. I, I think it, Jaron Hall is going to get a chance here at some point in time pretty soon. Minnesota, fascinating story. Yeah. Was so happy to see Justin Jefferson back. Yeah. yeah. And then next clip you see on the internet is him walking off the field. It's like, ah, because he's up for big money too. Tone Diggs has a question for you. Yeah, Shefty, Shefty can we go back to the coach's hot seat heat -o meter uh, that you own and I believe you're licensing and, and selling. Uh, who has the hottest? Well, let, me, let me guess where this is going. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who, go ahead. Tell who us, Shefty. No, it's, it's, it's real simple. Who has the hottest seat this week? Who's getting fired this week? Okay? Ooh, Gotta be staying. I'm not Gotta just be. saying Name. We don't love it. We don't you know, love it. Everybody, everybody keeps asking about Brandon Staley, but they're on a short week. They play Thursday night, so. right? So he's not getting fired on a short week. No, they're not firing him. Why not? <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? 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 Why? what? Just asking. Sorry about the blood over there. Just asking. asking. Is there anybody? Now, here's what. Go ahead. You know, here, here, the, the Chargers, their ownership has continued to be cheap and continue to say that they would be patient and that they would not do anything oh. in season. They haven't. They've gone through six head coaches and haven't made an in-season head coaching change in six hires since 1998, since they fired Kevin Gilbride. So, again, but here's – you're looking for pockets and windows, right? If a team is going to make a change, when would they do it? Well, the Chargers play Thursday. If they don't win Thursday, are those questions going to come up again Friday morning? They are. Those questions will come up again on Friday morning, not this morning. 
This morning, this week, Brandon Staley's safe. They lose another game, there'll be a new round of questioning on Friday morning. Okay, there's you said seven to ten places that'll have a head coaching vacancies. Ooh. Obviously, we know the Carolina Panthers and the Raiders are already two of them, even though they have interim head coaches. Uh, Eberflus in Chicago feels like that's huh? He's good. Has he played? I was told last week. I was told last week on him that he had a chance to save his job if they finished strong. They came in. They played a great game yesterday. They won the game at home. And you know, again, these things, these coaching seats, the temperature on them, they shift from one week to the next, from one month to the next. And so, whereas Iberflus was fired six weeks ago, everybody's ready to run him off. Hey, a strong finish here. I think he could save his job there in Chicago. I don't think it's out of the question. So. Uh, I still stand behind the seven to ten, Pat. Seven to ten, that that's still going to happen. All but right, sweet. maybe Matt Eberflus is not in that mix. We don't love that. Obviously, anybody losing jobs, it stinks. But it's the NFL. Okay, yep. it's a meritocracy. That's you right. gotta yeah. you gotta be good, or you move on. That's why professional sports are incredibly competitive, and it's at the level that it is. Chef, if you like to break some news, Darius J. Butler just wants to take it. A dump. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, one just take. Uh, one just take a dump. <laughs> Debo, we're pulling for yeah. you. Good Good luck, he, he, he snuck off the thing. He was. He, he was. Yeah. He, he was, was yeah. clenching. Yeah. He had a little Ty Schmidt. I know. I, I've seen did. that walk. Yeah. We've heard it. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so if you want to break that news, I don't know. Put it on the ticker. <laughs> it's uh, on the bottom line right now. Yeah. Good. Bingo. Uh, tonight, anything we need to know about for these two games? Hell yeah. Let's go. Two yeah. more games, games tonight. Go. We're excited, right? We're pumped. Huge. You know what? I'm actually going. I'm about to leave right now for MetLife. Uh, first Monday night game that I've attended here in, in quite some time. So, yeah, there we go. They, they we'll be in attendance for that one. Jordan Love lighting it up, playing well. They're going to need A.J. Dillon to come through tonight. The Giants defense. I know the Packers think a lot of the Giants defense right now. Um, big game for the Packers. I, I don't have any Whoa. great knowledge or wisdom to drop on you with this particular matchup other than we got a Monday night doubleheader. It seems like there's a lot of football left. It just seems like... Just a lot going on lately. Just it, a lot of football stuff. It's a beautiful time, and it's only going to get bigger. And uh, every conversation we we have with you each week, it's going to get a little spicier. Yes, yeah. it is. You know, because the yeah. end of the season, a lot of stuff starts <laughs> happening. We appreciate you so much. Hey, happy Hanukkah over there. Huh? Let's go. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. We enjoying the season? We enjoying the season? Uh, Hanukkah, good every night, right? From what I've never experienced one. Good every night, I've heard. Hey, you know, you you, you got to come over to, to light the yes. menorah one. Yeah. Like, seriously, like you know, you last week you guys were in New York. Last week, <laughs> we got eight. You know, we got eight crazy nights. Hey, you know what? The, you know what? The great song right now that you can listen to on Spotify. Adam the Sandler. Eagles general manager Howie Roseman singing about the dreidel. You got to listen. to it. It's unbelievable. Okay, I will. Is yeah. this from the Philly Christmas? It, it, he taped it with the offensive lineman. Okay, and it's, nice. one of the featured, it's one of the featured soundtracks. I, I know this. that. Jason Kelsey's gotten a lot of love, and Jordan Mailata's got, and they deserve every ounce they get because those guys are fantastic in that. But Howie Roseman singing about the dreidel on that album, really good. All right. Really good. Is it like my dreidel, dreidel, dreidel? I made it out of clay. I learned that when I was a kid. That's uh, I, <laughs> I didn't get a chance to enjoy it though. I hope you guys are over there. I appreciate the hell out of you, Shefty. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Guys. He'll Likewise. be boots on the ground in MetLife. Adam Schefter. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all, so is that just the song that all of us yeah, non-Jewish yeah, yeah. people learned? <laughs> I believe so, yes. yes. <laughs> that was a quick dump. It was. <laughs> it's no hitter. Dump. It's not a dump. Whoa! We you were getting, up, the, you're getting up to pee. Hour two. Know. We'll be on the other side of this break with AJ Hawk and Ryan Clark will join us. Be your friend, tell a friend something nice. Take three. 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 <laughs> He's saying don't go off the top. It's too shallow. All you're going to hear this stadium do is they put the big paw up, they start shaking it, and they go, whoa. Yeah, he loves the defensive side of the ball. He said yesterday to me that this is a blue-collar team. They win it on special teams. They have five block kicks this season. The defensive side of the ball, Lynch leads the Big 12 in sacks. But also on the offensive side, Denzel Mims is an absolute animal. He is a weapon. Charlie Brewer, the quarterback from Lake Travis, his dad was a quarterback in Texas. Yeah. His grandpa was a quarterback in Texas. And the people here in Waco just so happened to get a chance to see Charlie Brewer on a daily basis. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Waco! Yeah, boo.
over Coming here up. is going to mean a little bit different than what it means on the internet currently. And hopefully here in Baylor, they hope they're not hearing a lot of Boomer sooner. Everybody wants to be a punter, including quarterbacks. If I was a quarterback, I'd want to be a punter as well. Zero yards on that punt. Zero. That's an embarrassing situation. Zero. The Dak dance that gets on national television has led to a lot uh, of losses, but you got to uh, respect the hips being able uh, to uh, go. am I going to make for college game day? Well, I want to make something creative. I want to make something fun. No, to hell with it. I don't like OU. <laughs> <laughs> it's so thick. Look how thick that thing is. That's years and years of patience. Right Right now? Okay, let's do it. And we job. are out here on the Brazos River, which you can take a boat to the game. One of the only stadiums in the country that you can do that. It's beautiful out here. A lot of people would say, this is the last time I'm going to be on game day. The last time I allegedly did what I'm about to do, I ended up in a jail cell. Let's go! <laughs> That's full commitment, by the way. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! <laughs> Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. people and welcome back to our humble abode the thunderdome on this overreaction monday december 11th 2023 hour two of the program starts right now football happened in a big way this weekend obviously army navy came down to a Ooh. goal line stand yeah is sweet. there anything better than that i do not think so congrats to army getting a big Damn win right. over yeah. the navy Damn and winning the commanders and chief trophy after also beating air force earlier in the year and then sunday nfl football was delightful and now it's getting a little crowded at the top of the afc mm -hmm. and the nfc who will have home field advantage how will the playoffs look so much on the line with four weeks remaining in the nfl season after tonight's two games yep. obviously yeah. the toxic tables here at boston connor and at ty schmidt boston terrier on your shirt you look awesome thank you pat yeah we got a few dog shirts figure we wear wearing still got some in the uh in the chamber back at the house i love that you know playoffs are coming up so oh yeah, yeah. believe They're, me i already have a few man. that i haven't worn specifically because of that yeah pat it's already here very close happened yesterday i was watching one of the games um mm -hmm. i think it was niners seahawks okay, okay. And the Niners were starting, you know, like Drew Locke, cute story early. Yes. Okay. Made Dude. some good plays. Slinging it. Top, top the, pass. Yeah, he was. It was awesome. And then, you know, it all kind of started. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, like, backup quarterback, Niners defense, like this was inevitable here. Layup. Mm -hmm. You know. Now there's a report coming out from Michael Silver, who I'm not the biggest fan of, but he's been around the NFL for a long time. He's saying to Kyle Shanahan said to the boys, whoever gets under uh, DK Metcalf's skin gets a Christmas gift from me. And Fred. Fred definitely did that. Yep. Yeah, winner. Uh, yeah, Fred. Fred wins a Christmas gift from Kyle Shanahan. But everything they're doing there in San Francisco is awesome. And as I was watching that game and they're pulling away, I'm like, we only have a couple months left. This. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like we, uh, mm -hmm. it's damn. Shame. And I'm not that type of guy. I'm a big like we got to enjoy this moment right now. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be looking for negatives because there's already enough negative in the world. Let's look for the opposite. Let's let's look for the positive. And then as the games unfold, I'm like, we all. 
We only get this for a few more. Yeah, we don't have much left. So let's enjoy mm -hmm. tonight. Amen. When Tommy DeVito is hosting oh, a Monday Night Football wait. game, yeah. let's enjoy the hell out of it. With Tyree Kill on Monday Night Football, yeah. let's enjoy the mm -hmm. hell out of it. We only have a few weeks left. One half of the hammer. Don. Don. Cowboys, Tone Diggs is your Tone. How'd the public do this past uh, Sunday? There was a few games where it absolutely crushed uh, people's like parlays and teasers, and that being the Jets, the Bears, and the Bengals over the Colts. So... I think it was a pretty good day for Vegas. Um, but then you have like teams like the Cowboys that cover. I know the Bills were getting more money than the Chiefs, which was weird. It was it was kind of a split, but when you have those parlay and t teaser, the money line parlay and teaser killers, it's always a good day for the Bulls. Yeah, the Colts broke a lot of hearts, including mine yesterday. They were tough to watch. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was tough to watch them yesterday, offensively, defensively, special teams, you name it. Mm -hmm. Matt Gay, who never misses, just yeah. misses now all of a sudden. We we still got a lot of time. We got the Steelers coming up on Saturday. The Steelers have win. Mitchell Trubisky starting yet again. Kenny Pickett will be out Ooh. in the Lot House, Lucas Oil yep. Stadium. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a tough barn. Uh, Colts can get right back into it. Gardner Minshew. I love him. Yeah, he's a, he's a dog. Jake Browning, though, this guy. This guy's unbelievable. <laughs> what Burrow. is this guy's problem? I don't know. What is Jake Browning's deal over there in Cincinnati? Joe Burrow, obviously incredible teammate, gave Jake Browning his suite so that his girlfriend, his family, his friends could hang out and watch Jake Browning do his thing. This is numerous weeks in a row now. Yeah. Now, we got killed by the screen in the first quarter. Two of them oh, led boy. to a 14 nothing deficit quickly. We would come back and tie that thing up, oh, yeah. and then we would just give it away again. Mm -hmm. But Jake Browning's a stud. If you have a good backup quarterback, quarterback now I don't think it means you're going to go win the Super Bowl but these late games you could really do some stuff oh yeah need them you can really gain some advantages like that's what I think I've learned from this particular season 12 backup quarterbacks right this past yes. weekend yes and now obviously there's going to be one more and 14 uh, coming up or two more I guess coming up you got to have a good backup oh, yeah. Jake Browning is certainly that mm -hmm. and they have AJ McCarron on that team too just comes yeah. off an XFL MVP and he's obviously been there been around the NFL a long time some people were saying let's put AJ McCarron in there Jake Browning just comes in and does his thing it was fun to watch him to be honest it was a good story yeah. Tough to watch the Colts, so I had to look for a little bit of silver lining. But Jake Browning spinning it. Zach Taylor saying, yeah, we got a guy. Him and T, obviously tight. Jamar Chase doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Congrats to the Bengals on having a great backup quarterback. Nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. Last hour left. Four <laughs> minutes before the hard out. Yeah, mm -hmm. Big dump. Long four minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Baller. Thank you so much. Like, we broke the news that you took a dump. Schefter actually broke mm -hmm. the news yeah. that you couldn't Fake news. Fake news. Fake. It was, it, it's embarrassing to say, but it was a, it was a tinkle. We had four minutes I left. Hey, when they, once I get, once you get to that point where you're counting seconds, and you're like, all right. What did you have a big gulp this morning? Yeah. What the hell? Well, actually, my traveling schedule was a little it different. Was. I had to come in, so when I fly, days I fly, definitely pound the water. Got to okay. hide. Got to hide. Yeah. So once you yeah. pop that yeah. seal. Yeah. yeah, but four minutes. Four me minutes. And, me and Are you an adult? How old? Me and Lee Corso probably got the same bladder right now. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, uh, he would have he, he, he probably you know. would have. Lee, Lee would have made it or just pissed his pants because yeah. for the good of entertainment. Exactly. Yeah. I'm appreciative <laughs> uh, that you didn't do that. But also, uh, that's tough look. Just yeah. like, Real tough. Sorry about it. If it's a dump, we understand yeah. because there's potential yeah. optics yeah. Yeah. Have that. this entire thing. Can't shark, can't do that. That's, that's well, you, another that's guy's gimmick. Thing. You can. That's my gimmick. That's my that's my corner. You yeah, stay off that I'll corner. I let you keep that. Light colored stuff. pants too. Whenever you, anytime you wear those, I always say, "Wow, <laughs> yeah, Ty yeah. really rolling the dice oh, yeah. today." I, I put those khakis on. Uh, <laughs> tuck those deep in the closet. It's gonna be a while before I put those back on. Joining us now is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, big one tonight. Oh, yeah. Huge. Ladies and gentlemen, president of Ohio, COVID survivor. AJ Hawk. AJ, AJ D but left had to pee. Four minutes. Pee. Four minutes before the break. AJ's I has gotta be disgusted. Well, no, I can. I am not disgusted. I am with Debut right there. He has a very efficient bladder. It sounds like, the and he's been line. hydrating. So yes, okay. I, I get it, man. That's since I was a young kid. That's always been a situation with me. Yeah, I'm a big time peer as well. I pee a lot. Yeah. I stay very hydrated. I drink a lot of things. You just pee underneath your desk there in Ohio. <laughs> right. Exactly. So like, you're not the right person. No. Yeah, do. Come yeah, on, dude. This guy's got a glory hole under his desk. And yeah, he has a pumped. filtration he system. <laughs> he does. Straight into his water bottle. Right at, yeah. yeah, his son has to And then he it drinks out. it. Yep. yep. And then it's just a full exactly. on mm -hmm. cycle. That's how, he, that's how he played 12, how many years? 12. 11. Yeah, no waste. No waste up here, I guess, huh? Yeah, well, that's why you yeah. are the way you are. And people saw you in that suit God. at Aaron's 40th Holy birthday. And they say, Look at that refrigerator. Yeah. What is he Did you see all the compliments yeah. there like was a, for you in the Instagram comments? Looks like a cartoon comments? character. No. 
I did not see that. No, I, I didn't know what to wear to that. That was actually my derby suit that I wore to the derby, so I'm not scared to recycle anything. Yeah, but it's not about the suit that no. you're wearing. People are saying it was the man in the suit. No, it's CJ Mosley looks matter. different did tonight. You see, did you see that photo <laughs> where you are literally taking up about three people's spots? Yeah. And there's ten people in the photo, and you are just full on... Yeah. I'm trying to poke my head around him. His, I whole, could. his whole right side. Am I flexing like that? <laughs> it looked, well, you're holding a drink. It looks, and I, you, look, I don't know if you're uncomfortable or if, like, <laughs> Les, are we taking a photo? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, is this But one? you were, bro, so Sweet. jacked. Yeah. I think we're pulling it up. I think Zito's yeah. trying to pull it up. People have to Sweet. see this. The comments, Instagram comments were like, man, that's dope. Appreciate you guys. Uh, you should kill yourself. There's always going to be a couple of those. Sure, of course. And then there was a bunch of, like, AJ properly jogged mm -hmm. out there. Like, a lot of love for the... Hey, you're doing it, AJ. Way to go, Parker. Look at this guy. Jesus. Jesus Hi, Christ. Geez. Jesus Christ. Look at, Shane. Shane. Look at Shane. Well, Shane, I mean, pretty perfect photo for him. You don't even know that's a T-shirt. Nope. That, that could be a long sleeve. Yeah, exactly. That could be a long sleeve dress shirt. Looks Shane, nice. good work in there. And then on the far right side next to Ty Schmidt there, uh, just one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Okay. No big deal. Miles Teller. Then one of the biggest comedians in the world mm -hmm. right there, Shane yeah. Gillis. And then an actual refrigerator yeah. of yeah. a man. Whoa. A.J. Hawk. And right behind him, hiding, is another professional athlete who can't be seen. Yeah. <laughs> that's Mason Crosby, who was not called to action no. for the Los Angeles Rams. And I think that's where we should start. Hey, can, these that was awesome. We should not have been there. No, no so no. awesome. We should not have been invited to that. Very thankful that we were there. Happy birthday and congrats to you for being, you know, an absolute yeah. stallion yeah. Jock, of a man. Dog. Mason Crosby wasn't called into service, but Lucas Havrick was. He had three field goals, including one that sent it to overtime mm -hmm. late there in windy, breezy Baltimore. And then Baltimore ends up getting the win after a punt goes right down the middle of the field. Now, Baltimore is not easy to punt in. I'm not saying anything. Ethan Evans, the punter, I am a massive fan of. He was squatting 600 pounds just a couple oh, weeks geez. ago on the internet. This dude is a stud. And Baltimore punted one earlier in the overtime right down the middle of the field as well. I think there were some terrible wins there, so I'm not judging anybody. But Ole Wallace had an opportunity to get a return, and he did as such. Now, Baltimore Ravens at the top of the AFC. They have been dominant this year. Offense, defense, special teams, although I have a lot of faith in that guy and the Los Angeles Rams down the stretch as well, especially with Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua being right. healthy. Ooh. That defense still having Aaron Donald, who has yet to get a tackle or a sack on Lamar Jackson. People are saying there's a block in the back. There was like one at the point there that they didn't call. No Normally, if they don't call the point one, then, the, then uh, it's just the like uh, the rest of them were good. You see the rest of them using their back and just setting screens. Save it, save it, save it, save it. That's yep. a save it block, it was, save ooh, it block. It the guy, one. Yeah. Yeah, white gloves, wide, 88 <laughs> yeah. there. Yep. Certainly uh, goes for a full on. Right there. Great Arms extended. Right there. Him balancing here. Tough. Great electrifying return. way to win. I couldn't even imagine what Baltimore was like yesterday. Oh. That had to be mm -hmm. awesome. Just absolutely awesome. Congrats to them. But we're, Baltimore, we're, we haven't talked about a lot. Nobody has. Why not? No. Why haven't we had, why, like, oh. for how good they're playing, how good Lamar is, why haven't we talked about him more? I mean, we certainly do, but I'm talking about the national uh, conversation. When we say we, we're just talking about, like, okay. sports gen, talk yeah. as a whole. It hasn't been super flashy. Like Even though they have Lamar. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they do Great everything. Defense. They do everything Good. I don't know if they've done anything anything like what super catch. great, but right, like they just, two of those yesterday. They just been the Ravens. They've just been incredibly solid, like they are all the time. And I think right now in the AFC, if you're just incredibly solid, you're gonna win football games because there's a lot of up and down going on. But yeah, I mean they just Oh, Dell had a sweet game yesterday. Yeah, that was. Oh, yeah. He, he can go. There's a couple catches where he's looking one way and turns the other way. Might have been wind, by the way. Yeah. I mean, it could have been any of that stuff. Not a bad little. Okay. All right. Uh, Odell doing his thing. Uh, that is a classic Odell Beckham Jr. He can go. He and he, he talked about before the game, I forget who he was getting interviewed by. He was talking about being the old guy in the room and feeling like there is a sense of responsibility for the younger guys like Zay and Bateman and them and everybody else that's in there. So I appreciate what this team is. But they're sitting at 10-3. and three. Mm -hmm. Hey, here we go. Yeah. They're at the top. And at the Dolphins, I mean, Dolphins got a big one tonight against the Titans. We all believe in the Dolphins. We yeah. all love mm -hmm. the Dolphins. I appreciate But if they lose Baltimore now, mm -hmm. then we're sitting in the driver's seat to go get home field advantage. Is this Baltimore team built to go on a, uh, like a real Lombardi run right now? Yeah. Uh, Lamar's doing the, the biggest question about Lamar for a lot of people uh, watching the game would be, 
can he throw the ball? Can he throw the ball from the pocket? If it's a situation where it's two minutes, one feet in the clock, do you have confidence in him to drive? Do he have, does he have the weapons to throw it to to drive it down the field? And I think he's answered that question this season. Zay Flowers just keeps getting better. Odell, I feel oh, yeah. like maybe he's getting healthier, maybe just getting more acclimated with the offense, but he's getting better every week. Mom, and Lamar, some of the yep. plays he makes – like, not even necessarily rushing the ball, but just extending plays and giving guys time to get open. This this huge play to tie it up, to almost, you know, get down there, take the lead, and then get the two-point conversion. Um, but this team is built. Then you look at their defense, top five across pretty much every uh, major category. Now, did lose Kyle Hammond to the MCL. He'll be out for a few weeks. He's sprain, been having, they like, said grade mm-hmm. one sprain, yep, MCL. Yeah, so that could be, who knows? Who knows what that'll be? But he's been a great player for them, you know, blitzing, dropping the coverage. He's kind of like a... You know, he just causes chaos in, in, in for for defense. I think he was an undercover uh, dog. Yeah, last, he was. last yep. week or two weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he won't be undercover for too much longer. Yeah, I, I think now he yeah. is out. Everybody knows, it, especially since he is out, it's <laughs> going to mm-hmm. be a conversation. So that's going to make him much more popular. I and if you look at like Baltimore, sure, that's a real home field advantage. Oh, yeah. Big time. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. like the weather. I, I watched uh, Stav, Stav, yeah, Stavros, Stavros. Stavros. I watched his Netflix special mm-hmm. yeah. the other night when I got home and I couldn't sleep. I love that he's 5'7". I didn't uh-huh. know that. He's a weapon. I learned that in that whole thing. But he does, obviously, his reaction videos afterwards. And uh, he was talking about, like, who he is in those videos. Mm-hmm. Like the Baltimore white trash. Mm-hmm. Much. Yeah, his family. And I think if you heard anybody talk, I guess me, about – that Baltimore stadium, and we were the Colts. And you got to remember the history of the Colts in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You know, Ursay's dad picked up the team, put them in a Mayflower truck, and shipped them out of town overnight, a day after saying, we're gay, we're stopping, mm-hmm. I got to go to dinner, guys. Yep. And then <laughs> we're getting out of here, and he leaves. So there's still generations of hate towards the Colts. But every time we played there, I had nothing but respect for the things that they were saying. Mm-hmm. Like, there's some fan bases – that are willing to say stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, like, we'll go a little bit. Yeah, we will. Sure. We'll touch the line. I paid $550 for this ticket. That's right. You're coming into my town. I am going to say whatever the hell I want. Now, if those people get their asses beat by the people that they're saying things to, they deserve it. That's on them. But there's some fan bases that understand they can be an advantage. There's some mm-hmm. stadiums that understand, like, we can do it. In m and they are a stadium that understands it. I loved playing there. I appreciated their fans. And with the way the weather was yesterday, it's not getting better. No, uh, the no. weather's not getting better. And with the way Munkin's running that mm-hmm. team – why not the Baltimore Ravens? We were actually in there, uh, Lux rookie year, first first playoff game. Uh, Ray Lewis's last home game. So he had the last, you know, squirrel entrance, his dance. Crazy environment. I so, saw yeah. you and Cassius Vaughn. Yeah, in the I video. completely forgot I had a game in, in seven minutes after that intro. You know, seeing, <laughs> seeing Ray Lewis do that, seeing the, the, the stadium, him, you know, freaking eat the grass. Like, it, was, it was a crazy kind of like one of those surreal moments, you know, as you go back to like a freaking 15-year-old. But, uh, yeah, that, that crowd can be crazy, especially this time of year. They NFL Films released a video, I believe, of Ray's last time coming out. And at the end, I think you quote tweeted, and yeah, that's yeah. how I saw it. At the very end, him and Cassius Vaughn, who – hilarious human being mm-hmm. who was a corner for us. Uh, they're talking, Cash just goes like, that's Ray Lewis. And, and yeah. Debo's like, yup. Yeah. And, and I was punting on the field, and I could feel the heat from the fireballs. Because they, I don't know if they gassed it up a little bit more. Sure. Oh, because yeah. it was his last, last night. One. But like, that stadium's awesome, AJ. That's home field advantage in some places is a real deal. Baltimore's one of them. I think it's gigantic in Baltimore. Not only for the, the elements. Look at the elements that Lamar played in yesterday. It looked like he it didn't even matter for him, like how effortless it looks at times for him. So I think anytime you got to go on the road to a cold weather, you never really know exactly what it's going to be. But then it's also, like you said, the atmosphere that Baltimore seems to have had for a long time now, since the back in the day with Ray and all of them, like they are, they are primed to make a run. Let's go to the NFC. There's three teams that we're talking about there, even though some people have just left the Eagles completely out. They yeah. can still find it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They can still find it. How about this Niners team, AJ? How about this Niners team? Now, obviously, I have loved this program. I like the way they operate. I like the way the defense not only does their job, but they talk shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I appreciate anybody that talks shit and is good. Okay? If you talk shit and you're bad, you are the most insufferable human of all time. That's a good heel move. You're not trying to be liked. But if you talk shit and you're good and you back it up, because anytime you promote something and then you do it, it's like, 
Mad respect. When I watched them play the Seahawks, what was that, last year or two years ago? Last year. Last year. Last year. Yeah. year. On Thursday Night Football in Seattle, I got a chance to experience Seattle. Fantastic. Very loud. It's cracked up to be everything that it is and more. But what I noticed from the Niners team is they fly, fly. On the defensive side, they fly all over the place. Normally, 10 guys in a shot. You'll normally see nine or 10 guys in every single tackle in the film. Mm -hmm. It's like they rally to the ball, but then they're also letting you, they're letting you know mm -hmm. that they are all day. Like, hey, Killing this is who you. we are. Like, I love that. And on the offensive side, I got a chance to see Brock Purdy. George Kittle, I think, had two touchdowns yep. in that game. He had been on a run. That was at the beginning of this Brock Purdy party mm -hmm. that has kind of taken over in San Francisco. You watch their offense, it's like they got the same mentality. Like, Trent Williams will fight you. Oh, yep. yeah. Like, Debo Sam will fight Not you. Not afraid. These people, George Kittle will fight you. Like, this, this is a team that's built in an old school fashion. They're all all in. They have their, and you see Ayuk was blocking down the field. Here's the first play of the game. Down the field. First play of the game. Ayuk is still yeah. trying to, he's trying to get a pancake. Yeah, that, that's, that dude. that's not everywhere. You know, they, no. they, they're built the right way. And I don't know if you heard Trent talking about Purdy, but if Purdy heard this, Purdy needs to know you done good. Mm -hmm. This is what, Maybe the biggest dog in the NFL. Yeah. Trent Williams left tackle for the Niners. Had to say about the critics to Brock Purdy after the game yesterday. I mean, that's you go back game at the game. That's what he's been doing. I mean, you know, last time when we were at home, he had a long throw against against Tampa with uh, with BA down the sideline. Um, obviously, he hit Kittle for a long play. I mean, I don't get the fact. I don't get why people say he's. A system quarterback have got to show you more because no system quarterback makes tight window throws before they're there, throwing people open, putting the ball into a window and trusting his receiver to get there, you know, layering balls over linebackers who are in good position and still getting the ball over their head, getting it to the playmaker. Just so accurate. You watch a lot of his throws, the accuracy gives them guys a, a chance to run after the catch. And uh, I don't think he gets enough credit for that. Yeah, so he was asked, I think, about the Debo touchdown that Brock Purdy threw where I, I think we have it right here, where he just drops this ball in a bucket Perfect. for like 50 yards. I mean, this is just a beautiful touchdown play. Do we have it? There we go. Like Brock, third and 11. Boom. Oh, yeah. That's a strike, dude. In that's strike. over Adam's shoulder. Mm -hmm. Jamal Adams, great player, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Over his shoulder, right in stride to Debo. And Trent Williams is like, yeah, this is what he, what are we even talking about here? When you hear those types of things from Trent, that tells you the locker room's tight. The locker room is rallying around Brock Purdy. I believe they're the team that nobody wants to play right now, just like I believe last year they were the team they that nobody are. wants to play. Is that how you feel on the NFC side, AJ? And what did those words from Trent Williams mean to you, you think? Well, the, the more we talked about him, the more you were showing the clips and we see Trent speaking, I, I was just thinking, like, their team has so much firepower, offense, defense, special teams, but so much, I guess, they're so physical, too. Is there any other team like that where their defense and their offense kind of mirror each other, how they, they kind of play off each other? It's crazy to think. That's why the, the very first play of the game when McCaffrey's going for, what, 70-something, like that yep. right there has to feel pretty good to set the tone. There we go, Ayuk again in the yep. shot, blocking downfield, yes. Kittles blocking downfield. Like, this is who they are, and I think they're, they're finally starting to turn on a little bit. But about P Purdy, too, like, that's awesome. Trent's giving, like, examples of why and how great he is, and he's doing it oh, consistently. Man. It's not like this is once every once in a while. He does this every single game. He makes throws like this, and, and also Trent said – He's throwing, like, his pinpoint accuracy is throwing so guys can have some yards after the catch because he puts it to where they can turn and get upfield. It's just, it's been fun to watch. It really is. Con, man, there was some Joe Montana stat about, oh, yeah. uh, about Brock Purdy. Do you remember what it was? I believe it was something along the lines of, like, he's the first quarterback with a certain percentage. Eight straight, 70% yeah. completions. Yes, bingo. Yeah, he, Brock Purdy now has seven straight games, completing 70% or more of his passes. Last pay, uh, player to do it in eight straight games, Joe Montana. Oh, that's not and that's bad. the conversation over there right now oh yeah he's unbelievable like we every single week i feel like we've come in here we're not saying he's joe no no, no not at all but well, they're no. saying we might got we might, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We <laughs> might got the next one yeah well and they really might like aj saying are there any other teams that are playing the way they are on both sides of the ball like you can talk about baltimore which we just brought up like they do everything well but the niners don't just do everything well like they do everything dominantly yes like they, there's no and granted the seahawks covered and it was a 14 and a half spread and you know hats off to drew lock for covering the spread but they dominate from start to finish yeah who run the game who, who dominated whoever, whoever yeah. knows how now, to they were do down 14 7 and then debo scores there we get it there mm -hmm. was a time yeah but as soon as the niners start 
the Niners. No, it's over. One, once they once they're going, it's over. It's almost like the Cowboys at home, except the Niners do it everywhere. And you can say, well, they're at home. They beat the shit <laughs> out of the Eagles last week in Philly, and we're talking about hostile environments at our huge advantage. Philly is one of those, maybe if not the best one. I mean, they're having Jordan Phillips, D lineman from the Bills, trying to fight their fans. Like that's how good their home field advantage is. But the Niners, by far, I don't think there's anybody, even even Baltimore, that would feel comfortable playing them. Well, and. You know, you got the defense, dogs. Yep. Mm -hmm. Offense, dogs. Dogs. Yep. Special teams, yeah. oh, man. dogs. Yeah. Mitch Wisnowski's calling his own number. Unreal. AJ, calling his own number. Ah, I think it's open. I'm out of here. I am out of here. Now, obviously, Kyle Shanahan said he had no Stride. idea this was coming. Kyle Shanahan has never called a fake punt, by the way. Mm -hmm. That is a head coach who's an offensive coordinator. It says, like, we... <laughs> Just give the ball to the other team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're going to run an offensive play, I'm going to design it, mm -hmm. and we're going to yep. have Christian McCaffrey on the field. Yep. We're going to have Debo on the field. Right. We're going to have Kittle on the field. Right. We're going to have Ayuk on the field. Right. We're going to have Trent Williams on the field. Right. There's head coaches and offense coordinators that feel that way. Okay, and mm -hmm. normally good teams aren't running a lot of fakes because you're not that desperate to steal a possession. Sure. So there's a lot of, like, fake things that kind of happen. So Kyle Shanahan said, hey, what are we? And George Kittle even talked about it. Trent Williams talked about it. And they all just called him the Australian. Mm -hmm. They said the Australian to see him striking down a the sideline there. <laughs> and George Kittle's like, he did run out of bounds. We need him to run somebody over. We'll mm -hmm. get the Australian with the tight ends. Now it got called back because Bell slipped and fell, ended up cut blocking a guy, mm. and, uh, which people are talking about Tony. You know, yeah. people talk about Tony Rune in a play. The real one. Mitch Wisnowski had that live action right. video in a frame in his house yeah. for the next 10 years probably. But they have it on all fronts. And obviously Mitch Wisnowski isn't just great at running with the football. Mm -hmm. Now Kyle Shanahan knows he has this on fourth downs. And this guy's hair, phenomenal. Oh, so great flow. Phenomenal hair on Mitch Wisnowski. He tackles, he kicks off, he does that. Obviously it didn't count. This team's a complete, I mean, this is a complete team. Yep. Oh, yeah. And it's like no weakness. We need to start talking about like what teams we think can go and can't. There's some backup quarterbacks playing for teams that were like they can make the playoffs. I think we all have realistic. Exactly. The Niners yet again. It's they either win a Super Bowl or it's a bust of a season. Yeah. Yes. And that's a crazy thing to have happen. It's been like that for like four years for them, Ty. Yeah, for sure. And I think it, it's crazy to think right now that like the closest team that is probably like okay with going in and playing the Niners is the Cowboys, and we saw what happened earlier in the season when those two teams played. And granted, they're different right now. But again, with like Purdy, you know, people talk about him being a game manager and whatever. And I think when you say something like that, like you're assuming like – that he has stats like you know, so like Kenny Pickett or something like that, where it's like you're throwing for like 160 yards, you maybe throw for a touchdown, but you're not turning the ball over. Like game managers don't throw for over 300 yards and multiple touchdowns in every single. He game. He had a pick. He did have a pick. He had a pick. He did and have and a that pick. was uh -oh. and that was like a whoa because you could tell they were kind of on the, the different pages with him and Ayuk, so it was a little ahead of him, and he came off his fingertips, but. To your point, first in like every major uh, pass. Him and Dak. Yeah. It, it's just the, the margin of error when you're playing them on Strike! defense is just so small. Like we usually go into a week on Wednesdays, you know, head coach will put up the game breakers on offense. You know, like how, you had to, you got to put five guys up. You got to put Purdy, C-Mac, Kittle, what? Ayuk, what? Debo. Like all these guys have Just to be on there. Like, this, and they have like certain designs for certain players to get them open. But even when you're running your, okay, I'm in the curl flat, but I got Christian McCaffrey in front of me. I got Debo Samuel right here to the left. And it's like, I don't want any one of those guys to have space when they catch the ball to go and tackle. So it's just so tough to play these guys. The defensively, they got some injuries. Ward went out with an injury and obviously lost Hufanga for the season. So maybe that can show something down. Um, maybe that career is headed some point down the line. But they are just stacked. Um, you know, John Lynch did an amazing job putting this roster together. Amazing job. And Shanahan seems like the perfect coach for them. And if the report about him offering a Christmas gift that anybody can get under DK Metcalf's mm -hmm. skin, hilarious. Mm -hmm. Absolutely okay. hilarious. We did think, you know, like I'm not out on the Eagles yet. They got too much nope. time. Not at all. Neither. They've done too much. I'm not out on them. I still believe, obviously, that they could get in there for home field advantage, and they have a lot of mm -hmm. things that could potentially go their way. Dallas Cowboys for sure. Niners for sure. The other NFC team we were talking about just like three, four weeks ago. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, no Who's longer. That? They uh -oh. just lost to the Bears. Uh -oh. Yikes. What is happening? Jack Harleasy. Oh, yeah. The curse. Jack Harleasy. Yeah. Got no. got I like curse. where that's going, yo. <laughs> the curse of I don't know what he did. I don't know if MCDC and the boys saw that set design, which was not Jack Harlow's fault. Jack Harlow got screwed.
Okay. Do we, yeah, do we know that? Did he? No, no, no. Now that we're here, the curse, I don't know if anyone got screwed except for Lions fans. Well, and Calvin Johnson, certainly. And I don't want to, yeah. we don't need to dive into right. all Barry, that. Barry Sanders. Stuff. But depending upon who is in charge of the budget for that Thanksgiving halftime show uh -huh. will tell us a lot. I think Jack got screwed. Hmm. If he was able to have the Dolly Parton set up, yeah. who hmm. knows what he does out there with that guy with the blue thing? Yeah, his brother. No. The, I mean, there's a chance. But Jack since that day, <laughs> right. we're watching a completely different team. And we got to remember just a few days before Thanksgiving, the internet sleuths on Reddit started quite a conversation pretty loud. They're like, we're crying in this Lions team. Let's get a look at who they have beat. Ooh. And you go through it, it's like, really? Nobody, I guess. I didn't like seeing that. I hated seeing that. Because mm -hmm. I was a believer in the brand, brand new lions. lions. I was a believer in MCDC. I was a believer in Jared yeah. Goff no longer being Jared Goof. Nope. Yeah. There's a whole new nickname happening for this entire thing. In the defensive side, remember Aaron Glenn, defense coordinator, he might get a head coaching offer. Oh, yeah. All they had to do last year was fire the cornerback coach. Mm -hmm. They get rid of the secondary coach, and all of a sudden this defense goes and does it. They seemingly can't stop anybody. No. And they can't score. But. No. And they're a shell of the team that we literally saw just a month ago. Yeah. Is this the same old Lions fans? No, 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 no. I don't like that <laughs> oh, at all. I'll tell you no. what. Lions fans have forgotten that we are Lions fans. Lions fans have forgotten how bad we have been for our entire lives. We are still 9-4. and four. We are still top of the NFC North. We are still going to make the playoffs. Now, our defense stinks. Definitely stinks. That's not going to change. They're going to stink forever. Offense Jeez. is going to have oh, to score forever. 30 plus for the season. For the season. Excuse Campbell. me. Okay, Jack, for the rest Jack of this year. Yes, for this year. Can't Nothing's going to change there. But offense is going to have to score 30 plus points. And when the offense can't score against the, the Bears, now I'm a little bit worried. Well, here. that's Eberflu's defense. They're flying around. Yeah. And uh, that, out. that Bears team, another stat about them since like week four or something like that, Justin Fields has like the third highest QBR. Oh, mm -hmm. So don't balling. look now. The Chicago Bears are very different than what their record states and what they could have been at the beginning of the season. But nevertheless, that's a game the Lions, the brand new Lions, oh, yeah. would have won. Oh, yeah. Definitely a game the same old Lions would have lost. Yeah. For sure. I'm worried. I don't like it. AJ, are we uh, – Are the, is this the – Say oh. – Don't say it. Oh. Don't say it. Lies. No. Is that what we got right here, AJ? Well, I'm not oh. saying it, but it, you brought up that stat of people thinking that they have not beat, like, some great teams out there. So you think, okay, go out there, take care of business against Chicago, and team, people may still question them a little bit and think, hey, they haven't beat stud teams out there. But then you go out there and you lay an egg and you get beat. By this Chicago team, I don't know. Yeah. Like, where where are they headed? Where, where is the arrow pointing? So, hey, we don't like it. Hate well, it. I hate it. Hate but it. I'm excited. You know what I'm excited for? I'm excited to see MCDC coach these boys up. We got four games. We got to make the playoffs, and I'm excited to see what he does with these guys. Do you have the clip of him saying what he's going to do afterwards in the press conference? No, I, I, he he sound be mean or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm going to be mean. Yeah. All right, we hope so. Joining us now. <laughs> is a man who went undrafted out of LSU, would go on to play for 13 years, become a Super Bowl champion and a pro bowler. Now he's on your televisions all the time, talking ball on ESPN, the current studio personality champion, Emmy winner. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Clark. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, you're traveling from New York to Bristol so you can go on your fourth show of the day during a football season. The life chose you. Obviously, we appreciate you taking some time here to join us. We were just talking there about the same old Lions potentially rearing their big old, what are these things called on a lion? Mains. Mains back into this NFL world when they were the brand new Lions for a long time. Ryan, is our worry about the Lions you know, misguided? Do I, do we think they're going to fall no. apart, crash? Or do we think they're not even going to maybe, maybe not, make the maybe not even make the playoff? <laughs> easy! So they yeah. started Ryan. Yeah. What are you thinking, Ryan? Easy, easy, uh -oh. easy, easy. Listen, uh, I heard your, your man in there who's an actual Lions fan. He gets it. He remembers how bad it could be. There were once Olafsky's Lions, all right? So never forget that. <laughs> right? Well we, said. We, we, are, we are not going back to that. But you right. guys had it picked. You guys had it exactly right, though. What's up with this defense? No, we have to remember, this is a defense that wasn't good last year as well. And that's when Aaron Glenn started to take over the secondary. You go back to early on this year, you're expecting to have C.J. Gardner-Johnson. You lose him, but you do have Tracy Walker. You have Kirby Joseph. What happened to this pass rush? 
They started the season slow. They hit a stride kind of around after the third game. But now if Aiden Hutchinson doesn't put pressure on the quarterback, they have no pressure at all. Two times versus the Chicago Bears, you're killed with the quarterback run. And if we don't get turnovers late in that game, if they don't have a surge with 4 or 15 left, that's another loss. And so now when we were talking about the Lions, at least when I was talking about the Lions before the Dallas Cowboys made their run, the Lions had a chance to be the third best team in the NFC. Oh, no. And now, and now as their play starts to drop, you got to start saying to yourself, is this team even playing better football than their NFC North opponent or a contender, the Green Bay Packers? And right Good now, question. I don't think they are. Hey, Ryan, you really uh, scratched Ty right where he itches yeah. because we're about to see tonight, I think, the continued growth of this mm-hmm. Jordan Love brand yep. new Packers era. Can't wait to tune in. Obviously, you're on the kickoff show for that. You're <laughs> also at halftime, and you're with Scott Van Pelt afterwards. <laughs> you also host The Pivot and Inside yeah. the NFL on the CW. Jeez. Was on Get Up this morning, first take, and now our show. Okay. Ryan, I think you're covering ball <clears throat> from all angles. Yep. Okay? I think, you, <laughs> I, right. think, I think you really are. And we appreciate everything you're doing for the sport yeah. and for ESPN and the it's company. Y'all funny as hell, man. Okay, but let's talk. <laughs> let's talk, though. So, like, the Dallas Cowboys – Right? And obviously in TV world, hey, talk Dallas Cowboys, talk Dallas Cowboys. But the talk for the last 10, 15 years has been about the Dallas Cowboys just kind of shit in the bed whenever it really yeah. came down to be the time for them to win. Stephen A. Smith is still, his take this morning was, just wait, pretty much. Yeah. You know, that's his thing. This, yeah. this feels different, doesn't it? This Cowboys team feels completely different right now, especially for playoff and maybe even Super yeah. Bowl run. This is different, right? Like right now, if you look at the entire NFL, you say the San Francisco 49ers and that's it. That is where the conversation begins and ends with me with teams that I believe are better than the Dallas Cowboys right now, that are playing better than the Dallas Cowboys. I think maybe if you hop into the AFC, you can start speaking about the Baltimore Ravens. We'll see them against the Buffalo Bills. We'll see them against the Miami Dolphins in the next two weeks on the road. So that'll truly let us know where this team is. Dak Prescott, to me right now, is the leading MVP candidate. The level of confidence he's playing in, I know you guys have Aaron on the show on Tuesdays. He, he talked about the way he's enjoying watching Dak Prescott play. I'll go as far as this. The confidence in which Dak Prescott speaks about his game now is Aaron Rodgers-esque, right? When, when asked about his performances after the games, he talks about, what's going happen, going to happen or need to happen in the future because his film is so hot, it's speaking for itself. And I think Dak Prescott right now has the confidence that's permeating throughout this entire locker room. And when they turn the ball over defensively, they're almost unbeatable. The problem is the team you're going to have to beat yeah. in the San Francisco 49ers has a quarterback that protects it and a head coach and a play caller that make sure the football is in the hands of the people that protect it as well when you're looking at guys like CMC and Debo Samuel. But what the Dallas Cowboys are doing now is different from anything we've ever seen, but I think it starts with four. Yeah, and Mike McCarthy's also made them tougher, I think, mm-hmm. you know, which helps for the Niners, yeah. and, and McCarthy's in his bag. As soon as the play's over, he, he really is. he's calling the next play. As soon as, I mean, the play tackle is happening right now, all right, it's what we're going with. He is immediately... He's confident. He's not second-guessing, and it's working. So congrats to Big Mike being all the way back. AJ played for him, obviously won a Super Bowl. Go ahead, AJ. I did. RC. I want to jump to AFC quick. What's going on with the Buffalo Bills? There's all this stuff going on. They come out, they get a a huge win for their head coach. And on the flip side, with the Chiefs, are you a bit worried about them at all? Mm. Hell yeah, AJ. Let me start with the Chiefs. I know I'm answering your questions backwards. Like, this 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 wide receiver core continues to find new and innovative ways to ruin greatness. Um, at first, it was dropping the football from Patrick Mahomes. When you look at what MVS did against the Philadelphia Eagles, man, that's what you're paid to do. You're paid to catch the ball. Pat knows this. AJ knows this. Uh, D. Butt knows this. The first thing we learn is a, alignment and assignment. Technique. Like that's it. Alignment, you know what I'm saying? Like technique. Yeah. Like AJ, when you when you go out there, you know where you're going to line up. And for a wide receiver, aligning on your side of the football is kind of imperative. 
<laughs> right? And so when Kadarius Tony not only takes a win away from the Kansas City Chiefs, but one of the greatest plays of improv improvisation we've ever seen from Travis Kelsey, like that's an issue. Uh. And I felt like Patrick Mahomes wasn't lashing out at the officials because they were wrong. He was lashing out because he's been such a good teammate the entire season of not throwing these dudes over the bus. He just freaking lost it. And he was like, I finally got somebody I could cuss the hell out, so I'm going to give it to them. And the Buffalo Bills, man. Hold on. Before you get know, to the Bills, that's a funny okay. take that yeah. Patrick Mahomes all year was like, there's no way this guy lined up offside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, with everything that has happened, there's no way. This has to be the rest. There is – no way I'm going to watch this film back and he's going to be <laughs> offsides. I wonder whenever Patrick watch. got out of there, mm -hmm. watched it late He last saw it. At no, Pat. He still, yeah. Pat, oh, he saw it. Yeah, he said we he, said he saw the picture and he said, yes, Kadarius was offsides, okay. but you can't call it. His take was oh. it didn't have anything to do with the game. Huh. He knew he was off. Bro, Patrick has just finally lost it. Like, my man is like, the hell with you. Yeah, I'm he's tired offsides. Of I'm tired of this. Who cares? It's <laughs> Kadarius Tony. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. I think he was right. Hey, he was you don't think he should have called it? No, you don't throw it. I mean, how many? I know, I agree. Eight, nine years, nine years, 12, 13 years. How many times have we seen that? If he doesn't right? throw it, nobody's bitching. Nobody. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Exactly, maybe, exactly. Nobody. Maybe Bill's nobody. fans are like, well, he's offsides. And then everybody would have been like, everybody. Yeah, shut up. This happens all the time. But since mm. he called it, it's hard to be like, well, yeah. bad call either. Because, and it's the Chiefs, so. Yeah, you know. and the Chiefs, they get a lot Super Bowl. Of yeah, yeah, it yeah exactly. exactly. But, I, but, but I will say this, though. Pat, AJ, d -Butt, think about this, though. If you're Patrick Mahomes, you watch somebody swallow their whistle on a pass interference the week before in Green Bay, though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. What you right. So, yeah. so yeah. So you got to imagine the feeling of, imagine the feeling of Wait. you let us play last week, but now we can't play because of Kadarius Tony's toes. And Rex Ryan even said, <laughs> those are toes even he can't like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we saw. We watched that. Uh, mm -hmm. We watched that all unfold. That was good. I good love time. Rex Ryan. Yeah, yeah, good swing. Thank you, Rex. <laughs> Thank you, Rex. Thank you, Rex. He is a he's a foot enthusiast. Oh, right? yeah. And for him to even say, <laughs> don't like it. Yeah. That's a big deal. Now with the Bills, Ryan, obviously a lot of drama to AJ's point yeah. last week about a story from yeah. Tyler Dunn that came out. And obviously what I think even Coach McDermott, I think a week afterwards, went and told the team, or even the day of went and told the team, Miss Marker. Okay, what I was trying to say, but it's still, I missed it. yeah, yeah, I missed still it. something he did. But then in the locker room afterwards, you hear him say, like, we got your back. And then Brandon Bean gives him a ball. He's like, this is our coach, and the place goes crazy. Do you think this is something that has galvanized him? Now, once again, if Kadarius Tony is a half a foot back, yeah. Chiefs win, Bills lose after the story comes out. Much different conversation. But it does feel like that story yeah. might have rallied the boys. Is that how you see it? Well, I think one thing is, bro, like, we know who – the good people are, right? Like, like we know who the folks are that treat us well, that, that care about us. And I think they feel that from Sean McDermott. I know when you think of back to DeMar's situation or even Chadavious White, who's a good friend of mine, and his injury this year with his Achilles, his ACL, Sean McDermott has always been extremely supportive of him. And people, you have to allow people grace to make mistakes and also own up and take accountability for those things, which he did. Um, but I will say this. Who in the hell wants to play Josh Allen if he gets into the playoffs? Yeah. Like, that dude, man, like, that dude is so talented. The play he makes to Latavius Murray where he's going out of bounds, oh, contorts God. his body back oh, inside, floats it, puts it right on the money, and Latavius Murray does everything he possibly can to drop it. Right? When you make a play like that, it's on a different level. And since Joe Brady has taken over, the patience – he's shown, the way he's used his legs only when he needed to. I think that this team, if they could get into the playoffs, they're going to be one of those scary teams you don't want to play because they got a quarterback that could get Steph Curry and show you, right? Like, like Josh Allen can get hot and just be a damn problem the entire day. And so looking at this, they're one of those teams that's just fighting to get a chance to get into the tournament. And I think if they do, they could actually do damage, especially if Sean can continue to figure out some things defensively now that he's replaced some of those stars he's lost to injury. Yeah, a lot of injuries over there, and you talk about Trey White obviously being one of them, but like every play we're talking about here with Josh Allen, 
There's also the other side of those, yep. mm -hmm. you know, and, yep. and those have been well documented. Mm -hmm. And if those just kind of, you know, he doesn't seem to get the benefit of guys dropping picks either. Never. You know what I mean? It feels like, <laughs> no. it feels, you know, it feels like when it's in the area, guys are going to take it. Yeah. You know, there isn't like yeah. an accidental chest or anything, but his run for the light, run for his life. Yeah. Ex I mean, exactly. Mm -hmm. That is exactly in the same vein of the other two plays where he's sprinting sideways mm -hmm. and tries to throw the ball 22 yards down the field on a rope. Like, that's Josh Allen football, baby. Yep, we right. need that in the playoffs, and I'm happy they got the win. And hey, bro, yeah. my driver my driver just got out the car on the highway, fellas. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't right? even. You all right? Bro. Road rage? I think we good, dog. My dog just outside the <laughs> car walking for a ride. He's taking a piss. He's taking a piss. He's taking a piss. He's taking a piss. got to go. <laughs> Listen, my ex, uh, I think everybody's ex got real morbid there for a while. You should not be sitting in a car on the side of a highway. Oh, no. I've seen this video. I've seen this video like 30, 35 times. Terrifying. In my ex algorithm. You need to get out of that car right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with the weather with what it is. Careful. I, you I need stay to in, get. Stay in it. Stay in it. No. No, no, no. Safer no. in the car. He, he's a target. Safer in the car, D Butt. Uh, yeah, that's how hey. safer in it. Not if a truck hey. hits you. It's a hey, D Butt. Right. Yo, yep. Pingo. Hey, D Butt. Yeah. That's black logic and white logic. <laughs> all on one, all on one show. Stay my black ass right in the car. Listen. What's that, suburban? What state are you in? Is that Massachusetts? Yeah. I understand. Get okay, out. if that's what you guys are talking about. But that, I've seen too many videos. I've yeah. seen way too many videos mm -hmm. of people just sitting in cars on the side of the road. We're TikToking. Hey. Living. Hey, boom. It's over. Yep. Get that guy's ass back in the car. What is he doing, Ryan? We rolling now. We're okay. back right Hey, welcome okay. back. Ask, right. Did he piss? You got to ask him. I, 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 we should do some journalism here. Sir. My man, you good? We had we had a problem. We were straight. Everything's good? All right, my man. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> what did he say? Say we good. Everything's good. Okay. okay. Right. Don't ask anybody. Right. <laughs> Shout out. Happy what Earth. happened? D-Bot has a question for you, though, Ryan. Hey, RC, I got to <laughs> ask you about uh, Philly, man, the Eagles. Obviously, they lost both of their coordinators, and they are sitting at 10-3, and three, still control their own destiny. But you can see that they're kind of going the wrong direction. Obviously, you want to hit your stride and be playing your best football at this point. They are not doing that. What are the biggest issues, in your opinion, I guess really on both sides of the football when it comes to yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles? I think. What's that? We're not good. Tell that guy to get but, his ass like, think back about out how of the physical car. This team was. <laughs> think, I know we're freezing up. Yeah. Think about how physical this team was on both sides of the football, though. Uh, the way that they were able to run the football. Now, OC Brian Johnson, he's not necessarily tapping into that, or maybe they're not the same team in the run game, which doesn't lead to the RPOs, the play action pass. They're more a straight drop back team. I believe they've lost that sense of explosive explosiveness in the run game and the fear of that physicality. Defensively, the same thing. I think in the last two games, they have over 350 yards after contact mm. given up defensively. And so what that's telling me is teams don't even have to attempt to create explosive plays on you because what they're doing is getting the football in the hands of their playmakers and you can't get them on the ground, yep. whether that be your linebackers, your, your safeties, your nickels, also at the cornerback position. And so I think that this team has lost a sense of identity. And also, you had a quarterback last year that protected the football at all costs, right? And I love Jalen Hurts. But but this year, 11? he's turning the ball over. Yeah, 11? he has 11, but he's also fumbling the ball. Five, I think, right? 11, yeah, five? last year, like last night, he starts the game off with the fumble. Now, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Mm -hmm. Those are three strip fumble recoveries for the Dallas Cowboys. And we all know when they're turning the ball over defensively, they're difficult to stop. I think right now, if you're Philly, two weeks ago, we were looking at a three-horse race that's now just a two-horse race oh, that they've fallen out so of. So you've given up on you, you are You have given up on him. Listen, is that wow. what you heard? Oh, Holy so hell. Done. they got a good schedule. Wait, you? Hey, no, I haven't given up on them because I, I think the Philadelphia Eagles should win the next four games. When you go – you go Arizona, Giants, Giants, I think, it, what is it, Seattle? Right, so Seattle yeah, is probably <laughs> the, the toughest game they have left on the schedule. Like, they should win those four games, which they control their own destiny. They'll be the division winner. But when you play against the two peers, the two contemporaries, and you get your doors blown off twice, yeah. you got to check yourself. 
they are getting their backs blown out, aren't they? A little yeah. bit, yeah. yeah they, their backs uh, blown out. <laughs> <laughs> What's are. that? I guess you, oh, you said doors blown off. That's what I mean. I think there's a little, <laughs> there a little bit of yeah. a, a yeah. glitch there. Uh, Tone has a question for you, Ryan. Obviously a huge Steelers fan. Yeah, RC, first and foremost, thank you for putting your body on the line. That baby RC. RC. RC used RC. to try to knock yeah. his ass himself out. Yeah, we appreciate it. And speaking of, like, I grew up where my prime, like, viewership Steelers fan was like 2000 until now. And that was like a bunch of like grown dudes who would just come to work with like bad intentions. Just do your job. It doesn't feel like there's any of those dudes really left. Maybe, no. maybe a few. And is that like, you were obviously with coach T like, is that like the yeah. standard is it's a bad standard now is like, is his voice is not being heard anymore. Do those guys just not care what the Steeler way is anymore? Oh, What's tall. your take? Jeez. What's your, I mean, it's, it's sad. It's Come a sad on. state of affairs now. Well, <laughs> yeah. Nobody, zero people care about the Steeler way. Zero people. And you know, what was the cool thing about our building Holy was shit. Whoa. zero. Was, you just said there's 53 on a roster, right? TJ mm -hmm. and Minka and Cam. Hey, we'll give them three. We'll just give yeah, them three. Yeah. So, so when I, when I say zero, I, I don't necessarily mean it literally. So let me, but you heard Minka Fitzpatrick okay. say that there are people in that locker room that think just wearing those colors entitles you to wins and it doesn't you can't will wins in the league and when a guy comes out after only two losses and says like people need to approach it different they need to work different that's because he's seen things around that locker room around that practice field in those meeting rooms that doesn't lead him to believe everybody's putting their hand in the pile the same way and we got to see it right on film right in front of us with Deontay Johnson with not blocking after him losing a football in the end zone and then not even chasing down uh, DJ Turner after the, the fumble recovery. And so when you look at messaging, Coach T doesn't need to change who he is, but the messaging has to change. And I said this last week, and I meant it wholeheartedly. If Deontay Johnson does what he's – been doing because this isn't the first time he's had these issues i'm not throwing the football to him on fourth and two you aren't getting the opportunity to save my team you aren't getting the opportunity to be the hero because you haven't earned it and when you have the tj watts who show up every day the cam haywards that show up okay. every day the mika fitzpatrick's that show up every day like they are the tone setters and in setting the tone those are the people that should be put front and center those are the guys that should be rewarded. And I'll be honest, I would have liked to see Deontay Johnson match the week after the Cincinnati game. I think that would have been something to show this team that they will not tolerate people car. playing and working below the standard. Well, I'm not out of the car. I'm just had to switch me because I keep freezing. Yeah, because I'm was, somewhere oh. it was good in the middle of New York and Connecticut. Hey, did you see how cool you looked? Did you see how cool you looked in that suit right there? Oh, boom! Ooh. <laughs> a little bit fresher cut today. A little fresher cut today. Maybe a little thinner today yeah. too. A little bit better, more job. That was that was the that was the all even RC. That's when I was in my Jay Z Caesar phase. Okay, of course. <laughs> you know what I mean. Of course. And yeah. who, who make those suits, man? <laughs> Oh, a guy named um, Andre Julius makes my suits now, man. A young, a young dude out of Virginia. How many? Please. You have to have a thousand of them. You're super suited up all the time. Mm -hmm. Suited up, suited, suited. I would, suited. I would say, I would say, I've given away probably fifty or so. I'm probably sitting on like 150, 200 what? right now. Though. <laughs> Damn. Is, do you do you have one of those moving closets where it's yeah. just like they move? Like a dry cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what? I <laughs> I need a bigger closet for sure, uh, but I've we moved into like in the house now. Yeah, we didn't hear you. We didn't hear you. This guy needs to go back to taking a piss. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You know what I mean? If that guy goes and pees again, he would have perfect. <laughs> oh. All right, Ryan, it feels like you're hitting a spot where you have no service. Good luck tonight. We appreciate you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, RC. Thank you, RC. It's like perfect timing as yeah. we go here. We had a lot of questions, though. Jaden Daniels, obviously, yeah. just winning the Heisman mm -hmm. out of LSU. You also wanted to talk about yeah, the legend. Joseph Flacco. I mean, he played against him a bunch. Oh, you know, ooh. just pick his brain on him a little bit. AJ, what were you going to ask there next? What were you going to go with? I wouldn't ask something about Tom when getting the squad back all, all on one page. I, I, you know, the thing, he, I don't want to say epitomized the Steeler way, but, like, undrafted, mm -hmm. came in there, 
and just used to throw his head. Yeah, he dog. He like, hey, what, dog. what do you need me to do? All right, I'm going to throw my head at everybody. There's some of those shots oh that God. start making their rounds around the internet, and it's like people see him in suits and talking and probably uh, get very offended by some of his takes and uh -huh. think to themselves, like, can this guy relax a little bit? Uh, there's a reason. he. This is what he was willing to do to other humans. Yeah. He used to just sacrifice. The Wes girl. Welker hit. I mean, I'll never forget Wilson, that. Willis, it's right? a cross body. Yeah. It is <laughs> it's a absurd. Boom. Now he's on TV all the time. All the time. Today he's doing the full. He's doing, he did get up, Everything. first take, this show, do NFL Live, kickoff show, halftime, and Scott Van Pelt. Way to go, Ryan. Hey, baby, RC. RC. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, overreacting to tonight, and obviously chit chat with Aaron about that Zach Wilson performance. Oh, be your friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We'll see you tomorrow. Boys. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, right done. Done. well done. Well done. Got it. That one felt good. I think three and a half seconds. Yeah, that was the shot right there. Boom. Oh, my God. Ball, ball, go back, go back. This. I don't think it got on the... Yep. I remember this one. He had a good... Boom. Ball. That's cross body right there. But Wes was I mean, that's middle. that's clean, too, though. It's not head-to-head. -head. Well, the ball's right? about 10 yards past him, but yeah. <laughs> it was uh, the McGahee one for me. That, well, like, yeah, that this, was... is, this is kind of like DK Metcalf with Fred yesterday. I thought he had a ball. Yeah, <laughs> I had no idea. There's a chance he had a ball. I'd do a belly and back suplex, obviously. But yeah, he was willing to do that. Like, mm -hmm. you see the hit, and the hit's awesome. Now, like, not everybody is willing to make that decision to be that violent, you know, for themselves, mm -hmm. just for future lives. Yeah. Paycheck. Anything. Yeah. Ryan, like, yeah, fuck it. So that was the type of player he was. In hey. Pittsburgh, he was very well respected oh, yeah. around the Yinzers family. Him and Troy on the back end for a long, long time. Yeah, that, whole, that whole defense, that whole defense, whole defense had that mentality. Not Didn't one you think position. that, Pat? Yes. That was everybody. Yeah, everybody was for there, like a whole. Yeah. James Debo. Long, long time. Yep. Sorry, the Kiesel. Kiesel. Yeah. Even with his big ass they beard. Had, they had three defensive players of the years in Paul Amalo, Ferrier, and um, James Harrison James. at one point. Fun to watch. Ike Taylor flying around. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the full play, a little motion. I got you, Castle says, dead. Oh, oh Paul Amalu almost Ooh. made the play. That's why the ball was nowhere near it. Tony brought this up on Thursday, though. This is exactly why Thursday Ooh. was so tough, because, like, look at the guys on this field when the Steelers and Patriots. Well, Castle's spinning yeah, it. Yeah, Castle's slinging it. Oh, yeah. But 11-5 yeah. and five that year. Yeah. How about, so it's not act like. How about Paul Amalu right there immediately? Thank God. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> he sees a dead body on the field. Oh, yeah. got a oh, game. Oh, Another geez. one. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, we're happy you're okay. Yeah. Wes is an incredible coach right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah he is. Might be an OC. Coaching his ass. He looks cool, too. He does, yeah. Like on the sideline, he looks really cool. One of the best units. I mean, he, his name has been tossed around with the Patriots if they were to, you know, start again from scratch. And also uh, corner coach from Dallas. Al Harris. Al Harris. Yeah. Al Harris. Al Harris. 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 His name yes. starting to make his, uh, the rounds because we talked about this earlier because uh, – Coach of the West Virginia University of Mountaineers. That's right. Coach. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Blaine Stewart yep. stopped by. He's on a recruiting trail. He's mm -hmm. a star. So to all these dudes that potentially play tight end or I guess he's recruiting any position here in Indiana, let me tell you about a place in Morgantown. Hell yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell him. And the guy that's coming to your school right now, I've known him since he was literally this tall. Literally this tall. His dad was my coach at West Virginia, tight ends and special teams. Then he'd go on to be the head coach. He passed away uh, shortly after I left WVU. He was head coach, West Virginia lover, like lifer, mm -hmm. loved it. Blaine's back there coaching, has a real affinity, went to school there, high school there. He was coaching with the Steelers for a long time. Now he's out here. I mean, he is, he's a good dude, and I'm very proud of him. And if he shows up at your high school, you should feel honored mm -hmm. about that. That's right. He's not a dictator. No, 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 no. Guy's guy. He's a guy's yeah. guy. Yeah. He grew up as ball boy for yeah. us. Football you know what I mean? Team. Like he's uh, he, it's players league. That's how he feels. He's next Mike McDaniel. He's awesome. Blaine Blaine is awesome. But he was talking about Dan Quinn because yeah. uh, Blaine Stewart very tight with Tomlin because mm -hmm. Bill Stewart hired Tomlin to his first ever coaching job. So literally, Tomlin I think once Bill passed felt as if. Uh, I got to, you know what I mean? Because Blaine's loved by a lot of people. So he went and coached for the Steelers for a long time. Got a chance to get his own room at West Virginia. But when he was coaching with the Steelers, got to meet a lot of people. Obviously, Tomlin did him and his family very, very cool, which we will always be grateful for. He said he met Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn's awesome. And he started thinking about Dan Quinn's life. He's getting paid like $5 million a year right now mm -hmm. down there in Dallas. Like, I'm thinking. And it Having would, fun. Yeah. Loving life, backwards hat. Yeah, just coaching. Not having to deal 
right? Not uh-uh. having to deal with nope. all the shit that comes with being a head coach. Big Mike's got to deal with disciplining and schedule mm-hmm. and setup and travel and any other stuff that could potentially come across. Drama that Losses. comes through. Anything. The speak press, media, yeah. Jerry Jones's targets. Like, let Big Mike deal with that. Yeah. He had that in Atlanta at the end there, obviously. Oof. It's like, would he be a guy, and I think last offseason he chose this, just stick around. Why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially with Dak playing like how he's playing. Yeah, and mm-hmm. making five mil. That's good money. Yeah. Texas oh, yeah. with the taxes, good money. Deron Bland. He'll like get a raise. D- doing this good without Diggs. Parsons. Yeah. Jerry could up that thing a little bit. And yeah. I think he made him the highest paid DC in the NFL last year. And then mm-hmm. Fangio got it when he went to Miami. But same deal. I mean, because they're going to come calling for him. Why wouldn't you say, hey, Jerry, just throw me an extra $2 million. Right in line, or you give me seven hundred fifty thousand more bucks. Exactly, sure. we'll kind of move on. We'll do this thing. I did the whole song and dance. Obviously, he was with Seattle with the Legion of Boom, yep, which yep. is why he got the uh, uh, Atlanta job. Mm-hmm. Now he's doing it in Dallas, and I know it'd be crazy to turn down one of thirty-two. Right? There's only thirty-two head coach- coaching jobs, and the money would be better than five, seven, five, or six million if you're a head coach in the NFL right now. But your life and your happiness yeah. and legacy you've and what you can be it. a part of. Team. Like, he's part of Legion of Boom, and then also if this defense, yeah. you know. There's a there's a full conversation about you got it. Michael Parsons, who has Young. been assigned. You know Jerry's not letting Michael leave there. No. So yeah, I'm, if I'm him, I'm staying in Dallas until it's the job that I want and I'm ready for. Because it's not like every year is the way the league is going. It's like it's going to be at least four or five opportunities open. Seven, so, I think, is the seven. Yeah. Seven, yeah. seven to yeah. ten seven is to what Sheffield. Yeah, seven but I think year, seven but. was the average. Oh wow, that's, that's why. She, yeah, so Schefter thought it was going to be more wow. than the average this year because of it all, but. Al Harris is the name mm-hmm. out of the Dallas Cowboys defense that is potentially being talked. If Dan Quinn doesn't want to go yep. do that whole thing, Al Harris is potentially going to get an opportunity. That's awesome. I'm at more ex players player. getting opportunities yes. is they, a beautiful thing. And everybody that's played for Al Harris or with Al, Al Harris has said the same thing. Like ten out of ten teammate AJ AJ speaks very highly mm-hmm. of him. So I would love man. to see him get the opportunity. What do you what Al just the man, huh? Super. It seems like yeah, what he's he was, teaching makes a lot of sense. He Al was an established stud corner already. In the league when I got there and yeah I just remember how from day one being like the most open like want like fun work hard yeah just an unbelievable teammate honestly when then when he went on he was coaching with Andy Reid for a while he's been with Big Mike now yeah I hear great things about him as a coach which I'm not surprised hey okay hey let's go yeah. congrats Al go absolute ahead. monster too like D Bud said it before on here Al wants to lock one dude <laughs> he wants to say all right I'm taking you I will lock you up all day long Al doesn't really want to talk about Dropping a deep third, whatever he wants to, he wants to lock dudes down and be physical at the line of scrimmage. Hey, Gilly's been doing it, right? Yeah, that's oh, kind yeah. of what Gilly's been doing that's, here. Gilly's a technician; he's gonna get his hands on you. He's gonna be physical, and the, the biggest thing with Gilly, but you saw it last night. You can give up a catch. Obviously, as a corner, you're going to give up catches. But after that, staple them to the ground. You know, it's not 14, 17, 18 yards after you catch the ball. So you catch it. All right, you got me for eight. Okay, you got me for six. Now you throw it down the ball, bat it down, pick it off, strip. So, yeah, Gilly's playing some elite ball. And then, and then Deron Bland to get in there and, and basically for that defense and not miss a beat, missing a guy like Trevon Diggs, who's an all-pro. Uh, you know, hats off to Al Harris and obviously Dan Quinn, what they're doing over there. They were throwing a bland because Gilly was over there, right? And mm-hmm. then he gets six pick sixes, and they're like, all right, all right, all right. All right let's all go right, back. Right, let's go try this. Yeah. And then Gilly's had two big weeks yeah. back mm-hmm. to back. Nine solo tackles. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's linebacker number. Bingo. Yeah. 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 Even most of the time, they're not even getting, they're getting nine, ten total sometimes, not even solo. Yeah. Well, hey, those corners, you guys are out there. All yeah, the we, don't, we don't want too many nine tackle games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, Gilly traded from the Indianapolis Colts for a fifth rounder. Hell yeah. yeah. Woo. For a fifth rounder, I saw a noted Colts fan, Dan Dawkins, say, mm-hmm. <laughs> these motherfuckers better get Robert Mathis <laughs> with this fifth rounder giving up defensive player of the year, <laughs> Stephon Gilmore, mm-hmm. for uh, for a fifth rounder. He did not say motherfuckers, but sure. he the, meant it. The, it. the point sure. was very real. It's like, that's the that's what you risk, I guess. Especially like the way it went for us last year. And then the future of what the Colts look like. Yeah. Who knows? You know, new coach. Like, certainly made sense for Stephon Gilmore yeah. to go somewhere else. Get the hell out. But I wasn't necessarily thrilled. Like, okay, this is, this is, this is a defensive player. We're just. Yeah. Got a good year, too. Here. Yeah. One of the bright spots. Did you go to the Pro Bowl? Oh, I'm not sure. I may miss a little bit of time with injury, but he had a he had. A, I was surprised that they gave him off for just a fifth. Yeah. Houston, Houston also pissed that they gave Brandon Cooks up for about a fifth round mm-hmm. pick as well. Well, Houston also with D Hop and Yeah. I was at a bag of balls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. David, David Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. 
Yeah. David Johnson, though, had a hey, when he was running. He was a ball player. Yeah, that, that, ball ball that one year, two years. Yeah, yeah those 15 games. John, there's a couple little sound effects you've been making today. He seems c- pretty condescending. When? Yep. Yep. Somebody gave an answer, and he said, mm, or yep. mm, it was something oh, like yeah. that. that About good. Philly's top. That was the Eagles. There it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Physicality. Yeah. You've already made enemies with all of Ohio. You said, you know what? Philly, need to go over there as go well. PA. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I just I, that's just how I see. It's a two team race in the NFC. I mean, I think Damn. we can all we can all agree on that. No, it's, everybody's just ruling the Eagles is dead. It, I don't love that. Week. And also the Lions, they're saying they're dead. Well, yeah. I'm kind of not. Time. I'm kind of on this Browns I mean, and Joe Flacco team though. <laughs> well, they're gonna have to get a deal done. Listen, we all want to you know chastise the Lions defense, and I agree. Like they're not great. Jack Campbell can only and Aiden Hutchinson <laughs> can only do so much on their own. Well, but good. good point. I'll tell you what, when Jared Goff starts playing like Jared Goof. You got a tough. It was Easy. cold out. He doesn't like the cold. The guy's been well, exactly. I they will have, say. They have I no will more say. Games oh, outside. I, Gumpy might be able to find it because Gumpy is the greatest. Yep. Say it. Content splunker of all time. At the beginning of the game yesterday, mm-hmm. they showed Jared Goff on the sideline, and he had a turtleneck on. Yeah, it looked uh-huh. awfully cold. And he was yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> he did hey, look awfully cold. It forgetting. was almost like he was Table doing for the, two next yeah. to the heaters. You guys like, are forgetting. Hold on, hold on, Foxy. Hold on, Foxy. <laughs> Before Jared Goff got to the Lions, Mm -hmm. when he was with the Rams, Mm -hmm. towards the end of his tenure there, you used to be able to look at his face and you would know what type of game he was going to have. Had to live bet the Rams. When I saw him on the sideline before that Bears game, I thought to myself, wow, it looks really cold there. That shouldn't be your first thought No. Mm-hmm. whenever you're staring at the quarterback <laughs> of a team that's going to be playing against the team. That's what me and Gumpy were talking about. We are mere moments, if not like you know, a little bit away from Lombo bringing back the Jared Goff's got a table for two next to the heater. And that's when you know that he has officially turned back into Jared Goof. I saw uh, everything that you guys were talking about as far as Jared uh, looking super cold at the beginning of the game. So cold. But then the announcers did say that that's their last outdoor game. For yeah, the rest season. Of, yeah, mm-hmm. so. yeah, and also we went into Lambeau last year and beat the Packers in Lambeau when it was freezing cold in the biggest game of the year. I was watching a f- uh, four shot on my phone, so I don't remember exactly where it was, and I didn't have the sound. I, yeah, but I, my thought immediately was, wow, it looks it's cold. So cold. It looks cold there. And then I thought to myself, it shouldn't should that shouldn't be my first thought. <laughs> yeah. Whenever yeah. I see a quarterback shot promo in the game before Justin Fields did not look cold. How was it not though? I feel the same way. You can I feel like you can kind of get a little bit of a gauge on how the game <laughs> could go when you see somebody pregame, no question. I think so too, yeah. when you're looking at their eyes or what yeah, this might be I don't know. Let's see. Maybe it was it's only right, three was point right. line and you saw you're like, why is it only three points? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We all thought that. Yeah, they cooked in. But only two hundred and six, seven total yards, one for five. There it is. There it is. That was it. That was yeah, the exact so shot. That was the exact <laughs> shot. I saw it, and I was like, is this guy all right, dude? He, hands up. Oh, 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 it's, that, it's that cold wind. That cold wind in Chicago is not fun at all. Cali guy? No. Yeah, he has not played good. The Lions are. Hey, but I am not saying I'm out on the Lions right. or Jared Goff. Right. I'm no. just saying when I saw that <laughs> in my four shot, I thought that guy, yeah. this is reminiscent <laughs> of the Goff. Oh, yeah, yeah, we used to be able to, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and that has not been the norm with the brand, brand new Lions. Lions. No, I'd be with you guys if he didn't win at Lambeau in the last game of the year last year. Needed that one. Otherwise, I would say Goff does not like the cold. No, There's I'm not saying for you, he boxing. doesn't like the cold. No, I'm I saying know. I saw in his face optically that he was not going to have. This guy's too cold to win this Yeah, he yeah. just he had the look. <laughs> yeah, the I know, same I know. thing we used to do with the Rams yeah. with Goff is we'd look at him. And we'd say, is that guy? Jesus Christ, it's fucking cold. How's he feel today? <laughs> I don't know. It's I just, pretty windy, too. It was a weird we moment. He wear gloves. Maybe he, he, didn't didn't gloves. Right. he, he did wear gloves. He did wear gloves. It was a weird moment yeah, with was... me and Goff, honestly. And I, I it doesn't mean it. Goff's back. Goff's yeah, back. Sure. Well, yeah. NCDC's yeah. going to coach him up. We know uh, what we're doing. 94. I don't know if he's back. Per se, but the Detroit Lions are kind of like the Baghdad Bills. Like it's almost as if what? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Oh, it's almost Whoa. as if you have to wait for the game to start to really see what <laughs> see what team <laughs> what team you oh, get my. before you bet. How long? How long? I thought days. about that at like twelve oh three, and I was like, "Don't say Baghdad Bills on TV. <laughs> Don't fucking do that." Because we love the Bills, and we and we do. But it Tell is you one what, of those Bills. Things. Hate Bills, Bills, hate terrorists. Bills yep. Twitter, Bills Internet yesterday. Oh, man. Good stuff. There was. 
there's a lot of good like Sean McDermott showing this to the team before the game, and it's Kelsey and Mahomes' faces on the Twin Towers in oh New York City. Oh, oh yeah, there's a lot of that type that of was, yeah, internet. That was it. That was but actually, cool. the internet is not that is not funny. No, that no. is not good. No. Obviously, <laughs> that is why it is such a huge story. With that being said, whenever you hear that that is how somebody utilized motivation for a group of people. How yeah. do you get there? It was I, like, dude, like, nobody we, knows. We've Funk heard a lot mentality. of coaches come up with a lot of shit. Lot stupid of, shit. Like stupid, but how do you? They did get the win, though. Yeah, that, what's that? Bills. They they In 2019 the or yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. Maybe, um, they, yeah. maybe he brought it back. Yeah, the they, they definitely galvanized. The boys were rallying for him or whatever. Oh, but the, the thing I took away from that team meeting, and we talked about it immediately upon hearing about it, is that an offensive lineman, I think, with a big old dip in, mm -hmm. in the back of the room. Yes. Whenever Sean, the message was falling very flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I assume that's an, you know, because a stand up yeah. comedian, you go to one and their jokes aren't good and it's just completely. How long was the setup, though? How long was the setup before the TSA line? How, yeah. How terrible had the room gotten by that point? And how out was everybody? Was there how many? And then whoever said TSA, like, that told me that they had a good locker room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that told me that somebody was willing to be like, hey, Bob, <laughs> all right. They're saying enough. They say <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we have do we have video in the locker room after from yesterday when they have the toy AKs and they're just all shooting them up? That's the not the locker there? room. Nah. That was the internet, which is what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. We do have the locker room afterwards, though, and here it is after the Bills get a massive win over the Kansas City Chiefs due to Potentially now, Josh could have came back and won. Yep. Could have Absolutely. came back and won. He would have they had an opportunity. It. So we don't want to just hand the win to the Chiefs. But one of the greatest players I've ever seen in my entire life to win in a big, massive rivalry game by Travis Kelsey gets taken away from an offensive offside. The twelfth of the season called, I believe, across the entire NFL. Here's the Buffalo Bills locker room after the big win, after the Tyler Dunn story that told us and informed us that Sean McDermott utilized. 9-11 as a motivational tactic in 2019 at a team meeting. Listen up, listen up. Hey, that's a hell of a win, man. Resilient, resilient damn football team right here, man. I'm so proud of you guys, man. We got your back. And just all three phases, man. We knew it was going to be tough. You guys, resilient, man. Resilient. We're going to need that. We we'll need that back. going forward. About to cry. Mm -hmm. So yeah. proud of you guys, man. All the distractions Cut. this week, you guys did well. not flinch. Coaches, players, staff, so proud of you guys, man. Hey, we got this man's back. Tough Hell week. Yeah. 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 McDermott's swallowing crying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, great team win. At the end of the day, great team win. Hey, hey, let's man. pray. Advance. That's it. One, two, one, two, three. Pray. All right. So whenever you see that, I bet you McDermott got very emotional. You know, like I bet inside there was a lot when it, the we got your back thing, like what a moment. That's out of a movie right mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Now he knows that that was not the right, you know, motivational speech. Sure, sure, yeah. He knows. He, I guess, he even admitted that either the day of or a day after, right, whatever yeah. it was, back in 2019 or 18, whenever it happened. And then when the story gets revisited, he even said, like, yeah, it was not the right move. I made a mistake. And there was other stuff that has obviously happened in that building that has been not great. But that type of thing. When the whole world is dumping on a guy that you care about, that can be something that can really get you. Wagon, and man. winning like that. Now, if they lose, we're not saying any of this. So I, we understand that we are potentially hypocritical, but we're in daily sports talk. What are you do? So that's Overreaction Monday. That's literally our, our life. That's huge for the Buffalo Bills. That's a huge moment for that entire culture, I think, Debo. Definitely. And it's not like a team where it's like, oh, you got a bunch of, you know, try hard guys who, oh, maybe they didn't get a shot. This can give them, like, you got, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league. This team has won a bunch of games in the last few years. Obviously, you got talent on the defensive side of the ball as well. So this could be something that, you know, kind of circles the wagon, kind of us against them. Um, but, you know, we all know that doesn't last, you know, the entire, they're pr pretty much in playoff mode at this point. You know, it's, it's, it's a surviving event, just like Josh said at the end. So um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting brand of football to watch the Buffalo Bills the rest of the way. Joe Brady's sweet to watch his offense. And in that game, the Kansas City Chiefs lose, obviously, in heartbreaking fashion. Andy Reid, after the game, that called it a little bit of an embarrassment to the league. Now, he did not say, 
you know, why or how. Nope. Or mm-hmm. Is he embarrassed? Is the league embarrassed yeah, sure. that this guy, uh, team. you know, that this didn't happen? It was his wording. Patrick Mahomes, obviously, vastly different in his response to it all. Andy Reid talked about the Kadarius Tony offensive offsides today, and this is our first time listening to this. We've read a couple of the captions, but it sounds like he does address it head on. Well, yeah, so listen, normally, normally it looks over to the sideline and just gets an okay. Um, and on that one, he just happened not to. So that would be the coaching point. Just make sure you check, make sure you check with the guy on the, on the side, just to see if you're aligned. I mean, he's not lining up off sides on purpose. Um, and listen, he was two inches away from, from, or an inch from being legal. And, um, you know, so I I mean, you know, you you can always, like I said, you can argue both sides of it. It's, uh, um, for both teams, there there are things that happen where people, um, you know, just it happens like that. So Fun. I guess the league's trying to clean that up. I, from what I heard um, uh, by one of the broadcasters last night, so I didn't. I, I don't. You know, whatever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's address the first one where he said he didn't check over there. There was initially two CBS reporters, Tracy Wolfson, I believe, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I don't know. It could have been fake. could have been not. uh, But a lot of people were reporting that two CBS broadcasters, reporters, who obviously had the game, said that they saw Kadarius Toney check with the ref beforehand. They did not see if the ref responded. And now Andy Reid's coming out and saying that was wrong. Those two tweets have allegedly been deleted. Mm. Now, once again, we have, uh, with AI yeah, you, yeah. and the talents of everything, of course, we have no clue if those two CBS people actually put those tweets out and then deleted them. But that was a whole nother added conspiracy fodder yeah. this morning that Andy Reid just addressed. <clears throat> and then he said the coaching point would to do that. And we're talking about him being there. And he didn't mean to line up offsides. It's like he's talking to Kadarius Toney through that interview as well. And Patrick Mahomes, we assume he's going to hear from the NFL about everything he said afterwards. But damn. Tony would have this highlight reel on his life highlight reel forever as well, as he is the guy mm. who scores the touchdown from Travis Kelsey after a sweet high. He has no idea he lined up offside. No idea. He has no clue. We did it. We did it. Go. Travis Kelsey's sweet, obviously going bananas mm-hmm. up there with Taylor Swift and oh, yeah. Baron Corbin yeah. witnessing an incredible play that we very rarely will ever see or get a chance to see again, where Travis Kelsey utilizes his high football IQ and his status as a football player to be able to risk that mm-hmm. and does a quick release Dan Marino, flick of the wrist, tight spiral, high school quarterback, 20-yard throw right to the chest yeah. of a guy who was not expecting the ball, and he takes it to – see ya. Here you go. That's Bang. I'm out of here. Insane. Bucket. It is – the Bills defense swarmed. You're supposed to. Yeah. yeah. Swarm, swarm, swarm. Right. I mean, he was wide the fuck open, too. So, how did he get that up in the first place? But, yeah, it's, it's a game of inches. Andy Reid said an inch. <laughs> and, and typically, the receivers, they're going to try to get as far off the line as possible to get away from the jam, just like the offensive lineman. You see the right tackle who's been obviously making headlines since week one. So, you rarely see the um, you know receiver – been too much on the line. We saw Terry Terry McLaurin, I feel like, last year against the Giants. Um, oh, yeah. They went in and scored a late touchdown. And he actually he checked, checked with the yeah. ref. Yeah, like, checked. we all saw, like, hey, like three times. It messed and up. And he was too far off the ball, so the ref threw the flag. So we do see it, but it's something you rarely see. So I get it from both sides. Uh, but, no, Big Red is pretty pissed off. He's just mo- – they're moving on, but they won't forget this. Mm-hmm. No way. No. Tony won't. I wonder if the ref – was that ref on that side yelling? I'm sure it was loud, but he hey. yelled, back up, back, man. Tony, get back. Like, they'll use it. That's – well, they will try to help. Maybe there wasn't enough time. I don't know, but man. Yeah, usually they give you a warning, right? They'll say, hey, hey, you're, you're covered. I can't see the ball. You need to back up a little bit, something. So I think Terry, the, the ref said it was just too egregious yes. to even give him a warning. Which it was. Um, Gene Steratore you know, said the same like, thing in his tweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gene, Gene Steratore in his tweet basically said, don't want to call these. Normally there is a conversation, but when it is this egregious, flag has to be thrown. Like he's almost headbutting Von Miller. <laughs> yeah. I you mean, know? Yeah. What's the rule? I think was is the back of the ball or the front of the ball? I don't know. I know the furthest you can be Are back you is to be like, off the center's hip. Yeah, no, hip that's the like center. the furthest you can be back. Like you can't, you can't break his hip mm. line, so you can't be lined up. No, you have to break his hip line. 
the offensive lineman. Your head has to like, yeah, okay. head has to break the hip. Yeah, it, I mean, it was bad. But Von Miller was, you know, they were pretty much hit. Yeah, and the next ball. play, hey, Von Miller ball. potentially yeah. gets off a little yeah. early. Yeah. But it happens. That was the first time I'd ever seen Mahomes. Yeah. Yeah. The next play. Freak. It was like I had oh, to feel good. I had to feel good for Patrick though to get all that out. Get out whatever it whatever I R C had an interesting take saying, yeah, like this is the first time he's got a chance to kind of freak out and go crazy. He's been handling himself so well. And he did mention, one. I know, what happened last week. So that's been building for sure. So he just got somebody. I think he was protecting his teammate at the same time as well. Yeah, I think he this Kadarius Tony should watch this and say, like, okay, Patrick yeah. Mahomes has my back. And then Patrick Mahomes came out, I believe, and said, yeah, he was offsides, but you can't call that. Not in that Which moment. a lot of people feel, potentially, because it is game-winning drive. But the ref, whenever he called that, didn't know that it was going to become one of the greatest plays Right. Would they ever time. call it dead? Would they ever blow that dead? Because ne- I don't know. What's the rule? Uh, probably, no, because yeah. question you guys, though. It never happens. Does the opposing team's quarterback have the ability <laughs> to say, like, oh, you're right, Patrick, we won't take this win? Well, I think... I don't know if they have that power, but with the double, <clears throat> with the tap of the chest, mm-hmm. there was a news clip that basically came of Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen's interaction immediately afterwards. Here's what Patrick told Josh Allen, and then here's Josh Allen's response, obviously. Yeah, we yeah, lost because yeah, of the luck. fucking coin toss, pal. <laughs> All right. All right, dude. All right, dude. <laughs> There was a hit piece wrote on our coach this week. Yeah. All right, no, all right. We're going through a lot over all here. Right, That's one of the things you're so pissed, you're just going to tell it to every and anybody you see in the next 30 seconds. Like, yeah, you need to hear yeah. it. Mm-hmm. need to hear yeah. it. Josh is like, you should see what's going on with my fucking year. Yeah, yeah. I wish. I wish, Josh. Yeah, yeah I wish Buddy, you could have fired back. I don't know if we have enough time right yeah. now. I'm mm-hmm. having a hell of a time over here. <laughs> Gotta get in. <laughs> fucking prick. We're fighting for the playoffs, okay? I think it tells us that Josh and Pat very tight. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's what that tells us. Mm-hmm. Patrick felt a... He could potentially, you know. Confide. Like, oh, yeah, almost confide like <laughs> yeah. a therapist almost. You understand what yeah, I'm saying. Right. It's hard to win. It's, it's, it's hard to win. <laughs> you ever seen that? It's hard to you. Tough. That's awesome. I love it. And uh, I also thought we saw it in Patrick the next couple plays. Very abnormal. Like three more plays after. the Patrick Mahomes gets on the field. We need it. We know what's happening. Exactly what happened. Yeah. On that play. Yeah. To who? Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. And then obviously Travis Kelsey now also playing quarterback to Kadaris Tony. Yep. Mm-hmm. If two completions, what that's like oh. the Mahomes magic. Like that is what the Chiefs are. As soon as that didn't happen, it felt like Patrick even was like, that was that was our opportunity. The whole vibe on the Chiefs offense mm-hmm. was not what it normally is. I don't want to say it's like they mailed it in, but it did feel like they knew like that was our shot. That right was the there. one. And I think this is the, is this the one that gets batted by Oliver? No, it's one where his elbow gets hit and he misses. Yeah, it's like yeah. all three plays were just not good, mm-hmm. and the vibes on Patrick's face were not what we normally see. Chewing his tongue, yep. you know, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. give me the play, mm-hmm. give me the play, here we go. It was, he couldn't wait to go tell that ref. Yeah. Like, you know, that's, what, that's that. the first time yeah. that yeah. we have seen that. And he's a human. I think as we just, mm-hmm. it's like whenever we see Tom for the first time, Slam his helmet or motherfuck somebody on the mm-hmm. sideline or get into it. It's like you we see Patrick Mahomes and we watch quarterback. He was awesome in there. Yes. Super cool, super chill. Drinking Coors Light. Seems like a human, Love talking it. shit, doing his thing. We have to remember that these people that are at the top, okay, their competitive juices are higher than yours are. Mm-hmm. They're higher than, and I'm not talking about just professionals. I'm talking about the motherfuckers. We know who were the people at the top. It was well documented in The Last Dance yeah. with yes. Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. If Peyton Manning was to have a documentary, it'd be well documented in there. Tom Brady, it was documented yep. uh, documented in his entire thing in, in, in Song in and Dance. Yeah, the man in the arena. It's like these, Serena Williams, whenever they talk about Serena, it'll be the same fucking thing like Mm -hmm. i assume her practices workouts Mm -hmm. her trainers like Mm -hmm. if people aren't bringing i assume there's a there's an expectation of others being great as well and that sometimes Djokovic sometimes can be an asshole yeah oh yeah can come across as an asshole Mm -hmm. and jordan even say you call me an asshole okay you've never won anything is like basically what he said i can tear it up it's still six years old if you don't want to play like don't, Don't play. play. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I'm saying. So, These people, and Patrick Mahomes, we've deemed him oh yeah. to oh yeah. be one of those, 
elite Mount Rushmore type athletes, not just football player type athlete. It's like his mentality. We just saw a little bit, I think, of the rage that's with the competitive drive that's within. And uh, I think it's very normal. Is uh, th that's what I'm, I think this is a very normal thing, but we've never seen it from Patrick publicly. And I want to let him know, I appreciate the fact that that fucking dog is in there. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I appreciate it because we've seen him with Max Crosby talking his shit and everything like that. But, like, the pissed off accountability happens with all of them at the yeah. top. And it's like this is welcome to the club, I guess, Patrick, officially yeah. in this entire thing. Well, and don't you think it helps Patrick with his teammates as well, the fact that he's going crazy on the official? And, yeah, there may be some, like – towards Tony, like, all right, yeah, just come on, man. You, you know how to line up. But he's protecting his teammate a little bit. He's going crazy. He has, he's showing everybody he kind of has that crazy fire when there's probably some young guys on the team that don't know him that well, and they love seeing, like, okay, all right, man. Like, I can ride with this dude 100%. I know that much. And so I think it, it's only – his teammates will, will take all positivity from that. I'm sure on the outside people want to argue, oh, is this passion or are you gonna, did somebody else you'd say was a bad teammate or whatever. But he's not yelling, mm -hmm. he's not going crazy and embarrassing someone on his team. Yeah, he's, this is going a common enemy of everybody at that moment on the team, yes. which is the referee. And uh, some people are calling him a child. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people call him a child. Yeah. But again, those people, like you said, probably not as competitive as him, but you mentioned. Or accomplished. Yeah, or accomplished. In, or. You know, competition yeah. Yeah. Or, it, under it or understanding like how much pressure and shit is on him. Like I think it, for the first couple years, it was like he kind of just had this storybook, like, oh, happy to be here. I'm one of the best quarterbacks ever. And now it's like the expect, you know, like he can't lose. Yeah, it's exactly. like fucking Herbin Boone. Like I'm a winner. I'm going to win. I have to win. And yeah, every once in a while, some shit like that's going to be happening. It's kind of awesome seeing it, actually. It's like, <laughs> oh, this isn't just the cookie-cutter guy who's in commercials Healthy. who is just yeah, laughing is. and jovial. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, this guy this guy will motherfuck someone if he needs to. We normally will get a player's back, you know? I oh, think yeah. Our show is mm -hmm. yeah. showcase that. And people are probably saying that about this situation. But I'm just letting you know how, what I would do if I was on the team. Yeah. You know, if I was on the team, I'd be like, hey, you you fucking mm -hmm. hey, we did not like that call. Hey, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like that would be uh, you know what I mean? Like, no. hopefully they had the same crew for another a game later in the year, and where it's like a, a Patrick and the whole team revenge game against those mm -hmm. refs. It'll be awesome. Yeah, I, I think just in the locker room, this is no problem at all. Yeah, that's why it feels like this might be huge. Like we talked about the Eagles galvanizing around that Niners win. Like this the might Bills be the with, yeah Bills around yeah. this win. Like this might be the loss for the Chiefs. That's like, hey, now we actually have to fucking go. Like, and we're not the it? one seed. We're not locked in at any at lot. any point. What's that? Well, no, a lot of the like I feel like the Chiefs. You guys worried about you? No, I'm just saying yeah. I feel like the Chiefs are getting bailed out a lot because of this what happened at the very end of the game when they You're saying the conversation hasn't been about They haven't looked great. This is just Tony's offsides, not everything else that's potentially yeah. taking place. Yeah, like would you points. put them over the Ravens or Dolphins right now? No. So Dolphins tonight, I can't wait to watch. I think the Dolphins are really good. Yeah, very too. good. Me too. It's a huge. Now I looked at Darius because I thought he, you know, <laughs> he is a stink. Dolphin fan. Fin fan. He's running what out of team teams points. right now. I'm not running. Through. My my teams had a rough week, so <laughs> I'm not going to spoil my pick later. But a uh, rough <laughs> week playing the oh. Titans. The Dolphins. Whoa, taking the, the Titans. Dolphins, taking the Dolphins. Taking the Titans. The Dolphins have beat the shit out of bad teams all uh, season long. But um, you're talking about the Chiefs. Definitely concerned about the Chiefs. To your point, to the point RC made, like this has been brewing literally from week one when uh, Bob went off, I think, Tony's it hands Tony. pick. Like, so it's been plays. And then Patrick Mahomes, sure, he watched the tape, and he's not playing his best football. So it is bro two lo two back-to-back -back losses in the Chiefs in December. Have we ever seen that in the Mahomes uh, re-era? So, and drama. Yeah. yeah and drama. It's drama. So it's, it's different things that we're seeing from the Chiefs that we haven't, but he is a young career. And to Ty's point, it's been storybook at this point. Like, at this point, people are saying if he, he retires right now, he's a top two, three quarterback in history. So it is, um, you know, good to see it. But I am, you know, concerned with him. But this is the reality. We saw the Patriots do it for a decade, two decades. Yeah, thank you. That's not realistic. That's not That's not. What the Chiefs have been doing, what, five straight AFC championships? Well, that's not realistic either. So uh, maybe it's just them thank, having maybe a down little season. Thank you for bringing up the dynasty and obviously everything you say noted and real. Um, so many people attacking me mm -hmm. for saying that Bill Belichick, greatest coach of all time and greatest GM of all time. Knew that was going to happen. He's, he's not the greatest GM. He's not. <laughs> Do you, do you see the photo with all his fucking rings on? That, that, mm -hmm. Let's say he wasn't the coach. He was the GM yep. of those teams. So, yeah, any other GM in that spot, 
during that run would be considered greatest GM mm -hmm. of all time. So if it's the same motherfucker that's also coaching, both titles deserve to be, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now his draft, this one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if that was just a GM doing that picture right there, put another face on that fucking photo right mm -hmm. there. Put Brandon Bean's face on that photo <laughs> right there. Mm -hmm. He got Brandon Bean, greatest GM. Look at the fucking, there's the outcome. We're in a results-driven business. Yes. And that is the result of him being general manager over a 18, 20 year period. Like, yeah, that's the greatest GM of all time. His draft picks are terrible. His free agent. Okay, did you do you see what the fuck he has accomplished as the general manager of the New England Patriots? I almost responded, and now once again, as soon as I got service and got back to my phone, the narrative was already built that I ambushed Robert Kraft. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? Like, what are we, you are coming to your own conclusions. Yeah. Don't put that on me. I wasn't saying what you all are saying. And then it was greatest GM, question mark. And I played for the Colts. Colts and the Patriots, big rivalry. So I hate that I have to be the one that does this. But, like, y'all motherfuckers are wrong. Like, oh, yeah. I don't even know how, I don't even know how to, to tell you you're wrong. Like, what you're saying is wrong. And you can pinpoint, I guess, his drafts. Who gives a fuck? Who cares? <laughs> what do you mean? Look at the rings. That's all that matters, right? Like, if... Mm -hmm. Bill Belichick was the GM throughout the whole run, correct? There yes. was not another yeah. GM? No. Yes. None. Okay. Like if you show like you said, if you put that on Brandon Bean, anyone else, you'd be like, who was the GM during this unbelievable run that we will probably never see again in the NFL? Yeah, that guy, that's him. That's the there greatest that's yeah. the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think some people, casuals don't understand that Bill does it all. I don't think they really realize that. No. Because it's not he's the only one. Mm -hmm. He's the yeah. one. And that's I do think and Bill Belichick, obviously, um, 254-99 is a 72% win rate <laughs> as pretty, general manager. Pretty good. Mm. Which is the highest. <laughs> obviously, yeah, the guy's by the fucking lot. greatest, yeah, dude. You, can, you get caught up on the is draft. Is this Patriots? Get, yeah, hey, great so. find there, Zito. I was going to say, you, just... Just all, yeah, all Patriots mm -hmm. got it. Yeah, yeah greatest get, in Patriots. You get caught up on the picks, but... A part of that is knowing when to move on, too. You know, even with dra yep. I got drafted in the second round. Oh, not working out. Sorry. You're out of here. Like, you got to go sec after your second year, second round pick. And that happened with a lot of other people as well. Or trading a guy a year before they fall off. Oh, yeah. Or trading a guy they get paid and bringing them back. Like, all that has been mm -hmm. part of the GM, bringing the right guys in that are, are right for the culture Brandon and it's going to be pillars. Moss, was yeah. that one of them? Yeah, Moss. I mean, yeah, Moss. Even Brady. So you draft Brady. Obviously, you didn't draft him, you know, in first, second round, but you get him at 199. Found him. Uh, yeah. Ge general Don't manager is about getting the quarterback right and then building around him. So um, the deals he had with Brady, mm -hmm. you know, Brady taking pay cuts, that's general manager. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's not even a, a discussion. I was so flustered. I did not expect all the people that were saying that. I'm like, why is everybody? Did yeah. they give you any names though? Did they give you any other names to throw? Say, oh, what about this guy? Yeah, this guy? who's the who's the argument? Ozzie Newsom would be well, that, the argument. That's the thing. Like, I, I get the draft things, a conversation. How many coaches over a 20 year span only picked from? the 25th picking up like he's picking at the end of the first round his lowest pick he's ever had will be this year before this year's Mac Jones at 15. So like I get he stinks at the draft but how the hell are we going to you know compare him to everybody else like let's just look at the teams who have turned it around you know like the Bills they turned around well they had the seventh overall pick and they drafted Josh Allen now they drafted right they didn't pick the wrong guy mm -hmm. but still they had a top 10 pick Dolphins two top 10 picks Bengals two top 10 picks Go to the Lions. They've had two, three top ten picks over the last five years. So, like, I get that Bill isn't a good drafter. Colts got Luck at one and then Anthony Richardson at four. Yeah. Bingo. And when, when do they get Peyton? One. Okay. So, they. I mean, I, I, I do agree <laughs> that his draft resume isn't up to snuff, if you will. But if you were to look at the average draft position for Bill Belichick versus – a Veach versus a Bean. Bill Polian. Bill Polian. He built up the Panthers, right? Yeah. He yeah, built up the Colts. That's right. I think he would be in the conversation. Yeah. But again, he And once again, he's not coaching. No. Yeah. <laughs> he's just doing drafting. And what picks did he like? Did he have Cam with the number one pick? Was that Polian? Like, did he have Andrew with no, the number one? No, he was, no, he, was he was so he was after. He got Cam. Karen Collins, I think. Yeah. Nice. With uh I don't know which one, but he built up the Carolina Panthers whenever they He was a, he was a top five pick, I'm pretty sure, Kerry Collins. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But that, like when you talk about other GMs, it's like I have massive respect. Okay. I do. It's not an easy job. This motherfucker was doing your job and another incredibly mm -hmm. hard job, and he won the most amount of Super Bowls in a time like <laughs> what are we talking if about? Anyone's, what are you talking if about? anyone's saying it's purely recency bias, because even the yeah. drafting stuff, like you go back and dig a little further in his drafts, 
he was hitting home runs. He had like Vince Wilfork, and even if he had guys he got like Stephen Ridley more. or Shane Vereen or guys who weren't like big names but played important roles for the mm-hmm. Patriots for years, like those were home runs too in that sense. Which once again leads me to say to Robert Kraft, I do not envy your position at all. One year left on his deal. Bill. Yes, which he just got extended. One year left on his deal. That's greatest coach of all time and greatest general manager of all time on a deal coming up. Yeah. That's and right. a lot of the pressure from outside is saying a lot of different things. And it's like, that is not a fun place to be for Robert Kraft. No. Hey, own a team, they said. It'll be fun, they said. You'll build the greatest dynasty of all time, they said. <laughs> and at some point, though, you're going to have to look – in the mirror and make an incredibly fucking tough decision about the future. And it feels like we are on the precipice of that for Robert Kraft for the first time in a long time, which is why I said to him, I don't envy your position. Yeah, I don't think anybody envies the position. Anyone with a brain that watches football and is a fan of a team shouldn't envy the position that Robert Kraft is in. But that's exactly why you just said it one year left on his deal. We talk about this with the Lions. If you get rid of Bill Belichick with one year left on his deal, that is a guaranteed curse for the next 100 years with the New England Patriots. You just let him ride it out. You give him. You the- think Bill's going to let that happen? Bill's I- one of the greatest businessmen of all time. Yeah, he yeah. chooses you to think leave. He's going to go into a, a final year of his contract, I, no. which, once again, I do not envy yeah. Yeah. Robert Kraft's <laughs> which, which is, position. That's why know? it's tough, but also I hope that Bill would think, like, yeah, well, give me $130 million in cap space. Give me a top five pick, probably top three pick with a quarterback. Like, I'm probably going to go back to the playoffs may fuck around win the AFC East and then I'll get 30 million a year next I year. believe that Bill Belichick will win 100 percent that's what I I believe Bill Belichick will win yep. now does Robert Kraft have to make a tough decision on whether or not that continues with New England with the way the year has gone because mm-hmm. he said multiple times I've never been we've I've owned the team 30 years we've never been like this and there's a lot of pressure from the outside now you know just like it was Whenever Tom and everything, there's a lot mm-hmm. of chatter about what he's going to do, which leads me once again to say, mm-hmm. I do not envy that dude's position. Bank account. Envy that. Job title. Yep. Yeah. Job, job title. His Air Force I mean, his car owner. collection. Yep. Mm-hmm. Shoe collection. Yep. Mm-hmm. His boys. Sweet boys. Sweet boys, Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, his boys and his boys. Oh, Ruben. Yeah, oh, Meek Mill. Meek Ruben. Ruben. Oh, he's at that right white party, right? Yeah, him and Rick Ross. OBJ, Justin yeah. Bieber. The baby. Mm-hmm. People also just have no idea oh. the <laughs> like <laughs> being a uh, head coach at the top of your game and then being a uh, GM. Like, I think you look at his only other contemporary in like professional sports is Phil Jackson. And like, no one talks. Like, when he went to the Knicks after he was done with. Uh, the Bulls and the Lakers, like he got a bunch of say in like the GM, and he fucking sucked. He was they fired him like midway through the first year, and it's like he was pretty checked out though. Oh, well, yeah. for, for sure, but but in terms of like it, it, you know, if you look at all of sports and you say like who are the greatest coaches of all time, like Bill and Phil Jackson are right up there, and like he could he couldn't do it for half a season. Like maybe he could have done it in Chicago and stuff like that, but like Bill's been doing it for twenty fucking years, and just because he's been there for so long. And they've been spoiled by winning so many championships. It's like, oh, the, actually, you know, this guy was never any fucking good at this. He was a great coach, but he's never a fucking good GM. It's like, crazy. It's just, it is a crazy time right now. Yeah. Let's get to a break. We've gone for an hour and 34 minutes here. Look at you. Yeah. That first one. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Mm-hmm. You didn't even have to run out. Yeah, I'm thinking it was a dump. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping. That would be the quickest. No hitter. I, yeah, hey, hole in one. Yep. We only got three minutes there. Sometimes you got to really. Yeah. I don't have my squatty potty here. I'm a big squatty potty fan. Oh, as yeah, well. that helps. Get them at the knees the elevated. Up. Yeah, knees elevated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Prop the feet up. The um, the thought of good work back here, Frank. AJ was judging us. What's that? For, For the squatty, squatty potty. Talking about squatty potty. You ever tried? No, no. I was I was wondering if D but if they had like a travel one that you brought. No, but I've heard people talk. They talk very glowingly about. They have a collapsible one. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That'll make trip sometimes when old Pat's eating a lot. Sure. You know what I mean? Just yep. case. When I'm eating a lot and it's like, you know what, this week I've decided to say fuck it. Mm-hmm. But I know exactly what that means. I'm Tosh Mitten. You know what right. I mean? And I would like to not, you know, make the process excruciating. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and lift the feet up a little bit. Relax. Clear it out. What a genius. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I wonder yeah. what they saw. Did they see like a caveman, like sketch on a wall 
about like how somebody was shitting and mm. then they tried it elevated mm. feet. They're like, this is genius. Holy shit. This is how humans are supposed to shit. That's mm -hmm. like, no, I, think I think they watched somebody take dumps in other somewhere else where they didn't really have running toilets and they were kind of squatting yeah. down over top of it. Japan has that. Mm. Yeah. There's, there's a, do that. Really? Basically pooping a hole. Just Not a everywhere, hole. but yeah. I, I went into a place and there was a, there was a thing on the wall. Like a bar? And then a hole. A hole yeah. And it wow. was like, I don't think I'd be able to dump here, but I do appreciate that others have. Yeah. And then I walked out of the thing and I was right on the street. And it was like, oh, like their public restroom. Somebody just that. dumped right there. Yeah. Somebody's oh. dumping. Mm -hmm. Somebody's hanging on a wall dumping. <clears throat> yeah, totally you better hope you have a constipated rabbit dump coming out. Otherwise, it's going to get fucking messy in there. For you, not for everybody. I don't think everybody's dumps are the same. Well, probably not. But it's you like got, fingerprints. You got a little hole <laughs> in, the, no in the ground like that. I mean, no, no, it's pretty big hole. Mushing his, using his hands to mush the rest in that's on the edge. I'm I, telling I, you, I, it was pretty big, dude. It was like... What if you fell down in the hole? Oh, you do, my you God. Like one of these. Then you die. And it was here. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's good for, like, ankle flexion and getting people to bend when they're yeah, older. It's good for quads. And also, I don't think you have to build anything. You know, you just need a pole on the wall and a fucking... Yeah. The whole, it did have piping, obviously. It disappeared. Yeah. Oh. Toilet paper? And I think if I would have fallen, my ass would have fit in the hole. Ooh. But I wouldn't have go, I wouldn't have just been... But little kids. Yeah. Little kids in there. I got oh, multiple God. kids that would probably fall in that hole. Well, that's the difference between Japan and America. Mm -hmm. you know, You're right. Well trained. Right. Yeah, their kids Awareness. don't fall. It's Maybe. also, Japan is the cleanest place I've ever been in my life. By far. You're walking down the street, it's like, is somebody running a sweeper? Mm -hmm. Like... I hear Wait. that about Singapore, too. Really? Mm -hmm. Singapore is super clean because I guess there's all kind of laws. You can't spit your gum out. You can't do anything like oh, that. Oh, yeah. They like... Yeah, public lashings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That kid was from Ohio. Shows those well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What happened? Kid got caned back in the, way back in the day, and he had, was graffiti. He sprayed some graffiti over there from Dayton, Ohio. He got chokeslammed? Yeah, I can't do that. They will take a kendo <laughs> stick right to your back. An Ohio fuck went over and did graffiti yeah. in Singapore? Yeah. They, we had to negotiate. Like the, That's the, the most US Ohio negotiated thing with of all time. Oh. Mm -hmm. Bunch of idiots over here. Yeah, they won't get me. They won't get me. Mm -hmm. I'm from DYT, Dayton, baby. What a crazy. Mm -hmm. Had to be a white, obviously. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I just I'm heard about going it. Going to get I'm graffiti so we saw in New York. I'd bet a billion dollars. Which like one? freaking, like what was like eighty stories up. Oh yeah. What are these people doing? <laughs> that was Spider Man. What are these people? Hey, doing? Hey, hey, some of them are great artists. Though. Oh yeah. Some real. All talent. right, let's get to a break. We'll wrap up the day making our picks for this evening. We'll read some overreactions from around the internet, and also. We're going to take a trip to bomb. Th no, we should do it tomorrow because tonight there might be. Might be. Oh, be a couple. Yeah. True. Two punts. Six-yard field goals. Mm. Bomb time. Yeah. Right Huge. Now for the brand. And uh, there's some people missing kicks that don't normally miss kicks. Hmm. Like I saw Young Way Koo miss for the Couple. first time. Twice. Long time. Yeah, yeah, he gave up the uh, percentage lead. To Justin Tucker. They were at 90% and 89.9 for a career for leader in field goal percentage. And then Young Way has a day. Justin Tucker has a day. And they're like this. Thank you to both of them for their expertise. This Aubrey guy might be... He's yeah, he, unbelievable. He might be the one. He's a jugs machine, this fucking guy. And he doesn't even swing, and it's just like, boom. So smooth. Boom. Every Looks time. too easy. Looks much too easy. Yeah. Oh, no. I know. I, 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 I oh, was thinking yeah. the same wow. thing, Damn. but it's a good point. Yeah. Someone pooped their pants? No. No, just the last time I did this. Yeah. The guy missed oh. two, Damn. three. Myers. <laughs> yeah. I said, that guy ne actually never seen a miss, I said. Mm-hmm. And then, lo and behold, they're on primetime just a couple days later. Yeah. I saw him fucking miss. Yep. Was on primetime last week. The too. whole world saw him miss. <laughs> Damn. And he had Brain Aubrey doesn't even know he shows this. He's a cowboy. That's right. True. True. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Locked mm -hmm. in. Let's get to a break. We got a lot to do in the next, you know, probably hour, 45 minutes or so. Let's go. Here we go, boys. Let's finish up this overreaction Hell Monday yeah. strong. Yeah. Because we got to remember how many more weeks left of the regular season. Mm -hmm. Not, Not many. Four. It's week 14 right now, so week 15 is what? One. One. Week 16 is what? Two. Two. Week 17 is what? Three. Week 18 is what? Four. Four. It's over. Yeah, but then we have Super Walk Hour Weekend. Super mm -hmm. Walk Hour Weekend? Yeah, but... Five. A lot of teams gone. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah but they should be gone. There's only... I agree, but when... that's Then how many games? we got three games on Saturday, three games on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, one on one. There's only... Perfect. Super Wild Card Weekend. Super Wild Card Weekend. Is the greatest thing of all it time. It is. So it we is. are four weeks away from the greatest yeah. weekend yeah. outside of... And then after that. But then after that, it's... Yeah. Yeah, we're seven nothing, weeks... Boys. Seven weeks from today, there will only be two teams left. 
Holy fuck, dude. Yeah. All right, let's enjoy a night. Yes. Tommy DeVito. Bingo. Yeah. The passing pie's on. Man, he's at home. He's got the Jordan. same numbers as Mahomes. You guys ready to feel the love tonight? Yeah. I am. New era. Come on. It's the Goot the Coons era. Yeah. Right. Get to watch the Dolphins play oh, offense. Today. They are the fastest show on turf. Yeah, mm -hmm. finally healthy again. Bill Levis. Boom. Oh, Boom. Like, he could throw that thing core mile. That's yeah. right. Derrick Henry's big still. Devanke's going tonight. Lots of snaps. Ooh. Phillips out. Orlovsky. Dan Orlovsky's yeah. calling Fowler. Fowler. Yes. Peyton and Eli are doing both games simultaneously. What? what? I saw they got a little. I, so they sweet. got some advice from Scott Hansen. They did. How do we handle this? He had the huggies on the table. I don't wear a diaper. And then took the huggies off the table. Oh, Good oh, game. Got a game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. He didn't have a ball in his hand. Oh, in that, wow. Which is no, he wasn't news. in his car. Yeah. I did, uh, I did. I got to be in a video with Kevin Hart and Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. That's sweet. Oh, yeah. How was that? That was so stupid. I couldn't believe I even got asked to do it. I'm a thespian, though. I don't know if you saw me acting in there. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you could. Kayfabe? Nobody was on the phone. What? I was talking to myself in the hallway. You're lying. <laughs> what? I don't believe that. <laughs> really? I don't know. The video's already out there. Fucking this movie is fake. magic. Fake Kayfabe. Fake Kayfabe. <laughs> Kevin Hart's in a hundred movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peyton Manning has acted in a hundred mm -hmm. commercials. Mm -hmm. yep. Eli Manning, same damn thing. And me, he just needs you to. Mm. Okay. All right. I mean, I'll I get try. to be on camera with Kevin Hart. He said my name right, too. That was cool. Really? That was a big moment. That was a fucking big moment. He, he said McAfee or Pat McAfee? Yeah. He said McAfee, my man. Oh, okay. Thought you didn't good. see this? I did all this acting for nothing? Fuck. You guys need to see it. Where was it? It was on the internet. Yeah, it was sick. It was for Kevin Hart's Maggie cast on Saturday. So it's awesome. Awesome. I watched yeah, some of that. Awesome, was it in the group? Pretty damn good. The acting? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Nobody needed to send that in the group. <laughs> I just did some acting. If it's not in the group, I have a hard time seeing it. You're a dad now. <laughs> You're a dad now. All right, let's get to a break. Oh, we got it. We got it. I did some it. real acting. Right here. Look at him yeah, acting. Kofi. You are definitely <laughs> talking to each other. No, no, no. We're not. Nobody's on the phone with anybody. It looks Unless like they were right. talking and I wasn't. Was you know, quiet. I might not have. Man, look. No, you can find yourself. It's all Omaha Productions. All right. Someone sent it to me. Unless Kevin was on the phone and I just couldn't hear him. What if you were the he only one? Probably, probably was. Apparently possible. Probably so was. that's what it was. He was on. I couldn't <laughs> hear him. You had Verizon. Yeah. Probably yeah. Right. yeah. That's probably what it is. He's probably Google Pixel. Yeah. Yeah, he could. Because I'm iPhone. Or something dumb mm -hmm. like Possibly. Sprint. Yep. And I tweeted this, and I mean it. It does feel like Apple has turned on the oh yeah, kill this guy's battery 100%. until he buys the new oh, iPhone yeah. setting. Yeah, they they had they had to pay a billion dollars for it, which you know didn't even. Don't they have a trillion? Yes. Yeah, they, they are, are the trillion. number two most valuable thing on Earth behind gold. What about air? That's <laughs> <clears throat> right. Um, this is not a joke. I think it was. Uh, I what's, saw that. What's Kevin Durant's thing? Boardroom. I think they posted it. Yeah, they did. That's awesome. Just what a statement. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this stat. Hashtag stat that. Yeah. They got us. So I'm going to buy a fucking new one, I guess. Have to. All right. I guess, Uncle Apple, I yeah. will. Mm -hmm. Just fucking kill my battery as soon as I open the phone up. Don't need it for anything. So. No. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. They're going to say it's not true, obviously. This is all alleged. You know, it's not real. But seems to be quite a trend as a guy that's owned an Apple phone since literally uh, I'm 21 years old. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. Especially with new chargers. And blue text messages are worth it. Yes, they are. All right, be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. Bye. 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 The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers said that he would actually drink his own urine every single day for his 12-year NFL career. Why? Every time, knowing that, down in your life, I got a lot of shine. Running up the number, that's a lot of crime. Try to take it from me, must be at your mind. Also, I do believe I'm gonna have a microphone at the ESPYs. Whoa! What? I just went to the breakfast with the producers of the ESPYs and if I had to play the game here, I typed up a full fake speech yesterday that was close enough to what it's gonna be. And then today they went to breakfast so that they can relay out the entire thing and I'm not doing this. Uh, I already got my speech. You guys can either help it or not help it and mute my mic if you want to. So we're off to a good start. ESPN's Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee. I had to give a speech. 
at this rehearsal. And God bless everybody at the ESPYs yeah. <laughs> because I don't do rehearsals well. I've never been able to do them. And I'm definitely not letting these people who didn't want me to be able to be in the position that I was in to hear anything that I'm actually going to say. Sure. No. So I had to give two fake speeches. Uh, welcome to the 2023 ESPYs. I am uh, not your host. No, no. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Three, the ESPY goes to the ketchup lover himself, Patrick Mahomes. There it is. Congrats, Patrick. You deserve it. We love watching you play football, Patrick. do my final fake speech. I get a text from Plain Lady. They just had to U-turn because something was forgot. Took off, seven minutes, turned around, flew back down. Connor forgot the ball. I've never heard of that. Tell me what it's like to live with superpowers. I don't know, but I'ma get it. I'ma get it. I'ma get it. I just know that I'ma get it. I'ma get it. I'ma get it. I'ma get it. I got the drop. All right, I'm about to go do this thing. Lil Wayne's about to do I'm Melly, I'm Melly, I'm Melly, I'm Melly. And I'm walking out. And I'm going to talk about AJ Hawk drinking his piss. Please welcome ESPN's Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. supposed to be a funny host, a host that's friends with The Rock, a host that does interviews out of a cold tub, a host that I've never met, but from the pictures on the internet, I think that song bitch is about yay tall. It is an absolute honor to be in this room celebrating the hell out of sports excellence. Sports are the greatest thing in the world. Sports are amazing. In a world that is seemingly divided by everything, if you go to any stadium or arena or locker room, you will see people from all different backgrounds, socioeconomic classes, races, religions, differing of opinions, all uniting for one thing, and that's to beat the hell out of them. Ladies and gentlemen, DeMar Hamlin is here tonight. We all watched the situation unfolding on Monday Night Football, and we all at home feared for the absolute worst. And Skip Bayless was like, get that dead body off the field! We got playoff implications on the line! He said it, the tweet's still up. Hashtag delete the tweet, Skip. Come on. I still don't think Skip should put that tweet out tomorrow. I think that was a little insensitive. In the past 12 months, three teams have brought their fans in city a championship for the first time ever. The LSU women's basketball team is here tonight. The Vegas Golden Knights won their first ever Stanley Cup. That's hockey. And the Denver Nuggets won their first ever NBA championship. You know, every once in a while, though, sports will contribute to society some monsters. There was a man who would put a wolf mask on and actually go into banks with a gun and rob them for money so that he could watch these two assholes play for them. <laughs> so we apologize. The sports world obviously isn't perfect. Sue us. Don't actually. Shout out Brett Favre. I'm getting sued by Brett Favre. What? <laughs> One NBA star is not here that I was kind of hoping for. He is seven foot five. Needs to apologize to Britney Spears. All of us learning of him very recently can't wait to watch him take on the NBA's best, the Kardashian family. Kendall Jenner's starting five would win the NBA championship every single year. 
You know it. You know it, Jamal. If they're in the bubble, your ass is getting smoked, dude. Hit me! Love that. There's people in here that do crazy things to get their body from one game to the next. There's acupuncture, obviously. There's people that change their entire sleeping patterns. There's people that live in a way that no fun is had so that they can show up for their teammates. And as we've recently learned, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers said that he would actually drink his own urine every single day for his 12-year NFL career. And it's that type of commitment and dedication to craft and sport. It's been almost 20 years since the loss of Pat Tillman, but every time we pay tribute to his legacy of sacrifice and service, we're continuing to live on in his honor. The presenter of the Pat Tillman Award for Service, Yinzer Damar Hamlin. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, December 11th, 2023. Hour three of the program starts now. Football! Do it. If we were to do this properly, it would be hour four of the program. Oh, yeah. But yeah. we didn't do an hour three of the program. Sure. So we have protocols here. A block. Right. Yeah, B block. Was. C block. Was. C block a little bit delayed because B block ran a little hot. That's now, remember, A block got cut a little short because somebody had to go dump. That's nine-year <laughs> NFL <laughs> vet, Darius J. Butler. Hey, man, oh, big pooper. Gotta go, you got to go. One half of the hammer. Don. Don. Cowboys turn Diggs is here. Talks the table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt are here. And the man who's won every championship he can win in football, A.J. Hawk is here. AJ, I know we normally talk about football. That was a good bird call. I believe it was coming from over. Yeah, whoa. Was that you with the bird call? Debo. No. Debo. You sure? That was pretty that's pretty good. Was that yeah. not? Is that you? If I had to guess it two, two down, yeah. I was about to say, I didn't know you were doing sound. I was thing. gonna say that was pretty I, damn good. Yeah. No yeah. stolen val over here. I work on it. I respect that. You did lie about not pooping. Yeah, true. Did. true. You know what I mean? Yeah, so did. I appreciate the how admiral you are. Speaking of Admiral, Admiral Kacher of uh Navy, the superintendent for Navy uh Academy, the yeah. Naval Academy, fan of the program. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Well, he was the one that said, uh yep. um, we're yoked and whatever. And I was just sitting on the stage. I'm like, what the fuck is this admiral? <laughs> yeah, who's this guy? Well, I, I appreciate that he was like prepped, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe, hey, this would be a good, you say something like this. And then afterwards, next commercial break, comes over to studio, or comes over to stage, walks over, says, hey, big fan of the program. Like, big fan of the program. We watch and stuff like that. And I was like, sir, I tell this to a lot of people that are in your type of position. Mm -hmm. You need not watch our fucking show. Just like yeah. I told Robert Kraft. Mm -hmm. You need to remain smart and great. Yes. Mm -hmm. And morally awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Bingo. Makes sense. Because the position here, don't fucking watch our show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he said, I love it or whatever. And he just shook my hand and I was like, hey, nice to meet you. Dude. Yeah. Very yeah. nice to meet you. I appreciate your service. Have a good one. And then, um, yeah, getting to meet all those Looks folks so afterwards. Cool. Was sweet, man. Because be. all the alumni, <clears throat> yeah, they're all Army Navy. People. The game is oh, so yeah. cool, you know. In like the game going from down in Washington up there, a lot of people that live in the area, you know, it's like when the Packers come to town, <clears throat> Packers fans in the area yep. go. go to the game. Whenever the Steelers go travel, it's like Steelers fans in the area mm -hmm. feel obli not obligated, but like they go to the game. It was like Army Navy up there. There was a lot of Army Navy vets that wouldn't travel or hadn't been able to travel down to Washington for the game or Virginia or whatever for the game or Philly for the game. Mm -hmm. And instead, they're like, it was great to be here. So it was the amount of nice to meet you as, wow, you're a badass, stories that you hear. And then, like, 
What these fucking people sign up to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. sign up out of, out of high school. Like, that's what's crazy. Like, knowing you're making that decision before you really have any, you know, real life experience, if you will, because you're still just, you're choosing to do it. That was the coolest part of the game for me. Yeah. yeah. Like, getting to meet all of them. But then the game lives up to the It's hype. always awesome. Mm-hmm. The flyover was awesome because they did the Navy, the fighter jet, and then they did the Apache helicopters and stuff like that, Sick. which was super cool. Um, Jen Lotta's piece got me this week. Always mm-hmm. does. Yeah, and the taps at the end was really... Yeah, it yeah. was sweet. Yeah, that Chills. was. So thanks for having us, Game <laughs> The atmosphere, too. Glad Keep you're on our side. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Just, I said that about the 777 howitzer. Yeah. That thing. Mm-hmm. Glad that's on our team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and afterwards, I talked to the whole the squad there. I forget their name. The 101st. <laughs> nope, not going to get it. I think... Charlie Alpha, the hun- Charlie A- AC. Ah. ah, I don't know. Anyways, I said, who all has this? You know, like, do uh, does the other team have this? Mm-hmm. Does the other, the other team have one of these? They said uh, most NATO countries have sure. one of these M triple seven howitzers. Mm-hmm. Suck it, Russia. Twenty five miles. Yeah, damn. I, I read that on Friday. Twenty five miles. Yeah. 20. How accurate? How accurate can they be? Probably too. I assume. Crazy. I don't think, yeah. I'm assuming that thing's Through going. Through a keyhole. Brock yeah. Purdy. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. they said it's like a Folgers can-sized missile. Shell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shell on the other side. I forget what the number it was. I thought you said it was heavy, oh. too. For the actual thing. I thought, I thought you said it was like the H-77 AAA 100th Artillery was those people. I don't know. Wow. The M-777 Howitzer was yeah. the name of the, that's the name yeah. of the, the actual weapon. weapon. Oh, yeah, okay. the group that was there. They're, they're with the National Guard, I think. Yeah. They had a flag. Because it was National Guard's birthday, too. I wish the National Guard oh. a happy birthday while standing in front of the howitzer. Mm-hmm. And then they also walked me through how that fucker works. Oh. That was pretty cool. I was watching some videos on Friday of it. Real cool. Yeah, they pull, they do mm-hmm. a, even the pull of the thing, like old school. And catapult. And then that thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 25 miles. They should have let, let you just launch one into the they Boston should've. Harbor. Just into the water. Oh. Miles. What's the chances it hit yep. something out in the ocean? Well, or just the you know, Atlantic. A lot happened in the Boston Harbor, right? I mean, there was yeah, a, yeah. a big, pretty big party there. Well, Connor, Connor, party. Connor, to start the show, said that New England started the country. That was, you know, well, well, inaccurate. Where, where we land? land? Where we land, Tony? Who's J- we? Jamestown, Virginia. Nope. Yeah. Plymouth Rock. What's he talking about, AJ? Yeah, who's we, Con Man? Who, like, your, your descendants, your family? Where, where our humans landed? Where's Mitt? Oh. Mitt? Mitt yep. is, uh, yeah, he come is. on, Mitt. He's yeah. a member of the uh, 16th should. Cherokee mm-hmm. Cherokee tribe. Yep. yep. No. Uh, I think that's what he said. Really? Uh, he's got like yeah, really cool. Got, got he's him. got really cool You're Cherokee? Yeah, socks yeah. on today. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. Nick, Bet you enough. Do. What'd Nick say? Ooh. Nick said basically like, no Native American people want Mitt to represent them right now. <laughs> I was thinking that, too. That's exactly what it is. I don't know if they've seen his new car. <laughs> That's pretty much his, what he said. Right? They've, they've seen, seen the toy. Sand. He yeah, does just, have a sweet car. He just got a sand seen the Stang. They he, does, made. he does have a sweet car. Yeah. He just got, he totaled this Mustang. Yep. Got it fixed. Got it painted. Yep. Mm-hmm. A few times. And then crashed it again. Yeah, yeah. right after he got Jeez. it painted. Oh. Yep. Had to get it fixed. No. First time it's debuted cold. today. Coldest day it's been. Yep. And, yep. you know, a few. Chilly. Look, yeah. there's his room. Yep. <laughs> yep. Everybody met. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody met, bro. Yeah. Yeah, his dad, um, I believe, is the lineage of mm-hmm. the Cherokee. And some of his speeches he would give to the team would be about some things that he's dreamed Sick. and his people. And it was, he grew up on a horse ranch, horse mm-hmm. farm mm-hmm. or whatever, horse ranch, I guess on a farm. They're not creating horses over there. Right. They were catching them ranching. and breaking them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were ranching. They were actually ranching out yeah. there. Yeah, that's why Mitt got uh, his toy, the color sand, because he said it reminded of his father's uh, horse. When first he, horse, yeah. He's grown up. Well, his first horse, Tom McMahon's first horse, coach for Las Vegas Raiders right now, special teams coordinator, he was four years old, I think, or I, five years old. I forget what it was. Something. Riding a psycho horse, a crazy horse, through Montana, I believe, to get to, uh, they either led people on fishing and hunting or like tours or something yeah. of the land, and gets bucked off horse on creek, hits head off rock in creek. He's last horse in group, so I think he was there for a while. Find him. He has a metal plate in his head still to this day. Uh, this, so his first horse, I don't think he's the one that we're no. trying to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think his first horse tried to kill him. He's the one that saved him. 
Well, I mean, there was, I believe he did get tossed over the back of another horse. Oh, Sandy. Yeah, Mitt's family is wild. You know who else's family's wild? Bakhtiari's. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did it, were you oh, yeah. when crazy he was telling me the story? Carl? Weapons. <laughs> Did you hear the st same story I heard? I forget it. There's like a. Uh, I forget, where's he from? Uh, God damn! I, I don't want to say the wrong country. Me but, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I, I don't want yeah. I, I talk to him all the time. I never get it. I never get the exact region right. His yeah. people though were like a crew, like a uh, like a known group, like the Bakhtiari. I forget yeah. what it is. Village. It was a, it, it was a warrior. It was like a warrior crew. Yeah. Like oh, uh, a warrior clan. Yeah, it was like exactly. a warrior trot, like yeah. something like that. The, the his I think it's his either his father's fodder or his father's father's fodder. Yeah. Em emigrated from Iran. But then he get kicked out of didn't they get kicked? I think they ended up there. I think they got I'm not 100% sure. They like escape one of his I think his grandpa his dad's dad or somebody yeah. Crazy story getting over here. I think escaping wherever he was and making it. Yeah, like real the story that I was told was like, yeah, not only did we lead like a, a group that was like a war tribe, mm -hmm. uh, I think there was some sort of political thing that happened where that particular group ended up getting against the new people in power. So then they were trying to, so they had to yeah, get flee mm -hmm. and escape, I think. And then they end up here. It's like, holy shit. And then you, it's only like one generation away. Yeah. Like it was like right there. Yeah. And then it's like the same genes and I'm talking to the dad and the dad is this fucking man. Yeah, he's the man. Properly jocked. Yeah. Just absolute stuff. And he was the one that told me the Bakhtiar story. He was like, you know the lineage. And I'm like, I don't. Yeah. And they start telling me, I'm like, man, you are some bad motherfuckers. Huh? Yeah. Basically, that's what he was telling mm -hmm. me at that time. I'm like, I agree with it. I, that was a good group of people over there, man. Good group of people. Great squad. Hey, Orlovsky just FaceTimed me. Is this because? Oh, no. I don't know what happened. What? It's because Ryan Clark? Some, no, it's yeah. probably because somebody just said Brock Purdy had a holister. So he's like, I got to fucking call these guys right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. He, right. he always dances around that, doesn't yeah. he? Howitzer yeah. is way more accurate than Brock. Damn, we're live. If the howitzer was in nine Hey, we're live. You want to be on a program or what? Be the MVP. Uh -huh. Can we call you from the studio computer? Would it be better on the air, or you want me? What, we're working, Dan. Okay? We're working. So, I, am I? Yes. Go, go to hell. All right, we'll call you. 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 I wonder what that's going to be. He has a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody questioned something. <clears throat> Somebody said something. Ryan Clark, Clark said, Clark, yeah. this isn't the Dan Orlovsky line. line. Yeah. Correct. Oh. He that's did what say it's that. About. That's what it's about. It was quite a line. Great line. Ladies and gentlemen, man who once led the Lions, Dan Orlovsky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow, looks good today. Dan, you look good. Monday night football tonight. Whoa. Nice haircut. Yeah, thank you. Um, I heard that line, by the way, by Ryan. I, it felt a little unnecessary. But. <laughs> I agree. It's not about that, it sounds got, like. Got the point across, yeah. too. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Sorry, whoa. sorry. Boxing. What's that all about? That's your own guy, Foxy. That boxing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Dan. Just buried you. Oh. Last week I saw you in person. I raved about you. I said positive, incredibly like great mm -hmm. things about your hair. The first thing out of your mouth is a shot. Well, that wasn't a shot, Dan. It's just like same old lions, brand new lions, and he brought up a good point. What you just said though is every foxy interaction that he's ever had in his entire life. <laughs> yeah. You know, like Get the guy is like the most handsome guy of, on on earth. Mm -hmm. He's got his hair is always perfect. Yeah, Except he's when he's with his family. Good looking guy. I agree. What's that? Because oh, yeah, his, his brother, his younger brother, is uh, a more hey. jocked, hotter version yeah. of Evan yeah. Fox. So much hotter. Yeah. So yeah. much hotter. He's the run to the litter when is it comes younger to Younger brother, Chris Hemsworth? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty Paul. much. Yep. Pretty much. That's who he is. Jocked. Just a jocked Properly. Foxy. <laughs> hey, the reason I was calling you, can you send me, if if possible, uh, uh, Sterator's number? Do you have it? Gene's number? I do. You said he didn't want to talk to you. Will you share that from with me, please? I will. I actually, I I talked to Gene Serator last night. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Funny thing, you know, after his tweet goes, the way it goes, obviously, and we are massive, Gene Serator. Oh, Gene. And uh, I asked him, like, hey, you want to come on program tomorrow? I think he was traveling. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, I wasn't able to come. Maybe it would maybe sure, sure, sure. Yeah. work. Yeah, maybe. Tough. Busy yeah. I don't know what it is. He's busy got a lot week. going on, but. I can certainly share why. What are you, are you going to question the refs tonight? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, I, just in regards to the Kadarius Tony play from yesterday, and whatnot. I got a thing on NFL Live, and I want to make sure that I'm saying Smart. what I'm saying accurately. Smart. That's Whoa. right. That's the right. Damn. Right. Good legwork. Hey, That's you. Gene Starr the right guy to call, man. Pittsburgher, you know that, right? Pittsburgher. 
Is he? Of course, Dan. You knew He's that. He's a Yenzer? Yes. Very proud. Very proud, Yenzer. All right. All right. So you got NFL Good Live deal. and Monday Night Football. Yeah. Jeez. I, I can do both. Double duty. How do you do it? You're working bro. so much. What are you are you taking five hour energy? Coffee? What are we doing? I mean, you work seven hours a day on live TV, so it's about me. It's a question about I you, do five bro. hour energy. If you want to know. <laughs> yeah. Five hour energy and I'll drink some tea every once in a while. And the uh, little Turner's tea every once in a while. The uh, what was the uh, word I'm looking coffee. for? Vitamins. Yeah, there a lot is. of the vitamins. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I think the thing that I have two my... cups of coffee. Okay. Sugar free vanilla, extra cream. No. <laughs> That's not coffee. Jeez. What's your problem? Did you hear what he puts in it? He's drinking milk. He's drinking sugar milk. Ow. That creamer's not good for you either. Yeah, it is. Dan, look how good he looks. You don't think this is good for yeah. him? Yeah. Look at this. this it is comes the... from a cow. It's good. So you're Bang. one of those. You're one of those people. You're one of those people who thinks the way that humans have ate for 3,000 years Nick is a has. problem and the way that we're eating now isn't? Nick, is that your, what you're saying? No, yeah, if you use milk, it'd be fine. But if you use coffee creamer, you're you're in for problems. It's fat-free. No, it's, it's cream. I don't use, like, that fake stuff. It's just, like, heavy milk or whatever. Oh, okay, you're good then. Oh, watch those cows. Thank just, you. Who was that? Jonah. Uh, oh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. About oh, cows. yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. You, the I milk. would, like, take this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just one yep. award. Well, we we just take the milk from these mom cows. We need the milk. Yeah, everybody. You see. I mean, it is. Anyways, that's all you called for. We're fucking working, Dan. Come on. We just took the show completely off the tracks. We were maybe hitting our best stride. Yeah, we were. That we had hit we all season. We were kind of looking like NFL Dude. Live. Yeah. And you nominated. are the king of. You are the king of randomly calling what? people. Oh, okay. All right. That's not how TV works, Dan. Okay, that's not how TV works, pal. Will you please share his number with me? I, I would I'm greatly ask him. appreciate it. I don't know. Hey. Yeah, it's <laughs> hey. not how it works. I don't know what you think this is. Like, yeah, Gene, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah, I'm just going to give your money or your number. Let's call Gene. This could cause. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. People, <laughs> people who share numbers too without just double checking. Bad people. With the person's number. Yeah, yes, yeah. he's a bad person. Bad person. Yes. Because if you choose not to answer, they're like, right. I got this number from. Is this a right number? Is mm -hmm. another message that comes. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I'm just never looking at that. Just don't look at yep. it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And now, well, now that I know, now I know that if you don't share the number with me, he hates me and oh. told you not to. Oh, yeah. I did just kind of do that. We did yeah. that publicly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not, I mean, then you don't have to deal with that situation. Yeah, because then you don't have to be like the guy that's not getting an answer. He yeah. Loves, yeah, he loves Dano. He He's loves Dan yeah. Orlovsky. Yeah. Of course. How could you not? Everybody loves Dano. Ask your own ref. Oh, he'd be. Don't they have one? Everyone. No, Dan. 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 Stop. Dan. 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 Not, not everyone. Where are you? Oh, Foxy. Is that Foxy's Miami? at the top of the list today. No, oh. oh. I didn't say it, Dan. Ryan Clark said it. That's Remember your, that. That's your teammate, NFL Live. Are you all, is everybody from NFL Live in that car right there? You guys, uh, like, cabs are here? Is yeah. that, is yeah. that yeah. what yeah. we're, are we Free rolling in the studio? It was a show. No, NFL Live is me and Laura down here in Miami for the game. Mina home. Ryan's in studio in Bristol. Okay. Where's Swagoo? What about Swagoo? Yeah. What about Swagoo? Where's Swagoo? Where's the big... Uh, Marcus, Where's I Swagoo? believe, has strep throat. <gasps> no. What? You know He's what that is. He's a Oh, That's my contagion. God. Are we sure it's strep? <laughs> As opposed to what? What are you saying? You know what? <laughs> I hope You're not. the worst. You're an idiot. I hope not. Why, why are you such an idiot? I'm just saying. Don't check everything. If he ends up with a bad toe, we'll know. I guess. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's how we'll know. Mm -hmm. Until then, it's strep. Yeah. And he went to LSU, too. So. What's that mean? Oh, yeah. Kim Mulkey. I ain't taking a test. Oh, Don't yeah. Even <laughs> Don't even ask. That's right. That all, it might be Kelvin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not I, testing. I, I don't know. Right into the microphone. Yeah. Yep. Couldn't have said it. Hey, as I'm on my way out of here, excuse me. Excuse me. Just want to let you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all feel this way, right? All right, just me. All right, whatever. Okay. That's how it is. I'm not testing. See you. And I'll see you on the sideline tomorrow night. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Anyways, Dan, good luck out there, pal. And good luck in Miami. We're proud of you. Go get it, baby, Dan. Dan Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Orlovsky. Yeah, yeah, baby, Dan -o. What's that all about? Just in the middle of a fucking show? Yeah, yeah. that was d just for someone's number. That could have been a text. Yeah. Yeah, text message would have sufficed. Could have Bingo. Been. Yeah, but it's good to see him. He, he, wanted, he, he wanted to talk to you. Well, he looked. He knew he looked good. Yeah. Shirt was...
properly. Perfectly so, split. So are you yep. going to send him the number? Or? I texted Gene. I said, hey, Gino. Yeah, and we know what Gene's doing right now. Like, hey, oh, Gino, fuck. Yeah. I don't what know. if Gene just says, what if he just says no? That, do, you have a a, follow, do you follow up or what? He calls me Patty. I would be, Patty. I'd be excited if you go, Patty, yeah. dot, dot, dot. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. Make sure he knows I told you that too. What if he does that? Wait, is that well, he will. I want to say, Gene, is that? Yeah. Who is the ESPN yeah. ref? John, John Perry. Perry yes. Oh, okay. But he's probably at the other game with uh, yeah. Joe and Troy. Joe and yeah. Troy, yeah. Something like that. We don't, we don't have another one that can put in the booth with Dan, though. It's still a Monday night game. I'm uh, sure. Maybe, he, there, maybe he's in like a uh, studio. A yeah, yeah. He'll be in a studio. Studio. Remote. In the yeah. truck. The. Um, the WNBA has a draft. Yes. Oh, you know yeah. who has the number one overall pick again? Yep. Oh. The Indiana Fever. You know who the number one overall pick is going to be? Who? Caitlin Clark out of Iowa's coming to Indiana. Yeah! Yes, that's Woo! real, AJ. Let's go that is real. real. That is a gigantic deal. That is a really big deal, honestly. Yeah. Big fucking yeah. deal. Yes. Tyrese Halliburton yep. right now with the Pacers. Wow. Sure. And then we got Caitlin Clark coming to help. A fever team that is already young yeah. and hungry. Mm-hmm. Had the number one overall pick last year. Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston. She's, she's, a year. She, she's a beast, mm-hmm. Aaliyah Boston. Wow. So now, all of a sudden, oh like Pacers, you want to watch play. Yes. Yep. Hasn't been like that for a while. And the fever are about to be in there with the Aces and the Liberty. All in. Mm-hmm. How you doing, WNBA? Hey, Kelsey Plum, I've heard the Aces watch the program. Mm. Congrats. Congrats. Mm-hmm. Back-to-back champs. That's Fucking sweet. They look mm-hmm. great but tell, on Saturday and night. We, and we appreciate you coming on the show. Tell them how it's going to yes. be, though. <laughs> I have a fever. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that particular illness is going to win the championship. Mm-hmm. Yep. Welcome back, Indiana Fever. I don't yeah. know if they've ever... I'm so pumped. I don't think they have. Caitlin Clark is also entertaining going back to Iowa next year. So Again? Yeah. Don't be a mark. She has oh. four years. She can go back? Yeah, because was... of COVID. Oh, oh no. Don't oh, do it, yeah. Caitlin. No. Actually, it... it I'm pretty sure she makes more in Iowa than she would have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, like Those would quite, carry over. Quite a bit more, probably. Yeah, all of her marketing deals would carry over immediately mm-hmm. upon probably, coming probably. into the fever. Uh, boys, do not sure. worry. What's that? I'm, I'm just, I'm genuine question. Are you are you sure? Because she's what, State Farm already, too, yeah. right? Uh-huh. I'm not yep. sure. That would be crazy. The yeah. national Go stuff. Go to league and they're like, you know what? Also, you don't think... That gas station pizza, who is it? Casey's. You don't think the Casey's? The general store. It's not a gas station. <laughs> of course, they sell gas at the general store. They do. Uh-huh. They I do. apologize. They do. I just, in my head, I remember walking past gas yep. pumps. Into the general store. Boom. Yep. Sounds like a gas station. It's not. It's a general store that also happens to sell gas. Just like Kroger has gas stations some places. That's yeah. a grocery store. Oh, yeah. Exactly. They stop and shop. Casey's is a... General store. Town. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of hayseed towns. That's kind of the the center of attraction. Okay, sounds like a worse sheets, a Wawa. Uh, you know, like a buck. I actually like the vibe of the Casey's. Yeah. It's like a diner more so than sheets. Okay. Sheets is more like a, <laughs> sheets is a so, fucking gas station. No, so you watch your mouth. You never even been to a Casey's. No, hey, I hey, just real quick, watch your fucking mouth. Well, I'm just saying, you don't take. <laughs> show, yeah, I've been to a sheets. This guy's never been to a Casey, so he doesn't need to take unprovoked shots. That looks shots like a gas at station. Casey's. It's like, what, what does it say right beneath Casey's there? Unleaded 215. <laughs> no, it says general store. It also yet. says general store, though, on the roof of the gas part. It does. Of mm-hmm. the whole thing. It does. And it's not what, Casey's general what makes store it fault that, that, that the a real, parking lot has oil and yeah, gas what, under it. What are you going to do? Is that a real rooster wind directional thing? Because that changes my opinion. Definitely. Yeah, okay, then, is. yeah, I'm in on Casey's. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. You feel good going here. It's like going up to Ford's. Yeah. Yeah. We had a general store. A real one without gas pumps. Well, and also, I mean, you, you used to get your yeah, beef jerky up yeah. there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was awesome. Nice. I do like Sheets, though. Sheets is. Kid. Thank you. Sheets is. I like it. Thank, thank you. Yeah. I hate Wawa, though. That place stinks. Well, see. See, that's just, that's Phillies, right? Uh, that's yeah. Philly, Philly that's, Jersey. Okay. I think they're in Florida. Up. Yeah, they start mm-hmm. popping up down there about probably five, five, six years they're ago. They're good. Oh, yeah. Great. I like Wawa. There's one by there. More house. sheets are going Maybe in. There's sheets going in all over around here now, too. More of them. Okay. Bob's dead. There's a gas station. What's that fuck? Leo's. That's the oh, one. Oh, yeah. That's the one I'm talking about. Don't look at me like you know Leo's what I was talking is a real about. Treat. Leo's here in Indiana. Real treat. I don't know how many there are, Montana. but it's like a Sheets or a Casey's yeah. Yeah. or oh, nice. a Wawa. That's the future, I feel like. But also a Walmart in there. Oh, Bucky's. So it's like Bucky's. Oh, Bucky's is Texas, right? Maybe. Huge. Bucky's is gigantic. What a, country, we, what a so, great country we live in to have all these options. You're goddamn true. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And after that Army Navy game, mm-hmm. with those boys laying it on the line on the field for us mm-hmm. to be entertained. Till the very last second. 
Last second. Last yeah. Half of a yard. Slow safety is awesome way to so end a game. So cool. Awesome way to end a game, slow safety. We practice that once a week. That situation pops up once a decade. Never we all remember Sam it. Cook winning the Super Bowl yep. yeah. against the Niners for the Ravens mm-hmm. with a slow safety. And then another one here for Army mm-hmm. to get the dub over Navy. What a was. goal line stand. Yeah. That, that wow. was so cool. For, for the game to end that way, it's like poetic. I picked Navy uh, strictly because the Yenzers that were on the team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not know the whole panel was going yeah. Navy. Once I saw as soon that. as I saw Dez say it, I was like, oh, all right. And then Herbie goes there, and I'm like, Okay. Well. That's some bad news. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I that guy's in a navy robe. You're right. And yeah. he's here for navy. He's got props. Yeah. And I've already said, like, yeah, just Irby, you gonna go over? Pick a navy for this. I was like, oh no, this is not good. Reese at the very end goes, Yeah, I have army, by the way. I was like, thank you, Reese. Atta boy, Reese. Because we look like some real fucking assholes. And obviously Reese's wasn't on a graphic, so yeah. either way. I didn't want to disrespect Army. Mm. Of course not. You don't want to disrespect either. Nobody, yeah. yeah. I said, I hope the boys battle it out. Yeah, exactly. Talk about a lose, yeah, they lose pick. They did. Had like 10 seconds. Yeah, that one's tough. No matter what, you're losing. Plus, because we had story time with Bill, which was fucking epic. So sick. The, we were, that, was, that was the closest I've ever heard from the truck. Like, hey, gotta, uh, we gotta. Gotta go, gotta we go. We gotta. Because when we're doing those picks, you know, you'll hear Reese sometimes go, uh, I've got to go quick here. Mm-hmm. That's because, like, there is a. Yeah. Ticking. To a kickoff of another game. Right. Mm-hmm. Next year, it's going to be an SEC game, I think. Like, probably, you know, on ESPN. Mm-hmm. Not saying we are going to be at all SEC games, but the kickoff at noon, I believe, with the deal going to ESPN, that's going to be some fucking massive yes. yeah. SEC game. I wonder if we'll just delay those kickoffs like 20 minutes. Yeah, because that's do. what... That's, and, then and then just go yeah. from 12... And say they start at noon. Yeah, and then just say take the ratings yeah. for the game. No, Ooh. yeah, maybe that's not that's not a bad hmm. that's not a bad play in the game too. And then start flexing that, yeah, Ooh. as if that's real. Right, that's hmm. something to do. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Twenty three million viewers. How about that? <laughs> at close, Mickey Mouse. Bang. Ooh, it is. It was. Well, actually, uh, no, it's awesome. Yeah. Anyways, watch. It. It well, let's awesome. go to some overreaction, <laughs> shall we? From around. The internet, it's been, th- this game day shit's been really cool. It has been sweet. I'm happy that Herbie kind of forced me publicly to go back. I was gonna, he I was certainly do. did. Now that it's here, is that real or? I mean, yeah. It ha- I mean, it kind of, I said it fucking. Yeah. <laughs> he did say it. Yeah, <laughs> but people say stuff all I did all, uh, did Saturday when I got home and I saw the fucking ambush and I'm like, I fucking. Here we what go. What the again. fuck, dude? Of course. What? exactly what I was talking why about. Why is this, yeah. why is this? I, didn't ever, I don't like being known as somebody that would be an ambusher. And it's yeah, like, exactly. that just taking, that being the thing that just, and there was a lot of like, there was a lot of people saying, like a lot of people saying it. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Like, are we not all living in the same reality? Like, he's going to have to do something. He has to make a decision. He has to make a decision. Like, yeah. a lot of different ones. I don't envy it. Well, I don't envy like, it. a little peek behind the curtain, but we also, like, have questions that we write down that you check, and sometimes if it's even close to, like, kind of being, uh, like, poking around a little bit in something that clearly isn't a fun conversation, like, you'll just say, like, hey, let's let's, let's avoid stuff like that. Yeah, so, let's not. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's not how only, the show operates. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like, I don't want to fucking set people up for fear. There's enough negativity already in the world. Yes. But I'll say some of it's very entertaining. <laughs> Stephen A. broke down the Zion Williamson situation. Oh, <laughs> no, boy, he did. With, with some sources. What, awesome. was the, what was the quote? We're not, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> this is exactly, we don't need to be the one. Wait, as for quote, he wasn't going to paraphrase. Yeah. <laughs> I got some messages uh, from some people that were disappointed in the way we were talking about Zion or whatever. You know, they're maybe new to the show. So, hey, this is a professional athlete. Conditioning is a part mm-hmm. of sport, especially whenever it's a cardiovascular sport and it's an advantage. Like he is letting down his teammates, and his team has told him that. So it's not like we're talking about a random human here. No. We what well, that's not what now there's a conversation for that that some people have that think maybe it should take place because it's not health safe, all that stuff. Sure. But when we're talking about a professional athlete and their team is saying, yeah. like, hey. We need to, we're just, we're just covering sport at that That's particular right. point. Yep. And with that being said, we would like to see a fucking Zion. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Yeah, resurgence. That would be awesome. He's still balling right now. Oh, yeah. That's but, the thing about it. But if he doesn't 
address this like now. Like he is, he's going to be out of the league in you could see three it. to four years. Just go to any restaurant in New Orleans. That's what Stephen A. Smith says. Okay, that's the quote. Uh, kind of. Yeah, and Zion said it himself. I saw him on uh, Gill's Arena. So yeah. They asked him about it straight up. It's yeah. Kind of like wasn't necessarily a formal interview, but he, you know, it was Mike he was, was on yeah. the show. He was like, man, it's hard, man. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's tough, man. And like to your point. First three words you hear when you get in the league pretty early on in your career, be a pro. And that's a part of it. Taking care of yourself, being accountable, especially when you are the guy that we're building this team around. You're number one overall pick. One of, we thought, would be the faces, one of the young faces of the league once LeBron goes off. Been paid. Got to get together. A lot. And I'm a guy that got fat. I mean, like, you know, I had to lose. I, it got to a point where my metabolism stopped. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I don't want to change up anything. It's really working for me. So I'll continue to just hammer Every pizza available, <laughs> every wing what? available, maybe 10, 20, 30 beers. What? And I'll just do that. You, you, know? were, you were making 40 million a year. That's how this works. No, I, but I was making a couple yeah. million. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was getting, I was grossly overpaid yeah. for what I was doing and nowhere near good enough to be in that mindset. But then all of a sudden you like, Find the thing. I was like, I need to fucking. All right. Am I just gonna waste this entire opportunity here? And then when I get in shape, it's like, oh, the best I was. Like, everything got better. Yeah. Everything got better, and that's happened in the past for a lot of different sports and athletes. And it's like we just hope Zion's the next one. You know, AJ. We just hope he's the next. He is. one That chooses. He to can be. be. He yeah. can be. What is it? What do coaches say? I mean, D butts, hundred percent, spot on. Be a professional. Like, be a pro. That's obviously a big part of it when you're. Counting on your body as a huge part of what you do for your job, 82 games a year. But, you know, the old cliche, like, control what you can control. You can control your attitude, your effort. That's one. You can also can control what comes in and out of your body, too. We know that. You still are able to do that, which yeah. is crazy. You're militant when it comes to that. Legit. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I like yeah, pizza. Not when it comes to, like, eating and all that stuff. I'm not crazy about that. I had, like, a Cadoba burrito one time. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat whatever I want to eat. Yeah, that's no problem. I, I do. I eat much, many more things I think than you believe. Okay. For some reason. Yeah, just every time we see you, it's yeah. the same exact thing. Aaron's out. party. Boom. What did he well, have on his plate? Grilled chicken. That was it. Was no, it rice? There they had half. They had. I love chicken and rice. That's one of my favorite meals. Yeah. No uh, it's your only meal. It's your chickens. favorite meal. Yeah, probably. It's your, it's your only meal. We've. That's no. the only meal I've seen you eat. We yeah. saw him eat like fifteen eggs once. Yeah, I didn't see that. At, at I eat those wings on the plane before. Those little wings they'll put up. I kill those things with Ty a few times. And you? I've never seen you eat any of those wings. Nope. Nope. Yeah, so the, um, yeah, no, the, sh the shark board. Yeah. I've seen him oh, go yeah. into the shark oh, board. Oh, I'll yep. kill a shark board. You know that. Yeah, if there's any like cheese. basic cheese, I'll kill the shark board. Okay, so gr this is not a bad thing, by the way. We're just complimenting your discipline, especially yeah. with what we're learning now publicly with Zion. Like, <laughs> this dude, how old are you now? Uh, almost 40, 39 years old. Wow. Okay, so this dude at 39 years old, how long you been retired? I think like six, six seven. Years. Is it this seventh? Is this the seventh year, sixth year, probably? I'm not sure. Maybe. Hey, congrats. Yeah. Hell yeah. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Still only grilled chicken, rice. That's it. And if there's no other option, I guess I'll eat fucking cheese and whatever meats you got on this shark board. Yep. But as soon as we hit ground, I'm door dashing, grilled chicken, and rice. I want no fucking flavor on top of it either. <laughs> no. He's, he eats like a bodybuilder. Yeah. It, like, this is probably how you ate while <laughs> no. you're playing, too. Is this, were you very. Yeah, but I'm, I'm yeah. lucky that I have so, yeah. very, my palate is very uh, elementary. Like, very, yeah. like, I don't like, I don't like fancy stuff at all. I don't like, I don't need a whole lot of it. Yeah, me neither, but yeah. like, pizza is a pretty elementary. I love pizza. I love pizza. I will always eat pizza. Well, more time. No, you won't. No, no, you won't. You Not every time it's available. I'm saying I will always eat pizza, though. For the rest of your life, there will be a time. Yeah, like I'm never that guy. Say, oh, I'm never drinking Pepsi again. No, absolutely. I love Mountain Dew. I love Pepsi. I love pizza. All of it. But one day a week, one day a month. You can't, I'm not going to eat it every single day. I wouldn't feel great doing it every day. See, that's the discipline, though. Right? Yeah, that is right. a discipline that not everybody is able to have. And you're ultra disciplined, which is why you look like a refrigerator when you're standing in a picture next to us <laughs> mm -hmm. and Shane Gillis. Exactly. Right. That is, it pays off. And for Zion, you add a little bit of that discipline, it'll probably pay off. Nah, he needs a lot of it. And that's the thing. That's, that's part What's of it. No, no, legit, no, that's part of being a pro. Because some people, everybody, you know, not You're the right. same. Some people can go out and fucking drink and be out till 2, 3 in the morning, show up and practice and be full speed. And you, maybe you need a good seven hours of sleep and you can't drink the night before. Like, that's a part of being a pro, figuring out what works for you. He's not, he doesn't need a little... I heard you mention 
maybe just a guy you're playing six figures to just smack shit out of it. Like he needs some mm -hmm. shit like that. <laughs> okay. Straight yeah. up. Well, like or chef, mm -hmm. personal yeah. chef, mm -hmm. 24 hour call. He's you got a little bumper signs. Yes, something. Somebody. Like, I mean, come on. New Orleans, that's a tough place. They're eating AJ. Like kings. The bumpus hans? Yeah. Or they're eating nothing. I mean, we gotta check the ribs. Yeah, sounds like nothing. Because normally there's after food, you know? Yeah, true. Hire Emerald. I have Emerald making Gossie? nice healthy meals. Emerald. Is he from New Orleans? Yeah, he's a big New Orleans mm -hmm. guy. Saying. That's what we're talking about. A lot of chefs down there. And Stephen talked to all of them. Stephen A. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's go to some other reactions. That was a good wrap up. Look at us. Yeah. There you go. Came in <laughs> with a horse. Apple ended mm -hmm. with a horse. That's right. There Bingo. Boom. Bang. Pow. Die together. Trojan War Zion conversation. Suck it. Let's go to some overreactions from around the internet. This morning, I said, good morning, beautiful people. We have arrived at another fantastic overreaction Monday. And a lot of shit happened. Mm -hmm. Why don't you let us know how you feel and just use the hashtag. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact. But. End up being the number one trend in the United States on X and on Twitter. We appreciate everybody that participated. That's crazy to see. I want to let you know whenever we see that. Mm -hmm. It it's is cool. bananas. And I couldn't even imagine people that don't know our program or don't follow the sports world hitting that and being like, what the, how the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> it's sports, baby. And it's Overreaction Monday. This is from Karthik. Vangela. Yep. Great. Nailed it. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but Mike McCarthy's appendix might have been holding the Cowboys hmm. back. The play calling was sublime, and all three phases were playing ball. This is the year of the Cowboys. Dak MVP and Jerry is going to get one more Lombardi. Now, we don't know what's going to happen next year, said Karthik. No. Mm -hmm. Or if Jerry's still going to, we have no idea. No. We have no clue what's going to take place, but this is the year they go on a run. AJ, do you believe that? Do you agree with that? And how about Big Mike? Losing his appendix on Wednesday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Appendicitis on Wednesday. Appendix surgery. Surgery. Mm -hmm. Get that thing out of there. We've heard about it because they yeah. always say, hey, you could die from this. Oh, yeah. If this stuff you're poisoning yourself from within pretty much, which is the worst kind, you feel terrible, you do this. He's back. On Sunday, calling his best game. What a superhuman you got over there. Yeah, I didn't, like, you couldn't tell. He seemed to be moving well. Everything was as normal. Like, you didn't know he probably, how many stitches he probably still had in him or what was going on. But isn't this a game you feel like the Cowboys, yeah, I understand. I don't ever want to put too much on regular season games, but this was a big test for them. Everyone, like Stephen A., people just say, all right, Cowboys are eventually, when it, when it matters, primetime situation, they're going to lay an egg. They they absolutely – I think they felt that pressure going into that game yesterday. They know they knew how big of a win it could be for them, and I think Jerry's up there. They're showing him. He's excited. Big Mike's feeling great in the sideline. I think it was a big, like, step forward for this Cowboys team and their confidence. Was Micah sick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Symptoms, yep. yeah, because what Jerry said to him in the tunnel on the way to the locker room is hilarious. <laughs> Jerry still has his fastball, mm -hmm. still has his delivery, still has his moxie. Here's him talking to Micah after the big-time win. <laughs> sick, sick my ass because <laughs> whenever they quote it sick my ass Micah mm -hmm. you know that reads differently yes yeah. it yeah. does doesn't mm -hmm. it oh yeah uh -huh. Come. sick my ass Micah okay <laughs> reads a little bit differently mm -hmm. than what it sounds because whenever you hear it oh it's like his delivery. Yeah, sick my ass. Yeah, Michael. okay. So he's talking shit to Mike mm -hmm. right there. Jerry still got it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Big time. Jerry Mike still so got good. it. Mike is so good. So good. Ridiculously good. But to AJ's point, I don't want it to put too much on uh, a regular season win. And I, when we were coming up, from when I first started watching ball, like Cowboys were kind of like, that was that was the pinnacle. Nice. That was like almost like the Patriots when you were a mm -hmm. kid. And it's been a long time since they've made these, made a real playoff run. So they're still in the category of I got to I got to see it to believe it. Fifteen straight at home. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, that is uh, phenomenal, if you will. You want to say something about? Uh, it? I was just thinking about it. Is this the worst time to have a one seed for the NFC because you're getting either the Cowboys or the Eagles in that second week? Well, the Eagles. Remember, a lot of people have quit on them. I they assume have, there's yeah. one coming up. Oh, yeah. uh, about <laughs> the Eagles. Yeah. Let's go to another overreaction here. This is from Anthony. There you go. <laughs> Ferrari, hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but the Eagles are fucking frauds. Sirianni needs to go back to planting seeds because this team fucking stinks, <laughs> to your point. Yeah, there you go. Uh, AJ, Anthony Ferrari Whoa. has had it, pal. Yeah. Isn't it crazy how it can, we can go week to week and views can change very, very drastically, whether we're crown them champs or we're going to write them off and say they're horrendous. Now, I understand that the Eagles have 
have worried some diehard Eagles fans for a couple weeks now at least. But, no, I can't write the Eagles off, but I do. I bet there's a there's a handful of uh, Philly fans that feel this way, huh? Ty, a lot of Eagles fans saying there's something similar here. Oh, yeah, a lot of this today. But it has kind of been the – like because uh, Shefty comes on and says how Brian Johnson is like one of the hot names for – not on the uh, internet. Head, head coaching. Uh, not on the internet. Yeah, exactly. Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, Eagles Ooh. Eagles fans have been saying like oh. all year, like, hey, our offensive coordinator fucking sucks. Our defensive coordinator fucking sucks. Like this isn't the same team as it was last year. But it has really hit a fever pitch the last two weeks. Yeah, they lose both offense coordinator and defense coordinator. Winning does that to you. The Eagles obviously have won a lot of games this year with brand new guys at both positions. Can they find it again? Sounds like the Philly fans don't believe that it will be the case. Let's go to another overreaction from Mitch. Mitch, this ain't noisy bag. No, no, no. not noisy bag. No, it ain't noisy. It's a quiet quiet bag. Did you see that thing that has been invented? I saw it on Instagram. It's not a bag, uh, but it's um, uh, basically a see-through cloak. Oh, I have seen this, yes. Or an invisible cloak. Mm -hmm. You just kind of put it in front of you and you're invisible all of a sudden. Hmm. Have you heard about this? No. Yeah, that video is old, too. That freaks me the fuck out. (laughs) Freaks me the fuck out. Is it mirrors? No, it's it's it's, it's, uh, it's an invisibility it's cloak. Yeah, it's an invisibility cloak. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It might have been AI. Harry Potter. No, that, that, that's an old video. I, they've had that technology for a little while. Okay, I don't know how I got here. Cloak and technology. I guess bag talks got me. Yeah, that was the guy. Yeah, that was the guy that was doing it. Him. Mm-hmm. Look at that shit. And they got it over here. Boom. Active Boom. camo. Look at his fucking legs are gone. They're pretty crazy. <laughs> This isn't even the video I was talking about. No, me either. He was out in public. Yeah, he was like in the woods. Yeah, in the woods. It's a screen. What do we mean? What are we doing? No, it was... See- <laughs> oh, uh, that, God, this not, is not the that, video. That's not the video for it. Yeah, this is not... There, here it is. Oh, here, oh, it is. Oh. here it is. Let's see. Smoke and mirrors. Ready? Oh, oh shit. Oh, Loser. Oh, no. He just wanted to make sure people knew it wasn't staged. Yeah. Let me go and make a mistake. Okay. Yeah, right. So what are we doing here? Screen, Sounds screen. Refl- reflective. Boom. What? What are we doing here? That. It's reflective. You tell me. Hide and seek fucking champ. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I'm not buying it. What aren't you? You think it's AI? It's something. It ain't real. What year is that video from? It's an old video, but it's not from like 10 plus years. It is relatively recent. It's not a bag. It's a cloak, but not noisy bag. Maybe think of cuz. Yep. Because I saw that and I said, holy shit. AI maybe, but also you you just get down on a ball and toss that fucker. Yeah. Inside man. Right over top of you. Do whatever you want. You just, whatever. I mean, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. You just, just got to sit. You just got to sit still. Rob a bank. Can you imagine driving, plopping that over you and driving people? People would freak the what fuck. What the fuck How? is this guy? Yeah, Can you see through it? Crazy. Yes. Yeah. I think that. I don't know. We don't, I know, don't, know. We don't know. We don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say know. yes. We don't know. That, we're getting to a weird time. Let's okay. get one. Let's order, be, order me one. There. there could be a motherfucker right, right there. there. Mm-hmm. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> right there. No idea. Yeah, all right, let's get to the not noisy bags thoughts. Hashtag I don't want to overreact. But, but we haven't seen a dynasty collapse this tragic since the Roman Empire. Oh! The Kansas City Chiefs are never going to recover. This is the end of the Mahomes, Kelsey, Reed era. Future MVP, Tyreek Hill, doesn't line up offsides mm. in that situation. Absolutely Tragic. Kadarius Tony was supposed to be the next Tyreek Hill. I think that's probably an accurate assessment there at the end of that particular one. Is, but they could have won that game, and it's a whole different conversation. They could have. But with the offense not looking as good this year, is anyone talking about because Eric Bieniemy's not there? Yeah, that's a full. That, I saw a lot of those tweets last night. Yeah. Like, hey, Bieniemy probably helped out a little bit more than what everybody was giving credit. Now, Washington is well, Washington is, and they saw some success on the offensive yeah. side, and maybe Bienemy's clot will bump up. Or I'll is, throw him for a bunch of yards. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I don't know. They, everybody says it's the weapons that are out there. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. I, can, I mean, he probably wouldn't get the same recognition or thought about, especially after this year, but Juju was also a massive loss for them because he was their big, like, third and five, third and six guy. And then for you guys, what happened? He's just been absolute dynamite as far as like... <laughs> Especially as of late. Yeah, yeah. as far Last as just week. like not playing goes, he's been fucking lights. No, no, no. Playing great as of late. He's been... Oh, yeah, he played great on Thursday night. No, yeah, as of late. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Nice his, revenge, his last man. game was yeah, his, his game, best game. Yeah. It's on how you word it. Yeah. Oh, he's so, on streak, this guy. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Three catches. He is. He's about, to put, he's about to put together his two best weeks of his career. Especially with that guy I sat next to coaching. I don't... You hear him talk, and you know his resume. It's like, how did we get to this point? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone. I don't envy. Probably the quarterback. Nor should you. No, I don't. 
I don't at all. Yeah, it was AJ, a, they said I was ambushing him. Did you hear that? That's what people said. Not even. I mean, it's not even close to an ambush situation. I know we, you don't do that, but at some point, though, after how many rings did they win there? To where Kraft and Belichick are like, all right, man, like, there's no, there had to be a moment where you think there's no way I'm ever not going to coach here. Like, I'm going to leave on my own if I do leave. I wonder if that's ever crossed Bill's mind that it could, hey, I could get pushed out of there. You hear there's Robert no Kraft's answer about loyalty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how long Bill's been there and all his businesses. We like people to stick around and be around a long time. I wonder if that was a little subtle. Yeah, that, that made me feel great. Yeah. That made me feel like, okay, so he's going to give Bill the last year of his contract. Like, he gave him a two-year extension. Why would why would they not? Well, I am once again. I, okay, cool. Bill Belichick, one of the most savage business people of all time. Mm-hmm. Would he go into a contract year ever? I don't know. I don't it, Maybe, hopefully, because then we get to see him maybe rebuild a fucking yeah. franchise again yeah. with money. A and, lot of it, and a high pick. Yep. But is that what Kraft wants? Wait, who know? Hey, I don't envy Robert Kraft's position. No, Kraft. Let's go to another overreaction, shall we? This is from Peter Lafleur. Ooh. At Matthew Lombardi, Lombardo. Sorry. Hashtag I don't want to overreact, but, but Joe Flacco is back to peak Baltimore. Joe and the Browns are a legit playoff threat. You want to ask Ryan? Clark about Joseph Flacco. I did. Feels like you're all in on old Joe. Oh, yeah. I said it out there, and I was not being facetious at all. I kind of want to see the Browns win the Super Bowl. I would <laughs> love to see Joe Flacco as a Cleveland Brown. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's shutting me up a little bit. It is. Yeah. It is. Because I, I love Joe Flacco. You know, I mean, Delaware Blue Hen, you know, mm-hmm. just of course. no one better. Hey, Panther. Nobody wanted him this year. Nobody wanted him. Hey, retire. Go to the XFL. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. How about I just go out and throw for fucking 300 yards and three touchdowns every time I lace up my cleats? How about that? How's From that? the couch. How's that sound? Straight Denver? off the couch Straight university. Office. And it's crazy that we're all also starting to see Browns fans go crazy over this guy when you have Deshaun Watson, a guy that they just paid $230 million, and he's just kind of becoming an afterthought right before our eyes. It's just crazy. I mean, yep. It's, yep. it's wild. What happens if Joe Flacco does win? You give him a five-year deal. You have to. And the Watson trade worked. This guy was flying spirit to this fucking workout (laughs) with the Browns. Get to the back of the plane, big six foot six guy, (laughs) professional football player. What the hell? He's look. He's looking at this balding fellow right here and saying, "I hope I don't have to fucking sit next to that guy." (laughs) Those seats. Those seats appear to be first class. Hopefully, he is sitting first class. That looks like a Delta flight. I hope so. I hope so too. So tall. I bet he's just looking at people around the plane like, yep, could tough. fucking spin it to that person if they were my wide receiver. Yep. 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 Could score a touchdown with, <laughs> with you. her. Could score. That could not with that fucking guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> can't make it happen. Joe's just thinking, looking around. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I, I can't catch. Touchdown. Yeah. Touchdown. Yeah. That's going right Deep through his ball fucking P.I. <laughs> yep. She's taking some yak, I think, if mm-hmm. I get it in her hands. Got to have him run a fade. That guy sucks. I don't want him on my I mean, team. Throwing tuds on fourth and three. I mean, Stefanski having some balls as well. Yeah, hey. Stefanski loves him. He coaches his ass off, too, Stefanski. Yeah. See him on the sideline, too, after they get that win? Mm-hmm. His reaction was awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah, It was awesome. It was like real emotion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like his quarterback. Hope, I mean, hopefully Flacco doesn't hurt his shoulder or something because then Stefanski going to make him throw it 75 times. And no, might no, not be able completely to different it. situation, feels like. Hopefully. Yeah, it does. We'll, we'll see. What are you talking about, by the way? Just so people know, you're talking about the Baker when when Baker. who just led the Bucks over a big time NFC South win over the Falcons, tied for first. Hey, that division. Oh my God, lightning, lightning in a bottle. That division. Derek Carr back again. Wolverine yeah. blood. Yeah, his teammates love him. Yeah, I was just gonna say line. McCoy is real pumped about it. They dominate. What's that, Terrace? Nah, he, well, they take the bullet for that guy. They, they, they have been, I think, for a while. <laughs> they shoot the bullet too. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> they would. They would. <laughs> I think uh, he held on the ball a little bit longer than what one guy thought he should have been holding on mm-hmm. the ball for, and yeah. I think he told him to throw a fucking ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. And Derek was like, hey, relax, all right? I'll take the hit. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know what he said when he got up. He might have got up and be like, fucking block somebody, oh, baby. Yeah. He'd be able to throw. Uh, he chirps his teammates a lot, and I think they are sick and fucking tired. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen an offensive lineman have to hold another offensive lineman back from the quarterback. You mean they were there? Like, on the field. Manning, on the field. Yeah. I was about to say Peyton Manning. Yeah, on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, on a different. That's different. We're having a conversation. We we yeah. assume cameras are on us. Yeah, strategizing. I'm pissed off. You're pissed Fucking off. Block Jeff off the like. <laughs> I mean, he has. 15 yards to get yeah, off the field. Right there. Here. Nice fucking block, guys. I'll fucking take your head Good off. Good job. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah, bitch. Huh? Oh, man. Oh, buddy. Look at those tats Ooh. on McCoy, too. What a fucking beast, bro. That Ram check? Yeah, there he is. Whoa, easy. Jeez. Easy. 
like all the way off the field. You ever seen this? I love that Derek's not back Captain, far back Captain, down either. Captain Jameis oh, comes yeah. in. Yeah. 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 Come on, Jameis. Boys, boys. Whoa. I have not seen Jameis this angle. This is the angle. Let's hold on. <laughs> that's the center, too. McCoy's the center. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so usually yes. They're together a lot. Mm -hmm. He's got a C on his chest. Can't throw you. I can't block. Throw the fucking ball. Throw the fucking ball. I wonder if you can block somebody. It, bitch. Oh, my God. Fucking one fucking time. Hey, 74 <laughs> using a good outside arm. Easy, easy. Good oh, leverage. Whoa. Good outside arm. Yep. Yep. I love He's it. out on a screen almost. Perfect. Mm -hmm. this perfect. Makes me like the Saints more. Mm. Hey, what, though? Derek Carr, Trevor Lawrence. That's unbelievable. Tough motherfuckers. Right hey, here. Trevor. Wow. What? Unbelievable. What? Go. Derek Carr, he took a lot of hits early. That first quarter, Derek Carr was on the ground a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were some heavy shots, and I'm like, well, we're going to try his shoulder, back, head. What? Yep. Neck. <laughs> what? You name it. Just hit. They're, <laughs> yes. try, they're trying him right now. Brian, yeah. Brian, there's a lot of videos of Burns and the boys on top of Derek Carr. And just a week ago, he was out for his shoulder, his back, what? and his head. That's mm -hmm. right. It was the shoulder, the, the, the report. Back, that guy heals. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. Him and Trevor. He heals. Jameis Winston's not happy about it. No. He said, you, man, you hurt three fucking, three fucking body parts. What do you mean I'm not playing? Derek, this is what happens. You should have seen one time I was a Raider. I popped my hip flexor out of my fucking body. Yeah, it hurt. Thursday night. Off the phone. No it's games. Solid. No games missed. I actually took a staple gun. Yep. Boom. Let's <laughs> fucking back out there. Trevor Lawrence, same thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that was absurd. That dude's ankle was Trevor's sideways. running around. He's running. Yeah. Like, he was out running around. Now, he's he threw fighting. three picks. Not great. Right. Well, and I'm assuming he's not exactly thrilled that his ankle healed as fast as it healed for his season-long stats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He picked up yeah. three picks in one particular afternoon in Cleveland, which is a tough place to play against that defense. That defense there versus the defense elsewhere, yeah. very different. Now, what are they going to be with Joe Flacco maybe having a lead? Ooh. Who knows? Look out. Who knows what they'll be like. But you're right. Trevor Lawrence rolling to his left, running, throwing, off balance. It's like, this guy, what the? What he Same high ankle sprain that every other human had? I wonder how he did it. He might just be special. Yeah, that's twice. That was crazy. That's twice just this year, let alone the one from last year that was recircled. That, that son of a bitch was. Oh, yeah. It was bad. Are there different grades of high ankle sprains? Yeah. I would assume there is. I assume. Yeah. But a high ankle sprain is all the grades Always. higher than a low ankle sprain, right? Yeah. It's worse. They're yeah, they're always like, worse, right? They're acting like it's four to six weeks no matter what. Yeah, that's what we – I was like, yeah. well, this guy's out for at least three weeks. Yeah. Even, if he, even if he heals quickly, yeah, he's not going to get the tight rope. Yeah, that was the thought, though. I was like, oh, I'll mm -hmm. probably need it. And then hmm. – Nope. nope. Then, nah, I'm going to play on something. High ankle sprains are less common than other ankle sprains and typically more severe. Sprains are classified in three grades. Grade one, the ligament is stretched, mm -hmm. but not torn. Grade two, the ligament is partially torn. Grade three, the ligament is completely torn. Yeah. They, they – Yeah. Shout out Nationwide Children's Hospital. Shout out to Trevor Lawrence, too. Yeah. yeah. Dog. And tough Derek Carr. Good to see the tough guys. Good to see quarterback tough guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Let's go to another overreaction, shall we? Patrick Corey at Patrick Corey 55. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but, but the Detroit Lions are fugues. What a way to build hope in a city that hasn't seen good football in a long time, just to slowly resort mm. back to the same old Lions. Lions. Breaks my heart. MCDC, you better write the ship, big guy. Can't be losing to Chicago. Foxy, Patrick Corey speaking for all you, huh? Is that what's happening? Yeah, MCDC, shot clock is on. Is that what? No, yeah, no, 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 no. You better write the ship, he said. Big Jesus. Guy. Big guy. Dude, it's crazy, though. Patrick is speaking for the majority of Lions fans. They're pissed. I don't get it. We Just two years ago was MCDC's first year, and he flipped this thing around so mm -hmm. fast. I'm not losing hope. I refuse to lose hope. Too this is not the same old Lions. This is the brand new Lions. So I'm not worried one bit. Still top of the NFC North. Still nine and four. I will say Keep that. saying that all <laughs> day. All right. I hope so. Yep. I like the brand oh. new Lions. Lions. Hold on. But it was a little scary because we saw some same old. Yep. Well, it'll be nice, too. This will be like a test for MCDC to prove if he's like an extremely good coach. Because if he can flip this thing back around, uh, of course. and then we win a playoff game, which is all I have been asking for since sixth grade, one playoff game, then we're good to go. I appreciate the fact that um, he hasn't proved it yet. No. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Most recent game. He can still be a good football coach. You turn this one around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nine and four. What did Chuck say? Like, out of nowhere, he just said, like, Aiden Hutchinson up there in Detroit, he's all by himself, so he's getting triple teams. Oh, like, yeah. He was talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the conversation about, like, Aiden Hutch is good, great player, mm -hmm. but he is – he's playing a different 
game than every other defensive end or outside linebacker out there. 100%. He got double teamed yesterday and still got a sack. I saw lines. It was awesome. Lot. I saw a few Lions fans chirping him, though, too, because he didn't keep contain on the field the rushing t- touchdowns. Yeah. They were not happy it's with crazy. him. It's crazy. He is huge. Oh, yeah. Massive. That'll get lost in a conversation. He was so fucking big whenever I saw him at game day and at Super Bowl. You forget, like, oh, these are avatars. He's yeah. a pro. He's yeah. a pro. Yeah. 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 I've seen his day. Yeah. Also tough, too. He's not going to become 350. No. Mm-hmm. No. Might no. be time to dr- drop Jack Campbell to the other edge. Oh. Mike at 2.0. Oh. Yes. Just saying. I, I might agree. be time. Is that his thing, getting to the passer? Could be. Could be. <laughs> He plays middle linebacker, so now he didn't do a whole lot of it at Iowa. But they had Van Ness there, another mm-hmm. first-round pick. So, but maybe it's time. I mean, you look at his combine stats. Woo. Boy's an athlete. That boy is an Good athlete. Go. They have him in coverage way too much. Way too much. I mean, they should. Th- that's a perfect example of a team looking back at the trade deadline. Like, man, Sweat and Chase Young. Yeah, they could have gone after one of them. Maybe paid one of them with Hutch. Sweat and ends up getting a hundred mil. That team. Hey, yeah, coming are, up. They've kind of Kirk Herb, since yeah. he's been there. Kirk, he literally, since he's got there, the def- Kirk Herb Street, whenever he was calling that Thursday night football game with them, he was like, he was sending me texts like, I like this Chicago team. And I'm like, Kirk, <laughs> you sure? Don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, like, you're a second year on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Don't be coming out here saying, like, I'll tell you what, after talking to the team mm-hmm. and seeing what they're doing, I like the Chicago Bears. He was like, I do, though. Like, I actually do. And I'm like, I don't, I haven't talked to anybody up there. I have no idea if that's the case. I'm just watching from outside in. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a potential total rebuild up there. New quarterback, new coach, new GM. There's already chatter about Jim Harbaugh coming in there. I mean, now's not the time to say, you know, I really like the culture that's going on here. He's like, I do. Like, everybody I talk to, I really like it. And then if you start looking at how they've played, it's like, holy shit now. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Take a look at who they've played, too. Oh, this is a Reddit situation with the Lions. Yeah, but they're streaming. the Panthers. Oh, no. Uh, Good ball club. Lost to the Lions. Beat the Vikings 12 to 10. Uh, so and then beat team. the Lions. Good win. Good, good, win. good win. Couple good wins. Two, I mean, two yeah. The, really, the only team that the Bears play where it's like, uh, who look who they play is the Panthers. So, four of their other wins. It's like, well, they beat four teams. Yeah. The Panthers. That, that's that's a football team in the NFL. Still? Mm-hmm. Boy. Hey. Watching them. I'm not saying it. They I'll, might be I'll one of it. the worst teams of all time. You want me to say it? I will. I don't know if we need to say it. Okay. There's a lot of people saying, you don't know ball if you're saying. Yeah. Who'd they beat? The- Texas. Houston. Texas. Texas. Oh. At home. Let's go to another overreaction. It's not, now it's not the time. Okay. Yep. We need wait. to watch more. We'll yep. wait. We don't need to judge anything. But there's a couple things that happen where you're like, hmm. well, I don't know. I don't think my eyes are deceiving. That feels like a different. You see the fourth down Hail Mary? See, had to throw that shit out of bounds. What you doing right now? Had to throw that shit. You had to throw that out of bounds. What you doing right now? You had to, because you were going to get hit. But it's fourth down, and everyone's running, (laughs) running straight to the end zone. But hey, again, more time, more time, more time, more time, more time time. from from the offensive line. This year doesn't count. The OC just got rid of the offensive coordinator. The OC doesn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Let's get to next year. Yeah, the OC's wife said, "We're already fucking fired. We're only here because we're the only ones that know the plan." So it's a prison sentence. You know something we don't know? Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. And then deleted. How many picks do they have next year? Too zero. They got they got none in the first round. Um, Who's got the OC though? It's not a very you enticing know, it job. We all go to Chicago, baby. Chicago. Chicago. I mean, they're playing themselves into yeah, the fifteenth upper pick. echelon. Of, yeah. Yeah. They already got the number tens one. now. Michael Cole, noted Jets fan. Yeah. Texted me yesterday. The Jets can't even fucking lose right. Like <laughs> we need to lose right now. We were out of this thing. Aaron's not coming back. We're and then you got Zach Wilson playing the best football he's ever fucking played. He's, like, yep. he's no look pass. I mean, he's putting balls in. Bucket. He was awesome. He slinging it. Zach Wilson was awesome. He's like, yeah, great to see, but like, we're fucking out. Like, what are we? Now's not the time. Now's Boy, not did he have some zip on the ball yesterday? Did he? Did didn't he? Good boy. He, he, he's a sweet. Boy. He is a he sweet is boy. boy. Played himself into a new contract with the Jets. They should pick up his fifth year option. <laughs> he's a sweet boy. He is a sweet. Look good, man. He, he looked he's a good. good football player. Confident, but he was zip I mean, on that. Oh. I mean, Wilson ended up with a hundred. Oh, that connection. That's that. That's a ball work that we. That ball Dude. right there, shot out of cannon. Yeah, oh. shot out of cannon. Just vintage Third BYU. 12. Oh, that's spin a, out of pressure. Cross body BYU pro Ooh. day. Ah. Give me that to Garrett Wilson. Boom. Boom. 
God. This is in a rainstorm, too, right? Yeah. 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 How did oh, yeah. Cobb catch that? Well, Randall Cobb is 30 years old, and that's all he does. Zero Four touchdowns. Poop. He's only 30. Do we know? Or 33, I'm sorry. Do we know that? Or is he 30? No, he's, he's yeah, 33. Yeah, definitely 33. 33. Do we know that? We know he's 33? I, I thought not. he was older. I thought he was 38. Yeah. No, I thought he was he older. Came in the league, he came in the league at like barely 20 years old, I think. God, what uh, a freak he was back yeah. then. Oh, Still God. is, obviously, scoring touchdowns in 2020. First play of his career, he took a kickback like 105 yards for a touchdown. It was eyes, too. Yeah. It was fucking eyes. Right into your soul. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got to talk to him for the first time at Aaron's party there. Mm-hmm. He knows. He knows. He knows. I like that. He knows. What a stud. Yeah. Beast. He was so – like he used to kick return, punt return. Yeah, he's a quarterback. Slot receiver, quarterback, 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 in, quarterback in, in college, he played yeah. quarterback. What a freak, dude. Yeah, athlete. Hey, you done good, South, Randall. South Paul. Ready to go, Kyle. Hey, Randy. Done good. Let's go to another overreaction, shall we? This is from way out, dude. Hashtag I don't want to overreact, but, but – Circle the fucking wagons. The Bills are going on a run. When you only see the negatives, you forget that Josh Allen is the best player on planet Earth and the The moon. moon. Scariest AFC team. Beat Kansas City and Arrowhead and already blew out Miami. Let's fucking go. Hashtag Bills Mafia. D-Butt. D-Butt. How do you feel about it? Uh, You know, I I wouldn't say they're the scariest team. Wouldn't say he's the best quarterback. Love Josh Allen. Did blow out the Dolphins early, but they're in playoff mode right now, so they're going to give everyone their best shot, but... No, nah, it's a few teams. Obviously, I would put still uh, over them in the AFC. Well, best player on planet Earth is awesome to hear that. Yeah. I, I like the Bills fans are thinking that about Josh. Mm-hmm. First you know, Because that's super positive. Yes. Yeah. That's good vibes. Those are good things for Josh Allen to hear. And, you know, he broke down the team at the end, and Sean McDermott did his thing. Well, four inches, five, six inches away from them losing that game. <laughs> Completely different conversation. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But now – I'm happy the fucking Bills are all the way back, too. Absolutely. We like that Bills. We got a lot of friends in that building. Yeah. Happy Con- to see the seemingly the vibes all the way back, AJ. Did you see the the reaction from McDermott on the sideline as soon as he knew like the, they won the yes. game? How he, he went to his knees a little bit, like so much relief. And like, I feel like it wasn't like, hey, here, this is just absolute joy. It's like, oh, my goodness. We needed this one. Long week. For him. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's why when the boys said, we got your back, mm-hmm. I bet you there was. Oh, yeah. You can oh, see no it, question. Yeah. And then whenever Brandon Bean said, this fucking guy's our guy, we got, and that's like a full, as a leader, I assume that is all you're looking for. Yeah. It's like, hey, my crew will go to my defense or whatever. Yeah. And at the end, they did. It was still crazy motivational speech. Yeah, Absolutely. Still absurd. Crazy. So, Absolutely. He's, he's given a lot Absolutely. since then. Yeah. 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 A lot. A lot since then. All been better. <laughs> since then, but that was a wild. And he admitted it was a wild. He did. Hey, wild. I had to reach deep into the wow. back. That was a wild. That was a wild thing to do. All right, let's go to another overreaction, and we'll make our picks. It's from Matt Cervolo. Hashtag, I don't want to overreact, but. but. Brock Purdy is the second coming of Tom Brady. Forget about the Super Bowl this year. The Niners will win five of the next ten Super Bowls with Brock at the helm. Wow. He is the NFL MVP and should win it unanimously. Hashtag, faithful to the Bay. Is that the FTTB rating? Right yes, now? it is. Okay, oh, happy wow. to learn that. Wow. Faithful to the Bay. Great love, to love to know that. Um, yeah, we love Brock. I absolutely love Brock. Yeah, he's so good. If they can keep that team together every year, we're thinking Super Bowl or bust. So, I mean, maybe. Got to win one, though. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got to get that first one. Got to get the first one. one. I, never, I was never able to. I mean, I was on a lot of very good teams. I was rode the coattails of a lot of very good people. There's a lot of very good players that have never won. It's it's hard to fucking win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. It is very hard. Because you can get all the way to the NFC Championship, but then the first quarter, everybody on your team can get hurt. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. happened. That happens to people. And it, it's just, that's football, baby. That's why what mm-hmm. the Patriots did, absurd. Yeah, absurd. You said it early, not realistic. What no, the yeah. Chiefs have done, not realistic. Absolutely not. And I, like you said, you got to give them one. Obviously, they look great on paper. You got to get one. And you got to be not only good, I feel like you got to be lucky. You obviously got to be fortunate with injuries. Some yes. balls got to bounce your way. Plays. Um, you know, some teams, it's, it's any given Sunday. Some teams are just going to show up. It could be the divisional round. We went 14-2 and two one year. Divisional round, we had blew, blown out the Chiefs. Uh, not the Chiefs, the Jets, 45-3 and three on Monday Night Football, maybe three or four weeks before that with the Patriots. Mm-hmm. And then beat us. Sanchez goes into the AFC Championship, so you never know. Yep. Crazy. The NFL. It's absurd. Yep. We appreciate you all overreacting alongside of us. Hell yeah. All right, let's make our picks for this evening. First up, Packers at Giants. Six-point favorites are the Jordan Love-led Packers mm-hmm. on ABC at MetLife Stadium, where Adam Shefty will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Seems like Ryan Clark potentially will be there as well. Mm-hmm. Darius J. Butler. 
the passion paisan, to, Tommy DeVito. You know what? Has inspired a region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has inspired a country. Yeah. Hell yeah. Has inspired a fan base. Mm -hmm. Does the passing Paisan have what it takes tonight to keep this within five and a half points? Wait, did you see him power ranking the Italian foods first? He yeah. did? Yeah, him, him and Bougie. Is it his brother? <laughs> I don't think no. No, no, he's oh. a TikTok guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was some good, that was some good content. <laughs> oh, that's good. They do look similar. Could be his brother. I mean, <laughs> Italians, both Italians, obviously. Ravioli, we're putting that down there at four. Yeah. Okay, ravioli. I do appreciate ra fried ravioli also. Delicious. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Bolognese. Okay, we don't mind that at all. That'd we don't nice. mind that at three. Linguini with clams. Ooh. Okay, I didn't know that's how we're living. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Living pretty good over there in the DeVito in, in cute lasagna at wow. five. Oh. One's got to be. Penne, penne vodka. vodka. All right, I like penne. I like penne. Yeah, a lot. Oh, you don't I, love that list, it feels like. Huh? You don't love that list, it feels like. Uh, you know, fettuccine, not even on, uh, you know, like the. Uh, they uh -oh. they didn't choose the list. It was like whoever set it up was. Oh, they had to rank yeah. it. Like a blind, blind ranking. Rank okay, so ravi ravioli came and they're like, like ravioli. Not going to hate it, it the most. Right. But also, what about, there's, always bread, one. there's always breadsticks, weren't there? Yeah, well, they chose five things. Well, it's because that's number one on what? Oh, exactly. I know. That's why they don't put it on there. I actually drove past uh, Fazoli's the other day, and I just thought, hey, they got piping hot breadsticks in there. Bingo. <laughs> they do. Exactly. <laughs> they got little uh, ravioli bites, I think. Oh, yeah. Really? Little, yeah, I think they've... I think Ooh. so. Yeah, because that's a thing. Whoa. Revolutionary. Like, the, the Fazoli's, everything's a thing. It yeah. is. I didn't know they had Einstein in the kitchen, too. <laughs> well, Einstein, I saw him in a movie. Yes, yeah, he did. Oppenheimer. As mm -hmm. Bull's dad. He was not thrilled about what was going on with Oppenheimer. Not at all. Seems like Einstein had some thoughts. He, it feels like he called it from jump. Einstein knew. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. hey. This is going to end up bad. Yeah. Well, yeah. he did the same thing to him. That's mm -hmm. crazy that Einstein was still alive. I thought that motherfucker was dead with Sun Tzu. So <laughs> dead. Yeah. yeah. E yeah. equals MC squared. That might as well have been 500 BC. Yep. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> I'm when did, what year did he die? I had what no year? idea. I think like 55 or something. I had no Jeez. clue, bro. 1955 is when he died. Good, good point. Wow. Holy shit. Come on. Yes, finally. Is that in that movie at the end? Was it like uh, Albert Einstein would go on to so. die in 1955? I think so. April, April 18th. 18th. Oh, he died on April 18th. 76 years Ooh. old. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. He did some good stuff, Einstein. Yeah, he yes, did. he did. Why don't you be Einstein for us, Darius? And I'm going to pass the pies on in the Giants. Plus six. Plus six. Wow. Plus six. Okay. That's a big time pick, AJ. I did not expect that Ooh. out of Darius. Um, can we see the records for this week between me and AJ? Mm. Ooh, boy. Jesus. <laughs> Boys. Every time. Why is it always like this? <laughs> All right. Sorry, that's why you got two tonight. All right. Yeah, this is a big deal. Yeah. Ooh. Two tonight. All what right. Are you, what are you going with, AJ? Uh, I, I think you may know where I'm leaning on this one, but I just think six is, I don't know. I thought you could possibly be more than six here with how Jordan Love is playing. So give me. Green Bay at minus six on the road. I know they're going to be coming after him, though. I know they're definitely going to be coming after him. No Christian Watson tonight either, which is kind of so. I would have to. Help. I would have to fade AJ on both to win this. Yes. yes. All right, give me the Giants. Don't love it though. By the way, just want to let everybody know I am not on board with this. But this happened with the uh, with the yeah, Bears. usually it helps. Happened with yeah. the Bears. Yeah, especially with how I'm picking. Five, seven, and one. Like, I don't like it. That's good news. <laughs> yeah. Odds are telling me that's mm -hmm. good news, mm -hmm. which I think is going to come into play with Darius's pick if we remember what he said earlier. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. Titans at Dolphins, 14 point spread on Monday night football. Brabel? Dan Orlovsky and Chris Fowler will be on the call they will be breaking it all down alongside Lewis Riddick, I believe. Mm -hmm. Laura Rutledge will be on the sideline. Nice. It'll be in Miami. The stars will be out. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see DJ Khaled walking down the sideline. Oh, Rick Ross. I can't wait to see all of the Miami heroes strutting around doing their thing. What were you going to say, Tone? I always like to bring this up with the Titans. They are 0-6 on the road, and now it's because they lost the Colts last week 4-1 and at home. Okay. Mm. What about you uh. spread? Uh, ATS as an away team, they are one in five, Shit, four and one at home. A different team on, on the road, but Miami is going to be nice. Yeah, you know it's going to be beautiful down there. That's right. 
What's the weather like down there, D-Butt, right now? Nice. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. What's like 70, 80? Uh, I believe it was 73. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Yeah, currently, currently 71 with, you know, just a touch mm. of wind. Yeah. It's 30 some degrees here. Art Basel ah. weekend, though. So. Art Basel. Everyone. Oh, I saw, uh, saw that. Mr. West. Mr. West yeah. was having the time of his life down there. What What is Art Basel? They all look at a bunch of stuff and go, that's art. That's art. Is that what that is? Uh, you know, it's one of those things that um, there is the people that are really just in the art, but it's one of those big network events. People come in to party. People come in and do everything. So I'll pack, man, with a. Uh, Oh yeah, cheetah too. So uh, with who? Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Oh really? Oh, the cheetah. Ever heard of him, Tony? Yeah. yeah. Not a human cheetah. But I give me the Titans. Give me the Titans to cover. Whoa. Hey. That's a lot of points. Whoa. It's a lot of points. Cheetah. Or no, we win. The Dolphins win for sure. You but, better uh, hope all your other teams have it. Exactly. Oh, Gumpy, so that's the trend. That's why he he said that earlier mm -hmm. was gonna happen. Bain himself. Gumpy, one half of the hammer. Down. Cowboys. Two touchdowns is a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I do the uh, with the Dolphins. It's the touchdown parlay: Cheetah, Mostert, plus one ninety. That's the play. Yeah, see. Okay, how about, how about this one though? Here in uh, this particular segment. <laughs> I mean, I would lay yeah. the points, but that's very biased. First Dolphins home game since twenty seventeen, I believe, when Jay Cutler beat Tom Brady. What? First Wait, what? time they, they haven't played at home all year. Monday no, football. Monday Night Football. Oh. football. Yeah, stars are gonna be at. They are. Mm -hmm. Vrabel's gonna. You would think at least put a couple humans on Cheetah. You would think. You would think. You would think. Uh, think. Yeah. Do they have the humans? AJ, what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm liking Tennessee here with those points. I think 14 is a lot. Is Derek Henry back from? Give me the Dolphins. Yep. Minus okay. 14. Hell yeah. Derek right. Henry is back. He had two touchdowns last week. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought okay. he got cast got against. Yeah, he got knocked out. Yeah, Zaire Franklin hit him. Bam. Yeah. He had a couple people this weekend, too. Dude. Zaire is a missile. He is an absolute missile. Yeah, he's coming with bad intentions. He's on offense for that little goal line. I love that. that sweet, yeah. I love everything about it. We, we were tough to watch. <laughs> it is. Of course, we're tough to watch. Yeah. But they're still – Steichen's the guy, so you got to like, be pumped. He is a guy. But, like, punt return or catch the fucking ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least you're going to watch a guaranteed win on Saturday. Talking about the West Virginia Mountaineers? No, I'm talking about Colts Steelers. I like that. <laughs> now the Colts haven't beat Steelers since 2008, but it feels like this is the year. I am so jacked. We were a part of a few of those. Um, yeah. A lot of those. Oof. History. They're, they're bad. That game's going to be awesome. You know what we might play first quarter just to fuck with you guys? Okay. Well, you're not oh, allowed to. Hey, do it. You want to play that song? You come up to New England and ask for it. No, we should let Earth. You guys did not win the song. Yeah, we that did. That was never agreed to. That was part you of the got deal. A, you got a Lombardi. So, yeah, so. And a Mac Jones jersey. But you yep. should play it in the first quarter because I assume it'll be mostly Steelers fans there Saturday. That is a good point. <laughs> You're talking about the Lotto, uh -huh. Lucas Oil Stadium? Lotto. Tony. No, oh, Tony. 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 No, right. They were smart. They switched it to a Saturday super late in the season so they think Steelers fans couldn't travel out. Well, it's not about traveling out. It's, once again, it's about Steelers fans in the area. There's a lot. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to be there. Michigan. I expect that lower bowl to be filled with black and gold. <laughs> lower bowl? Yes. No. You're talking about cheap no, seats. You're, do, you remember, do you remember when Cleveland came to town? They were playing for a Super Bowl at the time. It wasn't just cheap <laughs> seats. Nope. Deshaun was still hurt already, and they weren't in the cheap seats. Miles Garrett took that thing over, too. Yeah. People were flocking because they heard he was going to do that. Well, mm -hmm. Pittsburgh has a guy. Saturday, 4 o'clock. Can't hey, wait. TJ's in concussion. Oh, Ooh, geez, that was God. pretty obvious, by the way. Yeah, like, right away. Like, very obvious that was a concussion, and the way he was playing, it's like that guy's concussed. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I respect when guys play through it, though. I, me too, but also like independent, whatever. What that are you was doing? pretty clearly a fuck. Put a visor on him. He's good. <laughs> he did have that. I can't see. That was the cleanest shot. Oh, his light, his lights really hurt my eyes. Oh my god! Can we? Can you tell him to turn it down? <laughs> can we not do renegade? This sound too loud. loud. Whoa! <laughs> I can't keep my balance at all. Let's, I feel like I got no strength. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's not supposed to be funny. TJ, we're not laughing at you. No. We're laughing with the situation that yes. was. Yes. As we're watching along, TJ's not playing that good. Huh? What's going on? Brian Time game. What's going on with TJ? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. He got kneed in the fucking jaw. Yeah. He got a very serious concussion on the first play of the game. <laughs> the guy's um, entire body weight <laughs> coming through a knee on his <laughs> face. Mm -hmm. So clean. Didn't hit the face mask at all. Nothing, nothing stopped. They were it. checking out his mouth. You remember that? Yeah, like broke his jaw. Have you, yeah, clearly. Did you bite your tongue? Look at that. Oh. Boom. Uh, oh. 
Well, it was like two, like, two or three plays uh, later after he came back, too, Zeke got uh, kicked, kicked him in the, head, in the yeah. mouth. I yep. think that's what he's and then, bleeding out of his mouth. Then look at his head hit here, too. I don't know no. if he can't. I mean, his head hits the fucking ground, too. He's not a quarterback, so nobody cares. Yeah, it is a big shot. Let me get around the block. Boom. Ooh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't. You could play Such Co- a Connor McDermott for just the oh. beautiful pullout block. <laughs> kind of his kind of his fault. For not touching him? Yep. <laughs> TJ, yeah. with how sensitive your hearing probably is, yeah. uh-huh. you don't want to play in a lot of us. No. <laughs> Highsmith might not play either. So. That's what New England does, baby. No, we just is. fucking take people out. So and we oh, <laughs> that's not a good thing. That's what we. Do. That's how punishing we are. We on probably just this year. it. You think? Yeah. Why not? What's it matter? There's gonna be a lot of Pittsburghers. I, I've got a lot of people that are like, "You going game? Going game? game? Yin's going to the game. Yin's going to the game." It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. Got paid a lot of players. money for. All these <laughs> yeah. Paid a lot of money for all these games, and also definitely go to the Steelers game. And let alone how sweet it is in there now. Freaking, I, I just want to go in there, stand behind the tinted glass. The Colts uh, kind of souped up the sweet. Oh yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It is very sweet. They put some photos in there. Oh yeah. They decorate because we just Wallpaper. have blank ass walls. Yeah. You know, we've been there for two years now. Blank ass walls. Nothing in there because I, I would assume the sweet holders normally. Are the ones that kind of sure. buy a package to dress it up. Right. And I assume that was an email that was sent at some point that was like, just what's the fucking food? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> have I not paid? Have I not paid enough? Just tell me what the food, we just need to do the food and let's get there. So they kind of gifted it to us. This whole, very, very cool. Speaking mm-hmm. of food, food has been tremendous this year. It has. It has been very good. Yeah. We've been putting it in early too. We feel like adults. Yeah, just one last frontier. We got to, we got to, you know. Forge the river ahead, or forward, whatever the word is for. What's that? Yeah. It's just one thing, and I'll keep it to myself. But we're almost there. We're we're so close to a perfect. What is the perfect one? fan experience? <laughs> what is the one thing? It, you know, it, it does not have to be. It is. Here. It is time though to decide whether or not we want to get re up re up again. Are they going to give us like a prorated rate for amount of games Anthony Richardson plays or no? No. Okay. So <laughs> having stars play that yeah. would help. Yep. He's going to be comeback player of the year next year. Yes, he is. Should be rookie of the year. He's going to do that 360 spike thing right in front of the fucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, what if I don't re-up? They just did that for two games. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah. You got all the cards now. Not really. They'll just tear that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is fun for a week. Oh, that would be easy. <laughs> we, that has become kind of a, a cool part of life. It's awesome. Going down there. Yeah. Just like a tradition on that. And the setup in there. Yeah, they've done us. Colts have done us right in there. Colts have set it up good. I mean, it's expensive as fuck. I was going to mm-hmm. say, yeah. It's not <laughs> as if unwarranted. But the team is currently in playoff contention. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're in it. Which playoff, is right? vastly different than last year. Very. Oh, yeah. You know? This time last year, going to the games was... A chore. Yes. It was like, God damn it, have to go. Because we're pot committed to this mm-hmm. fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Have to go. To, and it is a good time. You're out and about. You're doing something. Doing something. You're yeah. doing something. You know, we're out here doing something. That view is unmatched. But the games were so miserable. Yeah, they're terrible. You remember how bad... Even with the view, the games were terrible last oh, year. Oh, yeah. Just last like year was tough. Monotonous. Yeah. Speaking of, these awards show got to get a little better. Oh, boy. You know, you got to celebrate. Who? Yeah. Heisman? The college football award show. Boy. Jen and Kevin Nagandi did a fantastic job. But us just Zooming, three different Zoom calls. Yeah, we're out of COVID, okay? Like the awards don't, <laughs> the awards are a big fucking deal. Like the people Dude. that win those awards, it's a big fucking deal to those people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. It's going to follow them. For, yeah. Like that is going to be how they, you know, that should be a Remembered. Celebra- that should be a, that's where me and AQ Shipley hung out for the first time. College football awards down in Orlando. We had a great time. Had a blast, but it was like a thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And also, like, college football players, the football community, there's not a lot of things. Like, that's a, that should be a celebration. An event. Yes. Yeah, that should be a, a thing. Now, I probably just pissed off somebody saying that, but come on, I, I, you know, as a person that got to go and experience one, the relationships you meet and everybody down, it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing. Do you think maybe because it was such a lot for Daniels to get it? That was part of it, because I just saw what 30 for 30, for, like, the Peyton. C. Wood and uh, what, Leaf Moss. 97? Yeah. Yeah, I think 30, was... 30 for that, but um, you think that has something to do with it? So the College Football Awards were on Friday night. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then the Heisman was on Saturday mm-hmm. night. So it's two different. The yeah. Heisman one, like, I understand I, it's a super prestigious yeah. and royal event. 
But watching that, it wasn't like it was a celebration. I, I didn't, you know, yeah. they I, need I, to combine them. Like they need to probably to have the Heisman last. Exactly. Yeah. And just, let's just have a night of yep. enjoying college football excellence. And if they give it like a week, maybe not do it a week after the conference championship. Maybe do it two weeks. Then you can do stuff like how the NFL honors does, where like they're making like pre-recorded shit of some of the players doing stuff together. Like, granted, it's probably impossible logistically with college classes and finals week and all that bullshit. But like, no, I had to go get a suit. That was the first. I had to go get one. I had to go figure one out. Miss some classes. Yeah. did the whole thing. It's cool. It's a thing, AJ. You know, it's a thing. How many? You're up for all of them, yeah. I assume. The the Orlando one that was awesome. Yeah, I got to go hang out with guys a couple years in a row. That was when USC was rolling with Reggie and Minor and all of them. There were studs right. everywhere. That was that was my favorite part about it, was getting to hang out with the guys usually like the night before, even the day of the whole uh, award situation. Yeah, and it felt like a thing, didn't it? It was. It was a thing. Yeah, it absolutely was a thing. I think the Heisman might be separate somehow from other stuff where they have their own group of people that run that or whatever. They always have, but it's they're both ESPN productions. So it's like, it can't we? Yeah. Yeah, pretty Good. simply. You know, like movie of the year. Is always last, right, or yep. whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like that's just an easy. Yeah. Now, granted, there should be a Heisman. You know where they all hang out, like reception. Well, you could do sure. the same thing. The you could before, you I could think. have the actual awards being like Orlando, and then the guys who are up for the Heisman still go to like the downtown athletic club in New York, and they do their own thing with all that bullshit, and yeah, then you just like you make know, it remote a thing, in. Though. Yeah. yeah, let's make it a thing. It should be. These dudes work their asses off. Like this yeah. is a big deal. You know, it's a big deal. That you win those things in your huge, huge for those teams too. Like it's huge for each university as well. Like oh, we got a Blitnikoff winner. Like that stuff is huge for years and years. Yeah, let's let's make it feel. And yeah. for like the best movie, what they do is like they splice like kind of promos of those of those movies throughout the entire- throughout the night. Yeah. Like they could easily do that with the four Heisman finals. Oh, all right, good. Great job by everybody on it, and I assume mm-hmm. they're only doing what they're able to do, but it's like watching that, I was like, we should be celebrating these dudes. Oh, a little yeah. more. And yeah. Fridays felt like it feels dwind- not dwindled, that's not the right word, but it doesn't feel as important as the Heisman, and obviously it's not, but those are still massive deals for the mm-hmm. kids. Huge. Yeah. So like when you're on Friday night, it's like, oh, Kalen DeBoer just won. What'd yeah. you win? You win the Buckus? Nope. Uh, Lombardi, it was called. I didn't get the Buckus. Whoa. Who got Buckus? You got two Lombardis. Wow. Um, no, I believe uh, my senior year, uh, uh, Paul Paul's loves me. Oh, nice. He got it. Uh, you I Paul? like Paul. Yeah, I actually really like Paul. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Great. I was He's about to say, I've only been around Paul like once or twice. Feels like He's awesome. you and he would get along very well. Did you guys talk about your jaws? Yeah, he's got a good jaw. Uh, yeah. Just he's, probably, he's not messing around. Remember when we played Big 33 game? Yeah. Just ran our jaws into each other? Yeah, you guys go chin to chin. Did you? I don't no, think we did. I don't, I don't think we did. Get over here, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you put the fucking I, I mean, bucket That wouldn't have been shit. weird. First time I see him, like, face-to-face. Would be Jaw. Like, what if that's what you were known for? What if, like, Puzz Lesley and everybody that ever met him, like, I met A.J. Hawk. What did he do? He just came up to me and was like, get over here. Yeah. Smack yeah. your jaw against my Get butt. over here. Smack it. Look at that. You, you, lose. you might lose. Solid I would lose. Oh. What's that? What'd you say? I saw the jawline. Mm-hmm. Talk about a jaws or something. I mean, look at his neck, yeah, too. Yeah, neck Jeez. is... Fake. He was a dog. Yep. Yeah, he was a dog. I think. I'm not, did he have concussions? I don't remember. Probably. How'd he used to really try to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, neck and jaw like that. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why even <laughs> asking a question, I felt yeah. kind of disrespectful. But I think he used to really try to. Cobra strike. Yeah, he used to really try to hurt people. That's football, baby. That's All right. right. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the Dolphins minus 14 and the Giants plus six. You're on. Giants plus six, Titans plus 14. And you're on the complete opposite of me, right? Yeah, Packers and Titans, I believe. Connor has thrown his pet like a child three times today. No, no, no. My daughter, Mackenzie, seven months old, you know, she's getting to the point where she's starting Uh to understand stuff. Mm -hmm. She'll take her binky, passy, pacifier, whatever the hell you call it, from whatever country or part of the country you're from. She'll grab it and she'll start, ah, and then she throws it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's going, who knows? Honestly, because that fucker's built weird. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's bouncing all over the place, maybe under the couch. Connor's been doing that with his pen today. I, I under just, Jabba yep. one time, yeah. into Jabba another yeah. time, and oh, then it oh. just took place again. I think he's inside Jabba. I just go to write, like, I just go to, like, box up this box that I have all the picks on, and I just dropped it. 
No, you threw that one. No, I'm telling you. Like I might, I might, I think I went like this to like spin it up, and it just kept going. See ya. Yeah, that happens. It does. All right, good luck to all the boys playing tonight. We appreciate them. Hopefully the refs will get it right. Gene Steratore told me I can give Dan Orlovsky's number. Okay. Oh, nice. But their show's already started. Yeah, so don't. <laughs> Just don't. All right, well, we're going to get the hell out of here. We appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow for Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. That's for real, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to say, hey, you look good. Hey, yeah. sweet shoes. Or that jaw. Uh, Woo. Phenomenal. Good job. Yeah. Great jaw. See you tomorrow, AJ. Boys, great work today. Goodbye.